Wow, Lego wow. Ninjago. Oh my god. If only we were watching the Lego Ninjago movie. <laughs> did anybody here actually see that movie? Because I did. I haven't. How does it rank? I have not. Uh, it's not as... It's... I don't remember anything about it, and I, Ooh. and I like, yeah, like, whereas, whereas I really like the Lego movie, and I like the Lego Batman movie. I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember really enjoying it, but yeah, I didn't like that one, or the, uh, did any of you guys watch the Lego movie 2? No, I actually. I think I have, but I don't remember it. Man, that was a, that was a disappointing day. Aww. <laughs> and now, and now I don't think they want to make any more Lego movies. Oh, was was Chris Pratt in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Chris well. Pratt plays uh, Emmett, the uh, the Lego Man. He is the Lego Man. That's true. Mm -hmm. And now he's playing Garfield next year. Nice. I was reading like a, a tweet about how like is this is this confirmed or is it a meme that uh Bill Murray came across the offer for playing Garfield and he misunderstood Joel Cohen to be one of the Cohen brothers and that's why he agreed it was an accident. I think that's true. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That's just so fucking funny. Because <laughs> it never made sense. Why is Bill Murray Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> We're just in that kind of multiverse, I guess. Um, because some of the, some of the uh, I thought was interesting. No, no Jude Law in this film. Why not? Uh... He knew. He knew. Get out. <laughs> yeah, I got. I got out lucky. No one remembers I was in the first one. So that's well, he's a... he also got to be a part of the billion dollar one. He wasn't in the. He, so now he can be like, yeah, what were you missing? Me. That's what. That's what it is. I was the key to everything. Like I was Charger. the draw. Yeah. Poor guy. But uh, because he's gonna be in Skeleton Crew, right? Yes. Maybe he's just too busy doing things with Star Wars to do things with Marvel. Because that's a better choice as a, as <laughs> yeah. a career path to being in Obviously, Star Wars than Marvel. That I mean, is yeah, funny. I, it's like, a, I think I would I rather be him a, as an actor. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I gave up on him as an actor during AI. I hated that movie. Aww. That was, for a long time, my most hated movie of all time. I'm like, this just <laughs> wasted my life. Someone asked me what I thought of that the other day, and I was like, I don't fucking, I don't really remember it anymore. I only remember the teddy. That was the only interesting thing of in the entire movie. Doesn't he eat uh, vegetables at some point and choke? It was very relatable. I don't know, he, he used to, like, hide <laughs> things inside himself, like a prison pocket. It was weird. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Looking back on it, there was this whole scene where he hid something inside himself and just sewed himself back up. Wait, you guys don't do that? Not, not, not like normally. not like for everything, but it's enough to be pretty serious. Alrighty then, alrighty. I'm I'm I've just outed myself. I think that was a self report. Yeah. <sighs> should we? Well, I mean, because we're almost pretty much good to go, and I mean, sometimes we should start these things as soon as possible because you never know how long we may turn out to talk about a thing. Though it's worth mentioning, this is like what feels to be the first hour and a half moving a long time from Marvel. When was, It wasn't yeah. two hours, their golden ratio or whatever, and now they're moving Something it back. Like and then it started getting to like two and a half hours there for a while. That just was, uh, just that another was hour and a half to go, and we've managed to get the correct amount of time. You know, if they can just push it back a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, but they got it in this one minutes. by slashing all of the content. So... Oh yeah, you can tell. This film's edited to hell and back. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe design it for this next time. <laughs> nice. I wrote down somewhere that it's like it's edited like an SNL sketch. A little bit, yeah. And most of it is written like an SNL sketch. Oh, I was it's saying, not even as funny as an SNL sketch. Oof. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> I was saying uh, <laughs> just just earlier today that like there's that part where Captain Marvel arrives to see Dar Ben, our our he our villain, and and. Like, ah, oh, it's it's you, Annihilator. And then Captain Ball's like, you you must stop, bad guy. And it's, it feels so, like, set up at this point of just being like, why is anyone here? They all know they shouldn't be here. Fucking actors, cameras, special effects, people are just like, we all know. We all know what's happening. It's, it's what fucked. does that mean to have so many people working on something that nobody believes in? <laughs> you get oh this. <laughs> <laughs> I just, 
Oh my god, I don't understand. Hey, they have showrunners now. Yeah. They, yeah, that'll fix the problem. It will help, probably, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, it might help. <laughs> that's, that's the best we can say. Yeah, we all know I what think... happens when you have showrunners. Everything works out well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the villain woman is the only one who did not get the memo, because she was, like, taking it too seriously for me for mo in moments. And the <laughs> other guy, like, next to her, was, like, acting as if he was in a sitcom or something. His facial expressions, it was so funny. I fucking, I don't even remember that guy. He was in like one or two scenes. He just disappeared at some yeah. point, right? Yeah, like he was just second in command. faces the whole time. Like brother, guy, whoever he was. No idea, but yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Does everyone... There was times where we would do like a, oh, everyone give you a blib on what you thought of the movie, but it's like, surely none of us disagree with each other on this one. I mean, it sucks. It's really, Does anyone really disagree bad. with each other on Earth on this one? This is such a... Movie, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, movie. <laughs> right, where it's, never been a, it's been an interesting... Because The Flash had the same thing. It came out and it's like, nobody liked it. You know, it's like, nobody liked that. Like, the Fallout meme. And it feels like the same thing has happened here. <laughs> it's just out and it's like... Yeah, so nobody likes this, right? Eh, yeah, nobody. I didn't even watch it. This is what will be said by most people? Should we start with um, telling people what they needed to see before seeing this, just to make sure they understand uh, the narrative? Yeah. So what you need to see is really nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, you really the, don't. Um, the big thing that anyway. I noticed. I don't know if anyone else did. For anyone who here has been unfortunate enough to see all of the homework you're supposed to have seen before this, is that I feel like I missed about one film's worth of timeline between this and all of the stuff you're supposed to see before it. We with missed... Secret Invasion! It made no sense following on from Secret nope, Invasion. No, it doesn't. It ended up oh, yeah, with so... a massive war on Earth between the humans and the scrolls. And, the scrolls. <laughs> and then on this, they're already on their own planet somewhere. And it's like, yeah, well, that's fine now. We're working with them. We're all allies. Well, and they, like... they take refuge on Earth. They can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest problems for me. The big, the big People in Marvel promise, don't talk to each other. No. <laughs> the big promise and pitch of the MCU is it's an interconnected universe where the plot will develop over multiple films, kind of like television, but on a cinematic scale. The promise is that, but it's the worst of both worlds. The stories don't actually connect to each other, and in the ways that they do, they contradict and damage each other. It's like a new movie will introduce new massive ramifications on the world building that will destroy everything or assassinate characters and then that gets carried forward like a snowball effect it's the worst of both worlds if captain mm -hmm. marvel story from when we've like when she was hit by that crazy engine or whatever all the way up till now if there was a time in her life they should have made a movie about it would probably be a home world going through a civil war that almost destroyed like the entire star system that engulfs it it's like holy shit that's really interesting it's like no we skipped all that you don't need to see that <laughs> no, uh, uh, you know, that's not a story that would be worth watching. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Instead, we'll watch the two films that are on either end of it, which were much more boring, uh, as crazy as that sounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with a budget like this, like, you could have made that movie, but oh well. I, mean, I Do don't understand. It's a better idea. <laughs> Do you guys know about the title thing in China? Wait, the what title, title thing? thing like, China? the movie because... title? Like, it wasn't called The Marvels or something? No, it's called The Captain Marvel 2. <laughs> <laughs> the Captain Marvel 2. <laughs> Captain Marvel 2, and in my country, too. It's, it's advertised as Captain Marvel 2. Um, I, I know <laughs> disclose it, but it... Mm, well, you've narrowed um, it down. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. <stop. laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's not that far off, but I, it's, it's weird. I thought it was a meme at first because I saw it a few months ago. It was advertised as a po poster, and I thought they were like poking fun at the marketing. But then I thought about it, and I think that's a like I don't understand why it was not marketed as Captain Marvel two. I mean, I guess it makes more sense as the Marvels, but uh, from the why. marketing standpoint, it would sell better. Like it at least it I rings don't think a it bell. Would. I think <laughs> that the only reason that Captain Marvel really made as much as it was. Uh, or as much as it did, was because it was between Infinity War and Endgame. It was riding yeah. the fucking insanely, arguably the highest high that the MCU ever got, which was right after, End, uh, I mean, that's right after true, Infinity War. That's true, but is there more so, marketing power to the Marvels than Captain Marvel? Uh, Probably. I, mean, no. I think at this I mean, point there actually would be. Why? I, I don't know. Is there I don't think nobody knows who that... this Marvel is. 
I don't yeah, think that. Well, I think that's one. better it's than people dark. knowing who Captain Marvel is. <laughs> I think that the big takeaway that people had from Captain Marvel was that it was boring when the film is actually awful, but <laughs> it kind of got away with just the perception of, yeah, oh, it was boring and lame. Um, so I don't know. I feel like it suffers way more from apathy rather than a general dislike for the character. Most people just don't care about that character. I think I've... that's the general kind of normie perspective because before I started doing this, I was exactly the same. I'd watch a movie. I wouldn't really think about why it was awful or why I didn't like it. I'd just write off as boring and leave. So mm -hmm. I think that's standard if you don't do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the Marvel hey, hey, thing, oh, I, I asked I asked around people and most people didn't, until I you know, told them that it was about Captain Marvel, they didn't get it, like what it was. And my sister, we sat down, I watched it with my sister and she was like, so what happened in the first one? And I'm like, this is the first one. What are you talking about? No, the first one with the uh, Angelina Jolie. And I'm like, oh my god. Oh, no, that's no, that's Tomb Raider. Just that's people... that's way different. That's Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider's in the MCU. Come on. Totally different. That's, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny as fuck. That's, like the, the yeah. it's so tangled and nonsense. I don't even know that my family have even heard that this movie is out. Let alone that it's a part of the MCU. Let alone something they might want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but I mean, didn't but the marketing told us that this is really important. We got to be there for what comes next. X X sits there for a bit longer. Oh, yeah, X Men! Oh my god! If they're overstepping Ooh. now, imagine how interesting their marketing is going to get in the next few years because they've all already resorted to look Iron Man, Cap, Thanos, and X Men. All right, and it's like none of that has anything to do with this film. It's like, yeah, I know, but you like those things, so fuck you. Mm, yeah. Avengers <laughs> theme, boom. Yeah, like the Avengers theme. There's Tony, there's Steve, there's Carol, part of the Avengers. <laughs> right there. Like it's like she photoshopped yeah. herself with her arm around Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I the was other, here too. Oh, Lord. The other issue with stuff like X-Men marketing is it relies on sort of leaks of post-credit scenes that only people that are paying attention to this stuff would ever even hear about or watch. And so it's a really terrible marketing strategy if you want to get it to a really broad, like, my dad kind of thing he would never he would never have known yeah, he, that it was a marvel's <laughs> hidden scene that got leaked on twitter you know it's, it's just like yeah marketing it to people who are probably already going to watch it anyway probably yeah, yeah then the, we get the to find it really funny committed. yeah 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 um and um i mean when it comes to the i mean to, speaking of the people who did see it of which there are not very many shaping up to be the lowest uh, the lowest box off in marvel history yeah, so it had the we now it's it's projected to earn forty seven to fifty five million domestic opening weekend, which is the lowest for an MC movie. I believe Never. it's lower than Incredible Hulk, and Incredible Hulk came out fifteen years ago, so adjusted for inflation. Uh oh. You know? yeah, um, I mean, and at the time, it was just a standalone superhero movie. It wasn't like oh, MCU and all these all these characters who we're gonna well, see it, is like it, no, it's Hulk it movie. Cost, uh, it didn't cost over two hundred million dollars to make. Like, no. Sure. Well, they are—they're uh, going to have the record, I imagine, that may very well be unbeaten, uh, dropped from the first to the second film. You know, in terms of box oh, office. Oh, well, yeah, because you know, Captain Marvel made one point one billion. With this um, one now, I mean, shit. Are we looking at? It, it, it'd be lucky to make three hundred million. Yeah, it might. It oh, still no. might not beat the TLJ drop from. TFL. Yeah, I was actually about to bring that up because the TLJ drop, we're talking like oh, sure, seven hundred million. Wise. Yeah, but percentage-wise, it would be much bigger. That would be more than 50%. Yeah. Yeah, so, that would be... It'd be yeah. pretty gnarly either way. But mm -hmm. no one, no, no one's going to be talking about this. No, this isn't, this isn't Top Gun or Oppenheimer where it just keeps going and uh, going well, and going. It's going you know to have really long legs, it's, right? It's, it's like, oh, man. It's going to have tiny little legs. short legs. And it'll fall have over. caterpillar <laughs> legs and not many of them. It'll just have, like, imagine a caterpillar with one little leg. <laughs> and you're like, oh, how do you do this? Like, what's it's going just, on it's here? Just that little leg is dragging it forward over and over. Like, and the caterpillar's yeah, like, man, it's a good thing I eat leaves or I'd be in trouble. <laughs> it just does a little waddle. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's not gonna make money, and no one is going to tell their friends to go see it. No one is. It's not gonna have any word of mouth. No one's gonna remember this. It's already. It oh, feels like it's just dead. For the worst possible reason, which is that it's, it's well, you, it looks like it's likely to be Marvel's first true 
categorical, undeniable failure. Yeah, for those who are who are listening, like, you know, you, you're going to talk about the story of it, it's like, oh, yeah, so we're going to talk about why yeah, no yeah, one's going to yeah. like this film, but, like, we, what we're talking about right now is what I think the whole world is interested in if they're interested in talking about the Marvels, which is the meta, the box office, the culture surrounding it, what's happening to the MCU, yep. what's happened to yep. Disney. It's like, well, what about the characters? It's like, shut up. <laughs> I was talking yeah, about like, it's, like, it's, <laughs> 2023 has been a real interesting year because, dude, most of these movies have failed. Most of them. Yeah. Most of them have <laughs> failed. Mm -hmm. The only successful ones are Guardians 3 and Across the Spider-Verse. Dude, one it's of so them weird, too. directed by a guy who's gone over to DC, and the other one is totally disconnected from all of this. Going back and forth between Star Wars and Marvel as well, like, seeing so many, so many similarities in terms of just this, like, nobody gives a shit. You've, like... No. Apathy is set in so hard, and it's like it's spread well beyond the the big main fans. You know, the people who would like diehards. It's like those those are well and done. It's like it's getting out all of the random general audience. How'd you do that? Mm. Impressive. But, I mean, it's, the it's, reputation well, is just. I mean, two years of consistent <laughs> fucking dog shit. Like I was gonna how say, you how'd you do that? It's like, have you been documenting it this whole time? I was like, yes, but how'd you do that? <laughs> At the same time, it's still kind of. It's still. I'm a, I'm a little bit in disbelief that mm -hmm. Mad Lads actually did it. They released yeah. two years of absolute <laughs> shit tier films consistently over and over. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. they did the Mad Lads did it. Our choice of Genesis <laughs> would probably be Endgame, right? Endgame is actually where it began, but the, yes. the more popular we success know. That we know the truth. Before, so a lot of people would pick. Would we say <laughs> Captain Marvel's? Well, where it began? well, the problem with that, of course, is Infinity War was pretty solid. So it's like, yeah, yeah mm. exactly. sure, yeah. Infinity War's got a lot of good stuff. And someone might yeah, say, "Well, yeah. No Way Home," or or whatever else. If you consider those blips, it's like No Way Home gets ignored anyway because it's Sony, and then Guardians of the Galaxy three. We didn't like it, but a lot of people do, and it did make money. It's like, well, it's James Gunn. That's how people square those two off. Well, yeah. as low as the bar is right now, Guardians of the Galaxy Three had good things in it, which well, automatically it, it, just puts it felt way much above more else. like I, I would happily uh, see that as this one fits the formula that the Quantum Mania yes. fits, the MOM fits, the even like Wakanda Forever, Law Th Thun and Thunder. I need to say Law Thun Thunder, Law Thun Thunder, yeah, Law Thun Thunder. Um, but yeah, this one was this one was possibly one of the most garbled. Uh, on FNT, we were having a bit of a vote on like what everyone thinks in terms of the worst script versus worst blah blah blah, and, and a lot of people were agreeing like this seems to be the most fucked up film in terms of piecing it together, which makes sense considering it's an hour and a half when it wasn't supposed like, to be. I I still don't know the motivation of the villain because like correct we me if I'm help wrong, you. But it's just easier to yeah, move. I didn't pay I attention. You. Um, like, she's an idiot, for one, in terms of her goals. <laughs> she she could have achieved her goals easily and uh, off-screen quickly, but instead she, yep. like, fucks them up because she hates Captain yep, Marvel you know a lot. You the, the, the galaxy, uh, the Milky Way galaxy, has a hundred billion uh, stars <laughs> and yeah. a hundred over a hundred billion Let's... planets. To to scale yeah. it in a different way and make it sound really dumb. It's like it's like if I needed to inject myself with a cure for my, my particular disease, and I'm like, how do I do this while also killing my enemy? It's like well, you could just you could just do it and then kill your enemy. It's like no, I have yeah. to find a way of solving my problem that kills my I enemy. To find <laughs> a way to, I have to find a way. Multitasking. To I have to find a way that's in all likelihood going to prompt intervention from that enemy who's much stronger yeah. and more powerful than me. To the to the point where we've called her the Annihilator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she um, can fly faster than the speed of light and has enough power to like reignite dying stars. We should pick a fight with her. I love yeah. how she gets pissed about that name, and it's like, yeah, but it is true. So, like, you know, also, yeah, um, how offended could you be? I'm not going to say spoiler warning, even though technically I just said it. All no right. one is <laughs> going to watch this. No, you, anyone in chat, you're not going to watch this. You don't care what happens, really. <laughs> no. You're not going to see it. In three weeks, you'll forget this EFAP happened. So just, you know, grab a drink, sit down. We're going to talk but, um, about this movie, and we're going to make fun of it. That's what we're here for. This isn't a serious... This isn't a serious movie. As, right, uh, this yeah. isn't like a movie you watch. I do want to confirm, right. though, as was mentioned, uh, many people in chat may have seen the uh, EFAB reaction to the trailer. Uh, Fringy was absolutely correct. That is the death scene for the villain. Yeah, <laughs> like that. that's the villain. <laughs> the death scene. <laughs> yeah, they put the villain exploding in the trailer. Yep. <laughs> nice. And, uh, it's and pretty I weird. Why? why? Why did they do that? I, I'm taking the Hallmark <laughs> Whole movies in the, the Hallmark, trailer. The Hallmark theory is my explanation for why they did that. The hallmark theory being the reason why so many people 
love those copy paste shitty horrible Hallmark movies is because they're super safe. They are, they always end well. Everything works out. Very cathartic. You don't have to worry about anything. Only the tiniest of drama happens, which is then instantly resolved right after it. That's the Hallmark thing. And like, so if you put the villain being annihilated in the trailer, then it's the Hallmark theory. You don't have to worry about it. Things are going to work out oh, okay. I'll be uh, safe was, watching this yeah, film cozy, because the bad guy safe. will lose. <laughs> the bad guy loses. Everything's going to work out just fine. You can come and see our movie, please. <laughs> please. That's why, as I was watching it, the only thing I wanted it to be true is that the Flurkins actually did kill people. That would be neat. I, that, that entire scene would have been incredible. <laughs> if we were just like, characters. oops. <laughs> One, it, one of the flurkins just coughed up a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no. I could, right. you know what? I could totally see them doing that, and then all the characters go, "Whoops!" <laughs> you know, like, yeah, we told everybody to get eaten by them. Oh, wow. no. Wow. you wow. couldn't do it because we're like baby oh, flurkin cover. Dun, 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 they don't know how to keep them alive. Well, yeah, there... because you're basically saying this is an alien life form that seems to use tentacles to drag people inside of its mouth. Uh, go in there, guys. Wasn't As there you a are. moment where they were like forcibly feeding them people? Essentially, right? yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, they were. The heroes yeah. were. <laughs> yeah. And these people were running away like scared, yeah. scared yeah. for their they lives. Yep. <laughs> it was, it was a director a didn't even... blocks one off. And, and, uh, and a lot a of the marketing. Plan to begin... It was a shitty plan to begin with because <laughs> then uh, Fury transports all these cats in this cramped spaceship and it's like, you know, you have hundreds of people. They start vomiting up the people. <laughs> Yeah, and they could just spit them up in, in a second's notice. Oh, and well, no, that's no, exactly no. what happened. <laughs> well, you, you, the cats just do what you need them to do. Yeah, so it's okay. Cats are notoriously obedient animals, <laughs> yes, especially <no>. space <laughs> cats that are like Lovecraftian yeah. monsters. Yes, you know, cats are known for doing what you tell them to do. I know this might actually come across as a little disjointed to some of you guys who are who haven't seen the movie, which is all, all <laughs> the way we've been bouncing Frank. between all these um, things. Like this, <laughs> this film has a it. This film has doubled and tripled down on the Flurkin cats yes. from the first Captain Marvel. I mean, we're, yep. th they they comprise a significant portion of this movie, and their presence is quite prominent. Oh, that it's fucking um, cat. It's all of, very important. It's very. It's in very a lot important. of the scenes, and yep. um, as we go through the movie, you'll you will see. You will they, understand. They really, really wanted to make the Flurkin cats be a thing. Well, I think they had I, a really good idea there for some reason. I, I guess for some reason. I personally think all you need uh, think all you need to know about this movie is that there is a line that says, "Attention, crew, please stop running." And let the kittens eat you. That's a legit line in the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that was. They, I guess we'll That's get to all that. Yeah, they're like, stop know. running away. Well, and let for, them eat you. Yeah. for those who don't know, like. It's like a horror scene. The like, cat... this one runs away, hides around a corner, and they're waiting for them on yeah. the other yeah. side. This is what? feed the forest shit. There's no way. It ain't happening. The, yeah, the, the, the marketing for this film was very much uh, banking on that. Like, that's a big angle for this film. I believe someone in the higher up of Marvel was like, Cats. That's what will yeah, get this film over the line. <laughs> this is the really baby Yoda. And, cats. And play memories from the musical Cats while the cats are on screen. Oh, yes. Which does yes. happen. So <laughs> that was pretty clever, actually. What a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. This is Marvel's uh, rendition of Cats. There are CGI cats. There are too many, too many songs. And the song from the musical. It's yeah, the, from cats. the cats. Yeah, Midnight. Yeah, the most famous song from the Cats <laughs> musical, which played in ex extensively in an already extensively long sequence. But we'll I, we'll get to it. I guess yeah, we'll get to it. Uh, I suppose we'll it get might there. be my fault. To, uh, well, to, it, to I just wanted to uh, summarize. Order. Right, you're coming yeah. in for let's say Captain Marvel's side with her movie, and all that will do is like like prevent you from understanding the character we get given in this one. <laughs> You, the, the, and the events between it are insane. You come in from one division, and you've skipped a whole origin movie for Monica Rambeau because now she's doing a job that isn't even remotely understandable compared to what she was doing in one division. She has control of her powers that we didn't understand. She's an astronaut now; she can do astro things. It's like, it's like, when did all of these things happen? It's like it was, it was off screen. Shut up. And you're like, okay. You watch Secret Invasion. None of that 
is is going to be like all of it gets in the way of this film in terms of the scroll stuff and no acknowledgement of anything from Secret Invasion. In fact, I've seen the question asked and I think it's funny. Does this movie take place before or after Secret Invasion? <laughs> it's, like, it's afterwards. They they did give us the timeline. Oh, they did. Wait, what was the what was the clue? No, they told us the year and everything. Oh, like, like as uh, Secret Invasion was ignoring, coming up, they specifically said this that was before this. Ignoring that, judging from like characters and like world building and stuff, could you guess if it was before or after? Oh no, no. no. I, I would have assumed no. before because it just does not follow. It does no, not it, it doesn't invasion. follow at all. Um, That's why it would be there because it doesn't fit or follow at all. And then, it, it if makes anything. Sense. If anything, you could say it has to be before because when they destroy that planet, you could say, well, they went to Earth and that caused the trouble. It's worth mentioning, though. Like, but that's so bizarre to have Secret Invasion come out and then have this movie come out and it's before it's Secret Invasion It's got so many chronology. character crossovers yeah. and drama crossovers and they don't acknowledge each other at all. It's like, wow, what a waste, but also a bizarre choice. And then, of course, you have, like, there's no stuff on the blip. There's no stuff on Kang. There's no stuff on the multiverse. <laughs> maybe I, I'm speaking a little too fast there, maybe. <laughs> it's just funny, though, because people are like, oh, so it does bring out the multiverse? It's like, yeah, and its own fucking version again. It, like, every one of these films has its own version of the multiverse that is caused by whatever and does whatever. And then there's Miss Marvel, which nobody saw. So, there you go. That, that is the summary of just all the content you would need to watch this and all of its effects. It's it's a garbled mess, and that is the, the best they could do with a shared universe. To the point where, um, I think it was uh, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers that said this on both streams I was on the past few days. Uh, we're, in the, we're in the world now, I think, where being a part of a shared universe is a detriment to the marketing of your film. Like, people are going to be like, Absolutely. Don't go near yeah. it. Because if it's a solo movie... Like the Batman or Joker or um, you know a lot of these different ones that might be coming out. It's like you're probably you're probably gonna be you can make it if your film is great and everything. But like attaching yourself to this fuckery is just pointless. And and if anything, people are gonna be like, I don't fucking know what's going on. None of this makes any sense, you know. So yeah, I mean that, that's that's about that. And it's a decent enough setup, I suppose, to beginning the well, film. I, I will say, um. If you go in, if you're the kind of person who doesn't watch the shows, you just go to the theaters and watch the movies, you really, you won't know who two of the protagonists are. They just won't. You know what's so funnier you, about you, that is that a lot of people are like, oh, uh, fuck, that's the, she's from, it's like, no, you're not even really supposed, to, you're not, you're not going to know that one. And they're like, oh, I'm not? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I think people gaslight themselves at this point to be like, oh, yeah, no, I remember that one. I think. <laughs> she was... Which one was she? Did she, like, did she fly? I mean, like, yeah, sure, fine, she can fly. Um, yeah, it's gotten so tangled. Nobody knows the fuck's going on. And nobody knows to remember if they should know what's going on. I watched WandaVision, and I don't know whether it was in that, but in this, Monica Rambeau starts phasing through matter and appearing through floors and stuff. I'm like, I can't remember that. They was never that really they never well, really told no, us no, her this, power set in WandaVision. They showed us some this stuff. This is all intuitive. It's yeah. all intuitive. Uh -huh. <laughs> Monica Rambeau well, in a in a spacesuit, she goes through the wall that one wait that's like right at the beginning we should just do that chronologically right if... yeah at yeah that point. sure take uh, it away fringy well uh we open with a little Cree armada heading to a, a planet called mb 418 and the and the the da, da ben are we, are we gonna are call that or are we gonna Oh, Unironically, so, yeah, a lot of so, people might so, not re remember the, who the Kree are. The Kree, the Kree, yeah, the Kree ben. they're in the Marvels, <laughs> and uh, and and they're like a big sort of intergalactic empire, and they were at war with the Skrulls. And yeah, um, I Carol hate was part of the Kree, but she she left them, and she left them so hard that her defining symbol she left on them her so. uh, costume she left them is, so <laughs> is is the symbol it's of the Kree kind of empire. Even but, to you know. You. Um, but yeah, that's the Kree. Should we, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like, Kree just, like just a quick, movies? quick the reminder Kree in... that the Kree have a long-standing big old war with the Skrulls. That's how Captain Marvel sort of starts. And the Skrulls are nearly wiped out. The Kree have mostly won. And that film is about how the Kree lied about a lot of what the Skrulls are. But then we kind of discovered in Secret Invasion that that was a lie. Because they were... Yeah. But yeah. this is what I mean. I it's hard to Kree untangle right this. I'm on the Kree side. Yeah. So I'm pro Kree. Captain Marvel's <laughs> mad that she got a. The, the, basically, God, the, the, one of the Kree dis, like like left the Kree and went to Earth to create one something to protect the, the Skrulls. 
that was that was Marvel, <laughs> Lady Marvel, uh, Annette Benning, and then I ca- it's, this is so fucked up. Like in terms of trying to get this all lined up, is and 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 the the Kree try to find her for ages, um, and they manage to almost find her, and then there's a big fight, and she blows up their light speed engine, which is what the Kree want to finish winning the war against the Skrulls. Which that doesn't make any sense. We'll put that aside, and then. That 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 gives powers to Captain Marvel, and they kidnap her and wipe her memory, and try to convince her she's a scroll in order to use her for her power. And Captain Marvel's the film where she, right yeah, yeah. And then she's a Kree, yeah. Captain Marvel's the film where she gets that memory back vaguely and is an, an, you know angry at the Kree for doing what they did, and she kind of wipes them out and establishes herself as protector of Earth, and she's going to find a home out. for the scrolls. She fails at all of these jobs, and then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, she says she's going to go back to Hala, homeworld of the Kree, and, uh, you know, deal with them, deal with the intelligence, and deal with all this stuff. And so that's, like, the last we left off with her. And then and that was 30 years ago. Yeah, so it's been a while. I'm just saying, like, just... I was about to say keep all that in mind, but I'm like, maybe don't. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know if it really benefits you that much to even to keep it all in mind. Well, it's going to come up in a moment Marvel now, because we get, we get a previously uh, on that covers all not. this. I guess she doesn't age. <laughs> no, she doesn't yeah, age. She, um, at this point, no. she's like 60. But, like, what I just said is something they put into a whole bunch of flashbacks in a second from now anyway, yeah, so... that's right. <laughs> yeah, the Sorry. film assumes that you don't know who the fuck anyone is or what's happened. <laughs> the so film it, correctly it's assumes. Back. It's got your back. <laughs> yes. It starts yep. with flashbacks, right? N- Captain n- Marvel scenes. Yes, yeah, her scenes do, got, yeah. 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 Or Captain Marvel. Yeah. Shortly, Monica shortly, Rambeau, it's like, oh, later. whatever, you like her, right? D- uh, she walked through a wall and she got powers. That's all. Yeah, you well, need. I mean, uh, there you go. You summed up her whole story. Nice. <laughs> that's that's, yeah, that's how she powers. walked through a wall and got powers. It's unironically, that's just it. That's her just powers, what happens. Her powers are to see and control light. So, how does she phase through solid matter? I, well, which never... is, by the way, just to be clear, I can do half those powers. <laughs> I can't, I can't <laughs> fucking believe she summarizes it in the film and the trailer as she can see light. What the hell? No, they did yeah, a like different that. trailer, which then retconned that to I can control like magnetic forces and stuff. And then in the trailer, we're back with I can see light. No, in the <laughs> movie, we're back to I can see light. So what? I can see light. Yeah, that's so cool, you bro. <laughs> <laughs> and she look, she phased through the bullets in one division. So yeah, yeah, man. that's yeah. She she, mm-hmm. she phases so it too. All, it all makes sense, all right. But how could she fly then? <laughs> Uh, I'll cut you slap. Be as light as light or something. I don't yeah, know. No, could be, and she didn't even know she could. Other people told. Oh, no. oh come on! We, I actually said I think yeah. to Friggy, I was like, at least that was better than Captain Marvel learning to fly, which was literally off on no <laughs> reference. At yeah. least, at least Fury says, "Hey, fly!" <laughs> like, black girl black magic. Girl magic. I ain't gonna say white girl magic. It's not. It's, um, that, where the hell did that even come from? I was like, you've got to fly. It's like, what do you mean? I've got to. F- <laughs> like, say this to fucking Wolverine. Like, you got to fly, fly, Wolverine. Be as black as you can. Use your adamantium fly powers. Fly. When that was in the trailer, I was like, when it gets to the movie, that line will be explained. It's like, no, no. I still don't know what it's meant to mean. <laughs> oh. um, the power of shea butter. <laughs> And then wasn't it that Miss Marvel had it anyway, and they did the switch anyway? So oh, wait, wait, like, well, oh, we'll get there. Well, I mean, we're, we're like, yeah. <laughs> so, at the beginning of the movie, uh, the first thing that happens in the movie is this Creed fleet heads to this barren planet, and they, they, they're, they're, they're excavating, and they dig up this, like, ancient sort of uh, artifact of some kind and break it apart, and inside of it, there's this, it's this quantum band, it's this band... Uh, that they've been looking for. Uh, but there's meant to be two of them, but there's only <sighs> one. Oh my goodness. Um, where is the other one? And then we hard cut over to uh, uh, back on Earth. Um, <laughs> but what? Where's the other one? Nothing. It's what? just like hearing you describe it is funny. How what did they find that one? I I don't know. That's a great we just question. Have to assume we just have just you know what? I'll give it to him. Whatever. It's, it is funny though. It's just like, like we need to. Whatever gets us out of the theater faster. Captain Marvel even says, "I thought those were a myth." So, well, so something. Well, that, not anymore. Uh, Muller and I decided it would be worthwhile <laughs> to actually watch Miss Marvel in the hopes that there would be some additional information that would explain no, things. No, just you like better the give these people some fucking super all, chats. All it does, right? is, uh, all it does is make things a lot more complicated. <laughs> but there was one character in that show who was able to track Kamala because uh, he sensed 
They called her, like, light manifestations, like, all of that. They called it the Noor, and that it comes from the Noor dimension, which is, like, a parallel dimension. This would be extra context to throw on top of this <laughs> This, this well. makes things easier to understand. Okay. So oh, she's okay. draining power from a different universe. It's, it's What's the, the idea uh, of that Dimension, thing? bro. She, she's, her you know what, that must be part, horrific on the other side. That's, well, they got energy. I... I, I the, the, the idea is that because her lineage is partially from a different dimension, and but she's also from Earth, that's so how she's she, killing her like, ancestors' universe. Well, I I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. How <laughs> Why do you, listen? We watched Miss Marvel. We didn't watch. Like, we didn't talk to Kevin Feige. Okay, <laughs> understand? Okay. This fucking shit. Okay, weird. just no saying that if someone kept Kevin draining Feige. my power, they'll be like, "Hang on, this is a bit mean." <laughs> okay, okay. If you guys watched it, explain this to me. Does she get her fucking powers from the bands or not? Because no. the end of this film. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we can say that in 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 Miss Marvel, yeah. there's a character who explicitly says the bands like activated and focused your power. They they're not the source of it. He does say that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Nice. Why is she still Sorry. wearing them then? Ah, uh, wow. Well, yeah. mm. <laughs> But I mean, anyway, we all know the answer to that. She she's got the other one. Um, but she's you know she's sitting in her room writing fan fiction about herself going on adventures with Captain Marvel because mm. she's a really big fan of Captain Marvel. Who um, isn't? Well, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Everyone, Captain Marvel's been around on Earth all the time. You know, for for years and years and years, she's been a very active participant in Earth affairs. Yeah, the way uh, I phrased it on, I think it was FNT, was like. We're, there's no reason to be a fan of Captain Marvel in our universe. Now, I, I'm willing to bet there's plenty of people who consider themselves Captain Marvel fans. That's totally fine. She's got a superhero movie. She's the protagonist in it. She saves people, quote unquote. That's it. I can buy that. I really can't buy it in universe. You've got barely any footage of her, like no lines of mm -hmm. anything she has investments in. And she just like shows up, blasts through things, and then leaves. And it's like, I guess you could be a fan of her in like a very superficial way. Like, she looks cool. But even then, you know what I mean? So it's you like, have to uh, leverage that. Now, someone could be right. like, oh, well, so what, the, what the fuck's the issue? And it's like, I, I don't know. I just think that if, if Kamala was going to idolize any one hero in, in the universe, like, why the fuck would it? She's like lost on the list. If it was like, it would be, you'd be more likely to idolize Wasp than yeah, you would absolutely. Captain Marvel because mm -hmm. she's around on Earth. Well, yeah, she's got a humanitarian oh, yeah. project. She's working on everything Earth related. She's trying to save people like in all kinds of ways that are non superhero related. We you know there's issues with that as well. But I'm just saying, like, you are right. Like, pick any other, and if it has to be a female idol, it doesn't have to be. But if it if it does, sure, you could pick all of the even fucking Wanda. <laughs> like before she went, nobody knows about all that. Okay, it's fine. Nobody knows about the, the, her killing everybody. Um, yeah, this this whole animation is is all like expressive of how much she adores Captain Marvel, which is present in her show as well. And it's just like, but why? And you'll notice mm. there's nothing specific. They laid on thick in this movie. She mm -hmm. really, really loves Captain. Well, Marvel. Well, I think they thought it was like a fun aspect. She's like the fangirl in the form of like an actual superhero too. And it's just like, yeah, but why did you make her a fangirl of Captain Marvel? It doesn't make sense. She's the one person who probably can't have fan. Thanos would have more fans than Captain Marvel. <laughs> Well, I mean, I like, that him, was, was, I like him more than Captain Marvel. I'm one of them. I respect uh, him more than Captain Marvel. Oh my god. Do you think that's Poor a representation girl. thing? That they think the like lot of young girls will look up to Captain Marvel, and so that's meant to be the young yes. girl in the movie? Yes. Yeah, like an insert thing. But like I said, I've, uh, the problem is that like I nobody know. knows anything about Captain Marvel in the universe. We do because we've seen her film, but like nobody, no people, you know, like most of what she did in, in the 90s was secret. Yeah, exactly. So apparently just, she had a really big stint in the gap, in the five-year gap that we never heard she, about, and that is what... We know she didn't know. She wasn't <laughs> yeah. around. She was off elsewhere. Yeah, no. So no. That wasn't the case. But, I mean, that's, that's basically all it's... It's presented as, like, a sort of animation that's it's like, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's the right, best part of the film, kind of. It's, it's the best yeah, part it's of the film. Um, it's good. I think then, it's because uh, Spider-Verse had it, so we needed to have our little, yeah. like, interesting mm -hmm. comic booky drawing animation thing. So uh, yeah, you might be right, actually. Cause I think Marvel that's why. Okay. Well, I think it is, Spider. yeah. Because one yeah. could say, like, well, they did it in the show, and it's like, well, they probably did it in the show because of that, too, right? Like, yeah, the show came out after yeah. the Spider-Verse was 2018, so, yeah. Hmm. Oh, well, okay, well, uh-oh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kamala's the movie. Just, she's, uh, she's, she's sitting on her bed, and then her, uh, her bangle that she's wearing starts to, to glow, um, which is a little bit odd. Oh, no. It's not meant to be doing that. But then, uh, then, then there's a floop, and then it's just like, uh oh, what, what's going on? But then we jump back way, way earlier that day, 
to uh to good old Carol sitting on her ship using like I guess portable versions of the scroll memory extraction device to unlock. You mean her the portable memory store? Earth. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> memory store what three point oh. Now remember, so she's trying to unlock her memories from Earth, which was one of the things that she was trying to do in the first movie, which was nearly thirty years ago. Yeah, so she's... I guess in thirty years, <laughs> she's unlocked nothing. Very little progress was made. <laughs> And unlocking the memories, but it's really helpful because it just relays all of the important plot points of Captain Oh, Marvel. it is funny. And uh, <laughs> I made this joke in the Quantumania video that when MODOK arrives, it's like, Scott Lang. And then it's like, oh, you, we fought. And then, ah, oh, you beat me. And it's like, at that one. It's like, ah, and here I am. And it's like, whoa, that was pathetic. Like, <laughs> in the middle of a movie to have a previously on. This movie does it for Captain Marvel, uh, well, Captain Marvel, Monica, and for uh, Kamala. Like, it. In in among the memories, and then the because uh, they have a second memory store scene. They have a second memory store that relays they have other portable memory and, stores. Because yeah, the, the second the, one the, has the, one division stuff and uh, Miss Marvel stuff, I think, in it as well. It's um, it's getting so bad, and the, the the fact that we know that they we could make jokes about like, oh come on, Marvel, no one remembers this character. It's like, no, now the joke is Marvel knows you don't remember this character, and so they're mm -hmm. like, oh shit, uh, this is she did this and this and this. Does that ring any bells? And you're like, no, and they're like, oh. Well, the okay. really funny part is that the, because one of the things that they do in this uh, little sequence to make it seem like it's not just a complete exposition dump is that they have these little glimpses of uh, Carol like wearing the, the, the same costume that she had in the, in the first movie. So back in the 90s, um, blowing up like a uh, big building on our holla, mm. destroying what looks to be like the supreme intelligence, mm. which is essentially the AI entity that controls their entire society. It's one of the villains in the, uh, in the first movie. Um, but then she wakes up and she's like, "Oh, that was that was scary. I didn't like that." And and, um, and, and just random bits in there of like, "Oh, Monica. Oh, I like Monica. Oh, yeah. I've seen Monica in a mm. while." <laughs> it's like, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. In, in, uh, in thirty years, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. I just find it funny that she's made no progress seemingly at all. Like, well, because was it my lucky memories? Was it Wandavision that we discovered that she hadn't seen Captain Marvel since she was a kid, and we were like, "Huh." Because that doesn't even make sense, right? And, and it's like, yeah, this, I guess that's going to be a source of drama. And it's like, we finally get to see how that's going to go in this movie. Mm, and finally acknowledge Carol's startling absence from all Earth affairs they have, uh, in the entire 30 years. Whether accidental on purpose or on purpose, they have made Captain Marvel quite the coward when it comes to dealing with situations. She runs mm -hmm. away from almost everything. Well, I mean, what, she couldn't have been helpful when fighting uh, Loki in Avengers? She couldn't have been no. helpful against Age of Ultron, really? No. I mean, I feel like no. she's just the instant uh, win button that you can just press. Pretty much. And I she mean, can she travel almost instantly, almost instantly across yeah. interstellar travel and everything, but simultaneously can't... We'll get to that. That's fine. Well, yeah, <laughs> she was just busy getting married and singing. Aww. She yeah, was getting busy singing. Day. Married people oh, might funny. be asking, Dude, you know what when, do you mean? You oh, know when she does those, you worry. those bitchy statements <laughs> in some of the films where she's like, um, yeah, you know, your world is in trouble, but there was a lot of worlds out there that needed my help. And like, you know, Rhodey's like, oh yeah, shit, okay. You just you just want a hard cut to the singing, dancing, wedding sequence and just be like, yeah, she was busy, bro. <laughs> busy getting, getting right. busy. She couldn't... Do um, <laughs> I mean, she didn't <laughs> do that, so... Uh, well, so what happens now is Carol, she gets a call from Fury, uh, who mentions a surge in the jump point system a few hours ago. So, reminder, the jump points are like these hexagons in space. We saw them in Guardians 2 for the first time, I think we saw them in Guardians it 2. Was, I think so, yeah. Basically... Honestly, a really great little bit of sci-fi to answer a difficult question easily. Yeah, of how do they travel uh, between, you know, different star systems as quickly. And it's they have this big network of uh, jump points that uh, connect different places across time and space. Like, imagine like a wormhole. You ever um, feel like when they introduce a, a thing like that and it's like, oh, cool. And they make it super simple so that everyone can make use of it and stuff. Like if you were James Gunn and you introduced that as a piece of tech and other people like, do you mind if I you know, use it? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And then this film is like, we're going to talk about how we're the, like, we know what tech made them and how to destroy them, manipulate them, what they made. It's like, no, don't stay away. Don't touch them. They're fine yeah, as they work. Yeah, like yeah, I do, yeah. if you like, start adding all your stupid funny. retarded law to them, they're going to fucking ruin them. <laughs> yeah. What, like the idea they were all created by two bracelets that uh. had to be transported to each place to begin with. And so yeah. whoever set them all up was traveling at normal speed. 
I yes. unless we're meant to assume that they were able to remotely create them across all of time and space from one point. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know about that. Um, but the, the the entire network's been affected by a surge in the the jump point system, and Fury traced it to uh, MB four eighteen, the planet that we saw right at the beginning. Uh, and Carol is nearby. Um, no, she's really she's, close to, uh, she's nearby to everything her. in the galaxy. Okay. Yeah. Um. So again, space is really big. Um. So it's that's pretty yeah. coincidental. But you know, the movie's only just started, so you know, it's no big deal. Um, and then, and then while this is all happening, Fury mentions that, uh, Monica's gonna be sending over some intel because she's been getting reading, readings on it, and that, uh, that kind of gives Carol pause. <gasps> um, she asks if Monica is okay, and then Fury points out that Monica is an adult, uh, and can take care of herself. Which is a little bit awkward. It's like, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it has been 30 years, Carol. <laughs> Where you were you? You kind of suggest, though, like, because she would be essentially immortal at this point, that she can't perceive time, like she would have forgot that it wasn't a little girl, but she's not that old in her own memories, so 30 years should still be a long time to her. Like, yeah, well, she, she, she reacts as if she's a child, but it's been 30 yeah. years. Well, and it, and it's, just, like, it's just odd you to can be... understand it, right? But not here. If there is a mm -hmm. girl who is the daughter of one of your closest and best friends of all time that you told you'd not only protect but be there for, and you haven't seen her in 30 years, but you also work in the same office building, so to speak, with Fury, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like, no, <laughs> that doesn't. Mean, no, it, it, it just seems like an impossibility that they wouldn't be interacting with each other. Because, like, to jump ahead a little bit, later on in the film, like Carol's kind of surprised when uh, Monica mentions that she's a captain at this point. So it's like, oh, so she this has probably been her like whole career, like you know, for her whole life. It, it just seems like she's pretty oblivious to to sort yeah. of what her life. But why, when she is, regularly yeah. interacts with Fury, at least certainly mm -hmm. from Endgame, oh, and, also, and also, you know at some point may or may not have actually visited Earth, you know, even briefly. Um, but that's, that. we're not there yet. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, meanwhile, as this conversation's happening, we cut over to Saber Station, which um, I think this is the first time that we saw this station, right? It's Secret Invasion, they like alluded well, to Well, Far it, From Home, does that count? It. Did we, we see saw it? it in invasion, I thought. At the end of Far From oh, Home, no. we oh, see no. him walking around in the station, right? Uh, but isn't oh, that yeah, like yeah, on a yeah. spaceship? Oh, is that? I that was, was that a, maybe oh. that is? Maybe that was meant to be. I assume a that was supposed to be the drop for the. Like, they would have been contriving all of this shit that we're seeing right now in, like, paper form when Far From Home was on screens. You know what I mean? Like, they were like, like oh, no, yeah. No clear plan of exactly what it was going to mean. Yeah, they um, didn't know. But to help everybody out, so you guys remember S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so in one division, there was S.W.O.R.D., which I think is meant to be, like, the outer space. Equivalent Division. of that. The, the question of yeah. whether or not Sword was just evil. It was confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they well, played yeah, around with that. The, the evil guy, but um evil but guy, Monica yeah. was part of Sword and she's a good guy, so mm -hmm. you know. But it's it Saber is a uh space station in orbit above Earth, uh near the jump point that's above Earth, and they're doing all of their space stuff, and Monica's out there fixing a device uh to get a reading on uh the jump point. And it was mentioned before, she uh she phases through her um, uh, astronaut suit to like shoot lasers out of her hand to repair uh, the equipment. How, what? what <laughs> 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 It's, mm -hmm. it's as bad, you know, when we watched the trailer, the first trailer for the Marvels, there was loads of things people pointed out, including us, about like how nothing makes any sense. It's worse in the context of the film. It's like, wh yes, it what in the world is happening? How can you phase just your arm through the suit when in the whole, like, we, I don't think this is a spoiler, like, in terms of getting ahead, she can only, she, she binary phases, as in, like, she can phase through everything or nothing. She can't, she can't just do, like, an arm. That's something we find out later in the film. But the first thing we see her do is phase through just a portion of her suit. Yeah, it's a Hello? <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess. And, and does that phasing now. stop all physics applying to you? Like, well, you, it makes you wonder what happens else? at the point of her arm in the suit. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the point at which she becomes solid. What, what is? What's happening there? Is like, there a potential breach in the suit. The suit know? should what just else? float yeah. away while she's floating in space, and then she should realize, like, oh, I'm an idiot. I'm about to die because if I rephase, I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> If she if she can phase, does she even need to breathe? Like if she can make herself intangible, like that means I guess. you know what I mean. Like she be could, does she even need? Uh, this is something that 
I don't know what's going on, but in Guardians, when you were in the vacuum of space, you froze and died. But yeah, now, the vacuum everybody space can just is deadly. in the vacuum of space. Like, it's really no problem at all, for the most part. Well, yeah, and um, if everyone remembers that Captain Marvel, she had a little force field that came around her mouth to seal up her suit. And then they just didn't have that later. And then later, she didn't even have the suit. She was just, she was just fine. In space. Yeah. yeah she, and that's she in this as well. Oh, uh, yeah. This, it's in this. And to jump ahead, Monica also appears to be immune to the effects of the vacuum. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not yep. really sure why. Um, uh, it, and anyway, continuing. Um, <laughs> one of the Saber personnel, from, because Monica has powers... Um, one of the Saber personnel that's out there with her just says that she can, like, fix the device. And for some reason, this prompts her to disconnect from her line and then fly over to the jump point. I found that strange. It, th they were talking about fixing the device, and then it's like, well, you got superpowers, so maybe you can fix it quicker. And then she, like, goes elsewhere. I thought they said that they were never going to fix it in time, but... He can't, I but thought he could. nodded to the portal and said, but someone with superpowers could get it directly. Is I get Oh, okay, maybe that's what they said then. Um, I, I, I okay. may have just made it make sense in my head, though. I'm not sure. That's what I assumed. I guess it's not a big deal. You know, maybe she needs to go over and examine the jump point up close to, you know, fix it. It's, but it's she didn't whatever. have any gear with her. That's what I couldn't understand. I this, don't know yeah, this doesn't was. work yeah. because <laughs> she should be doing it with some form of gear. She should never think, I'll just touch it. Like, why would... They would never, so she should yeah. be doing that with gear. Like, I'd at least yeah. buy that. If they said, like, oh, Monica, she... it's a bit dangerous and she's a bit more, she's a, she's a rebel. She'll be like, ah, oh, I'm going to get your readings one way or another. I'm, I'm, I'll be fine. But, uh, and, and you know what? This is something that Fiori points out as well in the movie. <laughs> so it's like, you do know how stupid this is, but yeah. you keep doing it. <laughs> she's she's going to fix it by hand. It's the notion of I even being able it. to fix it. You know, the idea that you can fix an ancient, network of uh like portals between space it kind of now i can't remember but in mass effect did they ever like do any work on the relays or were the relays the relays were just as, as they I know, were they were just as they were protean technology that they yeah. used for their empire so that's uh, as, like, yeah i can't imagine that they'd be doing maintenance on it it's kind of like you have to work with the system or you don't get to use it at all but you know again it's you know not not a big deal maybe maybe they can do something to fix that surge um, yeah, but yeah, she starts flying over to the jump point and then we cut back to Carol flying down to, uh, the MB-418, the, the barren planet. Uh, she's got Goose with her, the alien cat from the first movie. She just brought her down for, uh, with her for some reason. Why? Yep. Why? Well, you know, because you know the answer memes, to that, Friggy. Just funny memes. Funny well, memes. I know the reason why is because, uh, Goose is perhaps, Perhaps the most important character in this film. <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she, she, uh, she, as this is happening, we cut back to Fury noticing that Monica is, uh, flying over to the, uh, to the, to the jump point near Saber to try and get a reading on the residual effects. And then for, and then Fury connects, uh, Carol and Monica's calls. Um, but it's kind of like they're static. It's kind of like it's, it's doing a bit of a floomp. But um, they manage to get enough through that Monica realizes she's been connected to Carol, but she don't she don't want to talk to her. She's like, oh no, I, I you know I, I don't want to hmm. I don't want to have a reunion like this. I don't want to talk to her. And and it's like, hmm, interesting. I was sensing a little bit of uh, tension, a bit of <laughs> sensing a little bit of conflict, I guess. Um, and there's really nothing more to be made of that. That's that's that. And then they just move forward with the plot. Unless anybody else had any observations about that exchange. <laughs> No, we'll get <laughs> more on it. Yep, moving on. Um, so Carol, as she's flying around on the, the moon, she finds an unstable jump point above the planet. Um, this one isn't closing, and it's kind of like, it's looking a bit floopy. It's, it's sort of cracking at the seams and everything. Isn't there a, um, a comedic beat, though, of like her being like, oh, you know, I think I found something, and then the camera shows us her POV, and it's this enormous energy yeah. swirling thing, and it's just like, <laughs> hmm... That looks like something. Oh, yeah, I, I think I found something <laughs> over here. Um, but it's at this point that there's a lot of static. Like, Fury can't talk to Carol. There's just static. He can't hear her. Ah, uh, damn. Um, darn. Ah. Oh. Yeah, damn. That's unfortunate. Could this have possibly um, happened. Dang. Uh, and, and, and it's the same with Monica as well. She was getting a lot of static as well. Um, despite this, uh, both of them continue to head towards the, uh, towards the jump points, the respective ones in their different locations. 
Um, and there's a bunch of leaking. <laughs> okay, so there's a bunch of like there's a there's goo like leaking from these jump points. Ooh, there's goo. Like, you like that? First thing you do yeah, is touch this goo. Yeah, this isn't this isn't the fun kind of goo. It's it's oh, lame goo. Oh, this is bad um, goo. Yeah, it's 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 jump point unstable jump point goo, and it's leaking oh, off okay. of the uh, it's leaking off of the jump points. And Carol and Monica very slowly start approaching it and reaching out and touching it. For seemingly no reason at all for both of them. That's what, well, that's what you would do, though. You know? I mean, yes, That's what you do. You that's see, what I do. That's surely well, what you, you would do. You would just you see, you touch it. You space goo. You, you'd go towards it and you'd touch it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I can't argue with that. Um, but in any case, as they're, <laughs> as they're reaching for it, we start to see they're showing Carol and Monica, and then they're showing Kamala at the same time mm. uh, in, the, in each of the locations. And as Carol and Monica start reaching at the goo, um, there's like a big, like, oh, oh my god, something's happened. And all of the characters have switched to locations. Uh, mm. They're all in different locations. So uh, Kamala has been teleported into no. space. Yeah. If we can, the, the, there's no reason not to establish it now, so that we can see how it plays out as we go along. But it's it's the the jump point, you know, energy was initially created with the the bands, and so that's why, you know, one Monica happening to touch it at the same time, Captain Marvel happens to touch it at the same time, uh, Kamala is wearing the band. That's what connects mm -hmm. those three. It's like, okay, shouldn't there be a fourth connection here? The uh, the, the, the lady who's wearing the other band. You know what? That's a really good point. Um, yeah, that would have that would have been interesting probably. though. When we can't Imagine do that, it was switching the fucking <laughs> villain. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been oh, oh, yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> but um, that's not how it works. It's no, just that's not how it works. Oh, well. great. Which um probably worth stating right now. Uh, this is insane. Um, that this happened, that these two characters just so happened to touch leaking energy from unstable jump points at exactly the same moment, thereby entangling all of their powers and making them switch places whenever they use them, thereby creating the whole story. That's insane. It's That's so an insane stupid. coincidence. It's an insane coincidence driven by a really stupid decision, which is why would you touch the leaking goo? Why would you do that? No, no, yes. Yeah. The adventurous spirit that we typically sit here from you, Fringy. <laughs> I, 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 um, it's, it's nuts for any one character to do it both of them do it and they do it at exactly the same time it's like okay and in the movie they explain it but they don't even seem to realize why it's happened because they say they're just entangled through light based powers they never yes. go wait were you touching this portal at exactly the same moment I do, yeah. I do? it's weird the first time uh, well, it happened I was so confused I was like what? what is going on <laughs> no, but see, that's what, what, that's what the filmmakers were going for. They were looking to, so the audience would be like, oh, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, but it, it's not in a good way because it's edited so bad. It's oh, so yeah. badly made. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the, because uh, they did an entire month of reshoots. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if this was one of the things they added in to try and explain how they were tied properly. And before, mm -hmm. it was just, we have the same powers, therefore this happened. <laughs> well, the, I, I think the thing is, it's, it's what Mola mentioned, but it is like, you know, Kamala's not doing anything. She's just like sitting in her house. Yeah. And it's specifically that her bangle glows, which means if she wasn't wearing it, would she have not been uh, entangled? I, the answer's got to be yes, right? Yeah. Because she didn't I do anything. I would assume so. Yeah. So let's yeah. go with the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm, it's just. I, 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 it just seems, and then of course, when you stack on top that Carol was even in a position to be able to do this, that she was just in the neighborhood, in all of the places she could have been, in not only in the Milky Way galaxy, but in any of the other galaxies she's visited, she just happened to be right next to the place uh, where the unstable, the first unstable jump point was created, so that she could even be there to touch it and then cause the whole plot to happen. So yeah, that on considering top. the scale of the universe, uh, it's actually insanely fortunate. Yes. This is also why Monica Rambeau is in a suit to begin with, because she doesn't need one. She can be in space and be absolutely fine. So she's only in that suit so that Miss Marvel doesn't die immediately. Yeah, yeah. because because she yes. stays with the suit to touch the goo. Um, and then when it switches, uh, Kamala gets teleported into the space suit. But like, imagine if she didn't. Imagine if the space suit also got teleported, and then the <laughs> oh, film yeah. 
Kamala being teleported into the Kamala vacuum would die space. instantly. Nick Fury would probably be like, huh. Yeah, because yeah, their clothes house, teleport. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Um, but, the... but yet the spacesuit doesn't. And at one point, Miss Marvel even teleports people within an area of effect on her. Yep. Well, yeah, it's it's because uh, because she teleports Goose because Goose like jumps onto her, and then yeah, she teleports people who were like contained within spheres that she creates with her light powers. So, C can you yeah. imagine if like Nick Fury's just staring out of his window, and then just someone teleports and just sees a like a pop in space? <laughs> it, like, yeah, that'd, be really <laughs> that'd be a weird movie. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so this is, like, what, five coincidences stacked on top of each other that are insane. Uh, We're yeah, 10 minutes it, it, in. It's already destroyed. Like, all the plot yeah, doesn't make it's fucking over. sense. It's completely it's, it's, crazy. It's, it's Jova before and, it's even began. Well, and I, and I guess the saddest part of it all is just, like, once again, it's like, I was listening, movie. You told me it worked this way, and then you just totally didn't have it work that way at all. <laughs> why, mm -hmm. why do you even bother? What's the point? I gave you the, the the tiniest amount of credit by listening to you, <laughs> and then you screwed me. But paying attention to you, to this movie is punishing. You are punished for paying attention to what happens. Yeah, um, I especially agree with that. Well, especially Halfway if you pay attention. The movie. To oh, sorry, go for it. Halfway through the movie, I realized that I was not paying attention to any of the plot. It's and like nothing. when you suddenly wake I... up and you don't realize you've yeah. like dozed off for a <laughs> moment. Like... Oh, wait, like, oh, there's no. like, Your head lifts up. there's yeah, things you're like, oh, happening. Shit, did, I, did I sleep? There's this, yeah. It's a... <laughs> it's, 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 you said it's self defense like, I... mechanism. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Why do they want yeah, to eat the it's... sun? Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> halfway through this the movie, sun. I realized I was watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> So as mentioned before, uh, I think you mentioned it before, not so that the editing is very confusing. Um, yes. So I'll try my best to help be clear on where everybody is at any given time. So after oh, this please one, do. after this switch, Carol is teleported into Kamala's house. Uh, Monica is teleported uh, teleported to the moon that uh, Carol was on, um, and uh, Kamala gets teleported into space. Um, and then the blast shoots her. She gets uh, sent back to Saber. Uh, and then it's like, oh my god, oh look, it's Nick Fury, oh, how exciting, Ooh. which- Oh wow, I, don't know. I know Nick Fury! I do too. Yeah, yeah, but like, you just got teleported into space, like, I don't know, I feel like this hype is misplaced, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm, I'm weightless in space. space, the sensation, like, the physical sensation of me, like, all of a sudden being weightless in a spacesuit outside of the earth was like oh yeah that, that would probably be more important even if in universe that was samuel l jackson yeah. i still think that that takes second priority to my current well, imagine seeing the earth where she was it's, that would be something to behold you know it'd be like fuck mm -hmm. but oh, well. yeah. um oh and, and i guess is it is it just worth mentioning very quickly the rules for the for the flip of flop and uh, if one of the three people use their powers, it's fine. If two at the same Except time use it, it, they switch. If three use them all at the same time, they all like, you know, clockwise switch, switch or anti-clockwise, whatever. Yeah. It's random, right? It, but, they um, could go oh. anywhere, seemingly. Um, yeah. I watched yeah, the they... entire movie. I didn't realize that was the rule. Yeah, me Oh, because too. they break it a lot. That's it why. When... <laughs> they, break, they break it a lot. So they, do, they do explicitly say it, but they contradict themselves. But yes, Fringy. the idea... Of... There's logic yeah. to this? Fringy. Fuck oh, <laughs> yeah. me. Sorry, Fr Fringy. Did you know that today is the 12-year anniversary of Skyrim? Really? Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Skyrim oh, wow. came da -da. out 12 years ago today. Is that why they released years. the Marvels and had us cover it today as a celebration? Makes sense. Well, of I, yeah. it's a it's a very it's an incredible day. It's this twelfth year twelfth year anniversary of Skyrim. It's also Veterans Day in the U.S. So thank you, veterans. Good job. Well, yeah, remember. Yeah. Sorry, well, we're covering the Marvels day, yes, no. uh, your day, <laughs> but uh, we are veterans uh, ourselves in a strange way. Uh, it's been all uh, the of the sludge war. Terrible things. So uh, Carol heads downstairs and bumps into Kamala's family, who react relatively calmly all things considered to just captain marvel being in their house um yeah and she goes yeah that but you know now that, well, that's a, a lot in this movie i think it's uh, part of a general issue even though the family's probably my favorite part um yeah, the yes i, the, I they have a like line them. i really like yeah the characters in um and we saw this in quantum mania we saw we see this a lot in a lot of stuff People don't take their situations seriously. And if they don't take their situations seriously, 
it is it makes it difficult for me to take their situations seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the film kind of doesn't this... want you to take it seriously. No, that's, no, that's kind no, of no. Like, no. Don't take it seriously. No, no. What were you saying? Is this Captain Marvel pressuring you? That was the one line that got me to laugh. That was the one <laughs> line. Uh, well, well, wait, and, uh, and the whole related thing uh, when when she refers to her as Auntie Carol, and then they're like, "Oh it's yeah, related." <laughs> there, okay. It's if you like go up to a wall, right? You're trapped in this terrible room, and it's the MCU. You're in the terrible MCU room. And you notice on the wall there's a tiny little pinhole, a little tiny little pinhole, and you're like, "Oh, that's interesting." And you and you look through the pinhole. And on the other side of the wall is just the normal world. Just the nor just normal world, reality, normal people, things happening, laws of laws. It's wonderful. The family is like that tiny, tiny little bitty, itty bitty, tiny pinhole that that you're looking through. Well, and even they aren't normal a lot, so. No, no, and they're not that like super normal, but yeah. they're like kind you of like that, that's the pinhole, right? Large, right? It's not like a window. It's a Pinhole. Well, and as a lot of Into reviewers normal. have been saying, and I kind of agree with it, it's like Kamala herself is also like kind of reminds you of a little bit of enthusiasm. Remember that that experience, that emotion. Mm -hmm. So, like I the remember. actress is like trying the most so hard. Charming part yeah, she she wants to have fun. Uh, and then you're like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. good for you. <laughs> I mean, she has more personality than the other two. Two of the yeah. 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 Well, it helps that her, yeah, it helps that her actress is like a legit fan of the yes. character and the source material. Yeah, but so we won't hold that against her. her. She does a yeah. best with, you know, with with what she's given. It it is actually kind of sad and a shame that uh yeah that I guess that she's she's part trying of all on this. it. Yeah, but they don't do anything with her character. Her character is I really like Captain Marvel. Well, wait, wait, wait. Well, hold on. We, we, you know, the movie's only started. Maybe we've got a bunch of riveting true, character true. development. Yeah, come. That's true. She's gonna um, go on an arc. What are you remember those? Do you remember, yeah, remember those? Remember arc? Arc? Like a character yeah, maybe changing over time. I feel like Captain now Marvel. Myself, the f the film was where they killed Ox in the MCU. It's like that's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Because mm. I mean, like Ant Man and the Wasp had an arc. Point, and we began at that point. Yeah, and they, here we are. Had an arc. Wait, Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, they had an arc, right? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Why Captain Marvel was kind of the beginning of the end of Ox. <laughs> oh God, no. Uh, <laughs> it's it, it's complicated uh, because even Endgame has some like what could be called arcs. They're like thin and and small and weird. Wait, some of them happen your... off screen, all that. Meme, did did you? Did you purchase a Discord profile animation? Um, it, this one came free. Oh, does it? Okay, all right. Yeah, this was one of the free ones. Right. the test. That's why I asked before I mocked you. You're good. Yeah. You're fine. Um, <laughs> well, so anyway, uh, Carol heads out uh, side and attempts to fly back into space and gets teleported uh, back to MB4118. So I guess she just decided to fly <laughs> after being teleported to Earth. I don't all know, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's like, hmm, all right. This is where I, I start to get confused. Like, when she flies, she only teleports when she hits a certain <laughs> speed. Like, they can fly, but if they fly uh, too fast, people teleport I into think them. What the logic is meant to be that at some point when she was flying, uh, Monica must have used her powers, and so mid-flight they switched. Right, I believe I, that is I, the logic, yes. My theory was that it was like Back to the Future, but like when they hit a certain speed, something happened. Like, that was oh, the you gotta go 88 miles an hour to switch player. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> yes. No, I, I, it's, it's meant to be <laughs> when they use their powers. Um, but, but yeah, that, that teleports Carol back there. Well, uh, uh, and then she's, it should be mentioned. Yeah. Um, how does the universe determine when the power is quote-unquote being used? I think it's relatively straightforward for Kamala, at least for, to the audience, because she's a human who can then make constructs. Like, so it's whenever she makes the constructs, I guess. With Monica, it's like, well, it's a little bit harder to say because she's barely human at this point. Her, like, biology mm -hmm. is completely altered. And then, like, Captain Marvel, she's always using her power, quote-unquote, because she's, like, super strong and really I agile. I think that logic and... is meant to be that it's like, it's kind of like whenever you see some glowing power of some yeah. kind, like whenever you see something that's kind of color-coded to one of the characters, but then it's like, alright, yeah, now they're blasting, using the power to switch. 
uh, the Lightspeed engine onto her provided her a laundry list of power, but then it's like, yeah, but I'm, only using flight or punching with your glowiness activates it. It's like, no, oh. I, I know what you mean. It's, it's like she has active and passive abilities. Yeah. It's like the passive abilities are irrelevant <laughs> in terms of the, the, the switching. Yeah, pretty much. You just have to accept it. Otherwise, the whole movie can't happen. Um, but then, in any case. You have to remember uh, her powers are genetic now, because that's how we could take her blood and give it to other people. Oh, oh, right, because in Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. yeah, that's a Fuck. good point. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we did, I got uh... confused why the person from Secret Invasion, Gia, wasn't switching when they said, we get tied together <laughs> for our life powers. Well, she, so she, she didn't touch... We have to... So we, I think with all of this, we have to accept that it is because they were touching the goo. Yes. And Marla was wearing the bangle. It that has to be why they I, th I still think that was a reshoot. I don't think that was original. I don't know. I just... Trailer, I love the idea of Gaia getting fucking thrown into all this, too. She's just <laughs> booping around with all of them, like, well, who the fuck are you? And she's like, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, then you gotta throw in Adam Warlock as well. He's got some light-based shit going on, doesn't she's he? Yeah, but he destroying didn't touch Earth the at this point. You gotta That's touch the goo, but touch you also... <laughs> well, you <laughs> all have a bangle, which, like I said, but, da but da again, Darth Ben should be yeah. joining them for this adventure. Maybe she took it off, though. Maybe she had oh. already taken it off. That would make no sense at all. Someone in chat is asking, yeah. was the power stone in the movie like Rags predicted? No. No. No, it was not. We'll, we'll get to that when we introduce. Uh, yeah. Well, we kind of we'll have. have but uh, yeah. well, I want to talk about her hammer. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, the cause, yeah, because we didn't, we didn't see her doing anything with the hammer in the uh, the opening, unfortunately. Well, I, I genuinely um, just take it as a mistake on their part that they've well, I think copied Ronan's the hammer. Oh, like, what do you mean? A mistake that they've copied the hammer? It, it doesn't. Just I saw wow. someone uh, say, like, well, when you consider how they made the Hydra weapons, they used the energy of the Tesseract, and that was separated from the Tesseract, right? And it's like, yeah, but nobody was mass-producing Ronin hammers from the fucking Power you Stone. Know you don't know and, that. and it got destroyed. No, they weren't, because it was in Xandar, then it went to Thanos, yeah. and then it was destroyed. You didn't, you don't, you yeah, could have done that. Yeah, maybe, maybe he took a, he took a detour to give the schematics to one of his guys on the way there. It's like, can you make a copy of this? You can know? you make a Just rodent know, hammer yeah. with the purple flames and then I'll pass it over to case. the skill for some reason? That's a part of the Kree I, that Thanos doesn't have alignment with at all, but yeah, sure. I, I get what you mean though, in terms of the error of it's all, it's all purple flumes, but like, the reason why it's, it was a purple flimp was because of the power stone. Yeah. Beca and so, yeah, like, my dumbass is like, oh, okay, so it's like the Ronin hammer, it's purple, it glows like the power stone. This is like power stone stuff. And the movie's like, oh, no. No. <laughs> no, it's not. The movie's I like, I'm not, I don't care. Okay, someone said, Mola, wrote of the accuser as yeah. a title, accusers get the hammer. Why are you saying that to me? <laughs> is that what accusers? What does that assist at all? Accusers like, get the hammer. Is that? Like, I don't like care who has the fucking stitches? hammer. I care accusers who has the purple the hammer? hammer, the purple also, glowy that's hammer. Funny. That's not her title. Her title is Supreme or Suprema, right? Wasn't it? Well, so when oh, she I said my mean. predecessor, I didn't know if she meant Ronan or the Supreme Intelligence or both. I, I she assume meant the that it was Ronan. Well, uh, that right. there you go. <laughs> we just said this. <laughs> because well, it, it, right? two different answers. What were Ronan? Did what were Ronan's shoulders? Did, what did they look like? Uh, uh, <laughs> what Ronan's like shoulders? Like? Blue. Yeah, no, the big, the they big were shoulder blue. pads. Yeah. Oh my fucking god. Because it, yeah, it's anyway, she, laugh, she, smaller. This is serious. We're trying to solve the film. Uh, what was her name, <laughs> Franny? Su Suprema? Suprema. I think it was Suprema. Suprema yeah, Darth is... Ben the Suprema. Yeah, she's I not called cringe. Suprema Darth Ben the Accuser. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. A pizza flavor. <laughs> you in chat? You got it wrong. That's right. Sit down. Yeah. That's right. Well, yes, I was well, I mean, trying to use my brain. To so explain to that chatter, I don't well, care that she has a hammer. Sin, I right? care that her hammer is all magical and purpley. It shouldn't be. Because I'm a nerd, yeah, yeah. okay? Imagine... Unless it's just coincidental. Yeah, she, she just... Yeah. Like, purple <laughs> just goes well with, like, like a dark gray black. I think that's what it... I genuinely think that's why it's in the movie. They're like, the hammer looks cooler when it's got the purple lights on it. Mm. Well, the animation to her I own color. Like... She's living in the we footsteps a, of a man. In animation department, they were like, we need a hammer. And they probably contacted other people or like, you know, searched through our archives and found a hammer and they used it and nobody realized it was Ronin's. Like, that's my headcanon. I mean, to they the point that audiences tested most positively with purple. 
<laughs> it genuinely feels like she inherited his hammer without them remembering the hammer got fucking destroyed. Like they're like, mm, oh, it did. You're like, yeah, and they're like, oh, well, yeah. dimensions, uh, universes, yeah, time oh, yeah. Don't tell me. Look, this is just this is just like the dwarves, okay? Ronin accusers always have spare hammers, just like dwarves have spare, spare purpley axes. hammers too. Hi ho! Yeah. You don't want people to know you're using your spare hammer. Exactly. All oh, right. Uh, sorry. Imagine if they Carol... were still doing the switching when the sun reignited. That would have been funny. That's what Disparu was talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they must have been because it's only when the the villain is over. No, that's you, like, oh yeah, by the way, clearly you missed the part where one of the characters just said it's not happening anymore, and they're like, oh okay. Yeah, but that was afterwards. Yeah, but you have to just trust that what they're saying is totally accurate and applies to whenever you wouldn't want it to happen. I really wish they they would have told me the moment because I took that as the moment it was over. So if it had finished beforehand, it would have been funny though. When. <laughs> Just fucking depositing Miss Marvel into the center of a I mean, sun. It's <laughs> Miss Marvel. Bye. Yeah. She's like, no, we won't switch anymore, trust me. And then she gets teleported into the sun. <laughs> but it's like before um, uh, Captain Marvel hits, so it does fuck all. <laughs> so uh, Carol just starts fighting a bunch of Kree soldiers who are now there, that weren't there before. Maybe they were hiding somewhere on the planet. Uh, and she, Why? she grabs one of the... Yeah. I I guess I'll wait until they knew that Carol was going to come, even though oh, they didn't. Because they were, the, oh. were they were waiting what, what? in order to tell her where to go next. That's their whole. Well, yes. There. So the the big important thing is that she grabs one of the soldiers, like, "Oh, what's Darvet up to?" And he's like, "Oh, you're too late. She's going to Tarnak. She's going to fuck it up." It's like, "Oh, thanks, bro. You just told her where to go." <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't defeat nothing, her. Carol, She's going to get said nothing. She'd have nothing. There'd actually be nothing for her. She'd have no leads. Well, nothing. there's no reason no for them to be there. So if they were just with Darth Ben, this well, yeah, whole plotline would again be different. Do you, do you? Do you? Am I going insane? Are you saying Darth Ben? I am saying that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just yeah. making sure. <laughs> okay, so for the sake of clarity, I'll just keep calling her Darth Ben now, just to, just to make sure that we're not confused. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted Darth to check and make sure. I actually, I thought, I actually thought that was her name. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like a weird Darth Kyle. It ben is her name coming now. back or. Um, in any case, the thing Carol is, just. Oh, no, yep. but she she hates being called the Annihilator, right? Because mm -hmm. she, she's like, it, it gets explained <laughs> later. But she despises the name. Someone even calls her. She's like, I don't like that name. And the first thing she does when she meets these Kree soldiers is murder all of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I was about to say she kills all of them. Well, she is Captain Marvel. <laughs> she is Captain Marvel. Have mercy, if you want yes. your name to change. Well, yeah, no, she, she found a better way, Dispro. She'll just kill all the people that call her that. <laughs> then <laughs> then they will She'll <laughs> annihilate them. She's um, just trying to get them to call him Murderella. She'll prefer that than another. <laughs> if you're a Kree soldier and you all of a sudden find yourself watching Captain Marvel like teleport in front of you, um, and then like and she like destroyed your civilization, aren't aren't you gonna be like like you're not gonna say that? This is like if you like see Satan. Oh yeah, you'd be petrified. <laughs> You'd be like, well, I mean, holy crap, it's you. You're the it's the annihilator. You're the one. And he's Why would like, they oh, even actually. pick a fight with her, you know? Why why bother? Yeah. Like she's indestructible. Flee for my life. Can't kill her. So they just run out there to give her information that is essential, <laughs> otherwise she'd be at a dead end and then she die and then they die. That's it, you're done, see ya. And then she flies off, goes to her ship, tells uh Fury that the Cree are uh, going to Tarnax to mess with the scrolls, because this there are some scrolls there, and then Fury uh tells Carol all right, like, chill out. They're, they're, like, doing a peace summit, and Carol kind of doesn't really care. She's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, all good, and flies away. Well, I think <laughs> we're meant to assume. I don't know if we're meant to assume if these are secret invasion scrolls or scrolls from some other place. I think they did offhand mention that uh, good old Graf, Gra, Gra, Graphite, who was his name from? Graphite. That's the one. I think he said he, he'd collected... So, or they'd collected some pockets of scrolls, and there's always more pockets of scrolls. I think we're just supposed to assume this is just a well, yeah, pocket of scrolls. Um, the uh, the the scroll leader that we meet there, Drogue. I think that's his name, Drogue. He says they're like scattered across the cosmos. So I guess we there's an inexhaustible supply of just extra scrolls whenever we need them to like appear for the plot. Um, but but th basically the point here is that there is no connection to Secret Invasion. Like they're not connected at all. Thank this is God. not related. This doesn't follow. Well, I think it just caused problems, right? Because it I means mean, yeah. that there's no acknowledgement of everything that went wrong with that, including Carol's failure for the scrolls as well. Just to throw it on top. 
Um, I'll take your word for it. I can't help the scrolls, but I can fuck up the Kree. Um, so, in any case, um, now this is, this is confusing. Monica is back <laughs> on Saber. Help me out here. Yes. That confused so, me so much. So, the reason why this is confusing to me is, so, Kamala just decided to use her light powers at some point while she was floating in space, or when Fury brought her on to Saber, and then she switched again with Monica. Yes, that's what we're supposed to assume happened. I wonder if there was a scene to explain this and it got cut. I I have to imagine there is because otherwise I don't really understand. Like that just doesn't follow to me at all. Like I, I don't I don't no, see there's how no... it could line up this way. Like maybe Miss Marvel was like, oh, I've got to boot myself toward the space station. I don't know how to use this suit. Maybe I'll use my powers. And then she goes, whoa, I'm back home. Isn't yeah, that crazy? The problem is she seems to know how to use the powers because she uses, you know how like the spacesuits have the jets of compressed air to slow her down? She uses those somehow when she's flying towards Saber. Yeah, so that she is, did yeah. that or someone on board did it. So you get, we got nothing. There's something wrong here. Um, yeah. The way that I tried to figure it out is so, because Carol got switched back to the moon, which means Monica used her powers, but... If only those two used the powers, then Monica would have been teleported to Kamala's house, unless she also coincidentally used her powers at the same time, and coincidentally got teleported home instead of to the moon, where she would have either been killed or captured by the Kree, and then they would have gotten the second bangle, and then Darben would have won. No, no, yes. no. If she got no, the second bangle, yes, she would no. not have won free. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well. It, it's she would have she would have won per se. She would have we'll put it in quotes won, briefly. She would have yes, won. Quote. As, as far as we're aware at this point, she would have succeeded. She would have gotten what she wanted. Yes. But fortunately, it didn't pan out that way at all. Otherwise, the whole movie is completely different. So that's pretty coincidental. Uh, all right, anyway, guys, uh, you'll get the payoff for me saying that in about three hours from now, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, three yeah. hours. That's wishful thinking. Um, hey, we'll see. <laughs> we have okay, more faith uh, in you than the movie does. But the main takeaway uh, now is that um, Fury and uh, Monica, they're very confused about what's happened, and they go into a space elevator that's going to take them down to Earth. And then we uh, cut over to Kamala is back in her house talking to uh, her family, who then reveal to her that uh, Captain Marvel was in the house. And, you know, has that, has that got anything to do with your superhero shenanigans? And, you know, while they're talking about that, she's like freaking out because, oh my god, I'm getting to meet my hero, Captain Marvel. <laughs> And he's very excited. Um, and I think it's meant to be funny. Um, mm. It's not. Did any of you laugh once in this movie? Nope. No. Um, no. I, I, there was I that pissed one myself line. at Black Girl Magic because um. it had no explanation. Oh, no. Yeah, in the I same way that maybe someone in a straight jacket might laugh. Yeah. There, there's <laughs> one scene where Carol quickly switches uh, between her and Monica when she hits the ground and then <laughs> Fury's like, oh, cool, it's just Carol. Oh, yeah, that, I <laughs> think that's the closest that they got to a decent joke, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. I do think that's funny, but it's so out of character because if you were, yeah. like, it, you just wouldn't. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's fine. It's like, it went. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't laugh. Uh, I laughed at the movie at some point. I meant with, not the, very yeah, with. Very obvious. <laughs> The obvious sequence that we're gonna get to, but I was laughing. So, it was hysterical. I was laughing so hard the entire row was shaking. My sister was like, oh my "Are God. you okay?" And I was like, "No, I'm not okay." <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I am not okay. <laughs> the, the, the flirking scene on the spaceship. I was also laughing through all of that. But, but, but like added, that was me right? writing my own plot. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I see. Yeah, I saw well, that as a flirt. horror movie. <laughs> But with that, I was wondering, did I hit the skip button by accident, or did they write in the skip button to the script? Because that's the first time Definitely I've ever seen Definitely wrote happen. the skip button in, yes. Yeah. We, um, there's like uh, another two hours of this movie, probably, that they would have liked to be in here. May, yeah, there's definitely, definitely stuff that got cut, which, um... Thank God. Uh, I know. We, well, we yeah, know the times. Of. Can you I think imagine, the first one was like, like an half hour hours. more of this? Mm -hmm. It'd be like, nuts. like, all of this, plus an hour more. Yeah, I, I kind of, as much as I can imagine an hour of extra stuff being cut, like you said, just for at the same time, I can't fathom watching like an hour more of this. And mm. like, I can't, I can't imagine that in a certain sense. Um, but in any case, uh, Carol flies over to uh, Tarnax 
and she just flies onto uh, Darth Ben's ship because I guess the ship oh, doesn't have any kind of security protocols or like scanners right. or anything. No the scanners. Thing, thing of note for me in that moment is the animation is so bad. Uh, for yes, her. It looks pretty bad. The transition oh, when she's like, yeah, flying in it looks really rough. I don't get it. It's like, it's like well, this film was rushed as well. Then I guess like hardcore. Was it though? I thought this film was. Shot I thought in, like, they had time, and it's like that yeah. sequence is small, and it's just a flying. I say just a flying person who's then walking, but like you can simulate that easily, right? Like, come on. Well, you figure that you could just do it with wire work, but I guess not. Uh, yeah, um, which would have been a lot cheaper, yeah. but you know. Well, yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she sneaks in. At, oh, and Goose is here too, again. Um, this is so important that Goose is here this time. Um, a lot of the movie doesn't happen if, if she didn't bring Goose with her. Uh, but yeah, th they just sneak onto the ship and nobody notices. Um, nobody notices. Nobody, there's no... Like, you can just fly into an open, like, wall on the side of the ship and just walk through it. I just find that really funny. It is odd. Um, you would think that you'd have, like, a, a door... You think you oh, have something like locked? Yeah. You wouldn't just have that open so that things and debris could enter. Mm -hmm. But the Cree don't but believe I... in doors, you see. Or the oxygen mm, leave right, the yeah. ship. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they they never fixed the damn door, right? That's what happened. Oh, so they didn't no. get the <laughs> no rent. I but you know. no rent. Yeah. Uh, and then we we pan down to the uh, on the surface of the planet. There's like a little scroll city on this planet, Tarnax, and uh, Darth Ben is here, meeting with uh, Droge. Drogue, the the scroll guy, and um, they Darth helpfully Droge. relay Darth Droge. Yeah, sure. Um, Earth Day boy. And he he <laughs> helpfully they they relay a lot of valuable, uh, not clunky at all exposition to the to the viewer. So here's what we learn: um, Carol destroyed the Supreme Intelligence, and a civil war broke out on Hala. It destroyed the planet's ecology. The atmosphere was poisoned, and their star is dying. I guess we just, just have like, to accept that that's just happening. Just like Disney, yeah, their star is uh, dying. Yeah, a little bit. So, <laughs> so yeah, that that's like a that's really important to bear in mind. Carol destroyed the Supreme Intelligence that caused a civil war, and it's basically destroyed Hala to the point that it's doomed. Nobody, um, the the only one, the most believable one, and it's still a fucking gap, is the polluted air. It's like that can happen from a war, I guess. There could be even like attempts to destroy the. You know, the air stuff is like, you lost all of your water. It's like, all of the water uh, as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and of, then course, of course, I don't. Well, the atmosphere the does keep the water, like, the, the water would otherwise go into space, right? That, I'm sure. Well, the thing is, is no, they didn't the lose their atmosphere, though. They have there an, is an atmosphere. atmosphere. Oh. It's just poisoned. They, but they, this is what yeah. I mean. There's a lie going on at some point Maybe in this movie in terms of the physics. so fucking hard. They're, um, we, they show masks, physics. and I assume the masks are telling us, oh, they can breathe the poisonous air thanks to the masks. It's like, meaning they have an atmosphere. Yeah, they have, because if they don't have an atmosphere, then they're just being blasted with radiation exactly. like, all day. So maybe it's like, um, maybe they're just using Bloom it as shorthand. Talk. Like, technically it's atmosphere, but it's not yeah, breathable, like, so they don't call it that. Like, you don't walk into a McDonald's and say, wow, there's so much food in here, you know? Yeah, but the thing is, if you got a load of dirty gas and then just added new oxygen to it, that would also just get polluted. I guess they'd hope is that they've diluted it sufficiently to where it's I not mean, poison uh, anymore. Yeah, but if the war's not what, over... I genuinely think the people who made that scene didn't talk to the people who made the scene where they try and, like... Un like we're not quite there yet. It's kind of, I want to talk about the, 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 the way they try and fix that problem later. I guess we'll get there. Okay. Yeah, but also, but it's just, also oh, yeah. you're gonna liquefy the atmosphere if you add more air because that's gonna increase atmospheric pressure. If the I'm not, you're gonna well, no, look, right? we got science fiction flames because of course this is all getting past the big one, which is how does a civil war kill a star and not only kill a star but kill it in thirty years when stars have lifespans <laughs> of billions of years? At least you know, really, which really all unlucky. Things. Really main unlucky. Yellow star, which is what the, well, uh, and, the and star is. It should be mentioned, like, the implication is by destroying the Supreme Intelligence, it, like, turned the sun off, and it can be switched back on. That's all we get, is, like, I destroyed the, the Supreme Intelligence, and so then the star died. I'm like, <gasps> yeah. what? The star I died don't know what happened. Nobody buys it. The thing it. is, like, for as much as I can accept the atmosphere and the drought, as much as I could be like, okay, which we Civil can't. War, had, <laughs> which we can't, but, you know, as but much as I could do that, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand the the star one. I don't get it. I don't no. understand why it's dying. Yeah. They get harder to believe. Said, like, the more they were draining its power for war, then yeah, they would have destroyed the planet. Oh, like in uh, like in TFA, 
the they drain yeah. the star of the stars. Yay. But the thing is, is that why would why would they do that? If you drain the star for the planet that you're fighting for control over, why would you do that? You'd just be destroying the planet you're trying to win. Yeah, there's more so, than enough like, energy in a sun to multiply. Yeah, like well, just how did sphere. how was there this civil war thing happening anyway? Like how did they, how did you get to this point? It's like if Captain Marvel just arrives on Hala, kills a bunch of Kree, and destroys what is essentially their their entire system. It's just like, how was there a civil war? Wouldn't it have just been everyone hates you? I guess power uh, vacuum would power be the vacuum, argument. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah but yeah, power could, there's, a, no, there, there's a lot of ways to explain it over yeah, time. Power vacuum because there's no atmosphere. All she, <laughs> all she would have done is piss. At, she's like, the, you know, she would be the annihilator to their entire culture. But they, te I thought that the civil war was supposed to be from the fact that she revealed to the Kree that they've been lied to. But then a lot of them wouldn't have been lied to. A lot of them were in on it, and that that creates the schism. Mm -hmm. But like, we never go over that. They just say there was a civil war, and it's like, okay, wh what was like? How did it start? Was it you? Did you just like, what's going on? <laughs> we just, yeah, also. That, that She's like their arch nemesis, so if anything, she would be the sort of the out group enemy that would unify. They would them. unify, yeah. They would be like, even if the Kree have lied or the great, the, the supreme intelligence fucked everything up, it's like you just came in here and destroyed everything. Our son is dead. Like, what have you done? <laughs> and um, and then yeah. that's that's forgetting the fact that the Kree are an empire that's spacefaring. Like they go well beyond yeah, one like, planet. If, if I don't know why they don't just move just go somewhere else. Yeah. Just go to another planet. I know. I can understand why you would want to keep your home planet. How That's not what was said. That's not what. Yeah. Also, the, not the, at the cost of everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Like, there comes a point where like, in... I'm, you don't I'm trying perish. to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> why right. they didn't mine their core, <laughs> the core of it, their it's, planet. It's the idea <laughs> that like the state core. If, if you want to save the planet, that's one thing. But you could just like move everybody off the planet and then work on that problem. You know what I mean? It seems like they're staying. Like she says, oh, you know, Hull is out of time. And it's like, well, not really, right? I mean, you have a good time frame. If you just move everybody off the planet and then work on the problem, like there's no reason for everybody to stay there. You're a space-faring civilization. Yeah, they you could, can, like, move to safety. They could go to another planet, fill up some bottles of water, come over, pour them out on the floor, and keep doing that for a few <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll get it eventually. Well, I mean, you figure that if the Kree are capable... Here's the really the thing is if you're a spacefaring civilization capable of going to having an empire that spans a galaxy, you probably have readily available means of the mass extraction of resources anyway. You probably would. You probably already have a Dyson sphere. You probably already have the means to like extract um and, and terraform planets and stuff like that. So the idea that you would need to pursue like any new you know like that you would need one of these quantum bands to do it i don't know about that unless we we're supposed to, to assume it. that captain marvel actually wiped out the entire kree empire and left hala the, <laughs> as the last place but she well. but before she left she was like i'm gonna leave you guys alive but i'm taking your sun your water and your air <laughs> <laughs> i need it you don't deserve it <laughs> okay <laughs> and by the way um, you're the villains <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway God. bye um, anyway, something that Dar Ben mentions in the conversation is she's like, Hey, Skrulls, you can be part of the Kree Empire and we'll relocate you after, like, I strip the atmosphere of this planet. It's like, wait, <laughs> she just, she just, like, openly announces to this guy that she's gonna strip the atmosphere right then and there. Yeah, and she doesn't care if he gets off the planet, so why delay? Could have gone better. Well, well, so it gets really awkward because to clarify it later... When she eventually does this, the implication that the 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 uh, the scroll guy is like, "Man, you fucked everything up, Carol." It's like, dude, but she just announced to you that this is her plan. Yeah, she <laughs> you know what I mean? she was coming there to do that, and she was very explicit to the the scroll. But yet, he's angry at Carol. Mm -hmm. And none of the flight sense. is necessary. All she had to do is open the portal on a different era of the entire planet, and we'll just keep the same thing. <laughs> Well, you guys that's true. Getting yeah. a little thin these days. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know. Like maybe I need to I, exercise. It just feels like I, I, I will say though. Like if if in a peace meeting someone just announces, "I'm here to steal your air," you'd be like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like grew. I would steal the moon. <laughs> um. Okay. So that. Now, now I'm trying to think about how best to actually, because we're about to get to the, the first proper, like, action uh, set piece of the film, and I'm thinking real hard about how to explain this to everybody it's here wacky. in the audience. 
Well, it um, is meant to be wacky and fun, but uh, if you try and pay attention to who's getting switched when and where, man, it breaks down. It really, really, mess. really breaks down. Well, I sound like you had something there, meme. Oh, um, I, I think I might be skipping ahead. I just remember what happened after the big switching sequence and something oh, well, very, very yeah, ludicrous sorry. happens. Well, I'll save it. So to, to give everybody a sense of place, uh, uh, Kamala is uh, in her house and um, Monica's on the space elevator riding down and Carol is still in um, this, this ship above uh, Tarnax. And like she gets, she bumps into a Kree soldier and it's like, oh, the Annihilator, get her. And Carol lunges towards him and prepares to blast him, but then she gets switched with Kamala. So it means Kamala just felt like using her powers while she was standing around in her house at that exact moment. Yes. This is why I don't think that's the rule. Like, oh, it is. It, the rule, it, it is. It's explicitly it's the, rule. the movie. The rule. It is explicitly says it's the, the rule, rule, but it isn't yeah. really. Oh, but I'll it is. Wipe that from it's my memory. <laughs> it, it's it's explicitly said, and the sequence when they're tra traveling to uh, uh, Alanda, Aladna, the the planet, they the, um, the whole sequence of them testing yeah. was to demonstrate that you have to use the powers. So oh. we have to just accept that uh, Kamala was using her powers at home at the exact same time that this happened to kick this off. Um. Something that's worth bearing in mind as well, in terms of the switching and how it doesn't make sense, the film can't make up its mind on whether the switch, like, reorients the person to, like, mirror the pose of the person that they switched with. Um, there's a part when they're, they're in the, the montage where they're, like, practicing, where um, Carol and Monica are, like, standing facing each other, they're counting down, like, one, two, three to switch, and then Carol jumps up in the air at the last minute, and when they switch, uh, Carol's standing upright, just standing there, and Monica, like, falls down because she's in the air. So you have that, and then you have other instances where, like, it reorients the person to switch into the position. So, like, if you imagine that, I don't know, Carol's blasting with one hand up, then Monica would be switched into that position. But sometimes that doesn't happen, because in this case, Kamala's facing the opposite direction. She's, like, flying backwards. Um, and there's a lot of instances where they don't line up at all. So that's completely inconsistent as well. Just bear that in mind. As, Which like, would have been fun thing if they to took it seriously. Top. Like, we have to learn how these work, how the powers work, and things like that. And I'm facing this way, that they so do. you face that way. Well, that, that's the thing, Rax. They pretend that they do, but then there are many instances where it doesn't work that way. It's annoying. It's really, really, really annoying and confusing. And, and if you set up something like this, there should be, that, like, the payoff in the movie should be some kind of moment where it changes everything and you make the audience go, ah, that was clever. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, but, but like, no. That never happens. No, <laughs> that, that no point did I think clever it was clever. Is the problem. That never happens. Um, but but yeah. So now now Kamala's on the the ship, um, and then Goose just decides to eat a bunch of Kree soldiers, which obviously is shocking to Kamala. Yeah, Goose knows which ones are the bad ones, which ones are the good yes, ones, of course. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then a couple of Kree round the corner, uh, to attack Kamala. And then Goose, like, jumps onto her, and then she creates a shield, and then that teleports her back to her house. And then she switches with Monica, who then ends up on there. Which means that Monica, while riding down the space elevator, also just felt like using her powers for some reason. When there was nobody around and no enemies. You know Makes when sense. you have an itch that you just cannot scratch without going translucent? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we got to assume I guess. that she just felt like it. Um, bear in mind, the space elevator is a big cause of problems for a long time in this fight scene for people using their powers for no reason at all. Um, but in any case, Goose gets teleported uh, with Kamala because, like, uh, she was sitting on uh, on top of her. Uh, so I guess it group, yeah, it groups people, like it groups other living entities. It groups people who are like, contained within the, the span of somebody's abilities, I guess. Um, and then, uh, and then, like, it, it vomits up a bunch of Kree soldiers so that a fight can start happening in, uh, Kamala's house as well. And then, <laughs> keep a track of this, we, um, yeah, we see yeah. Carol is on, um, the space elevator with, uh, Fury, um, and, and it's at this point that she explains that she touched the, uh, she touched the jump point, and the goo that was emanating from it, and that that was when everything started going wrong, to which Fury rightly points out, why? Why would you do that? And she says, because it was glowing and mysterious. Is it? Do you think that this is a good enough reason to... Yes. 
Tut goo emanating from a jump point. <laughs> he doesn't. If you no, don't, doesn't. someone else will, and you can't let them be the first. Exactly. This film touched <laughs> my jump point without Women consent. like shiny things. That's the point. But I, someone, I mean, someone fingered my like, goo. As he points out, like. <laughs> No more touching shit, especially like glowing mysterious shit. And it's like, yeah, personally, I wouldn't touch it for all of those reasons. But, you know, good lampshade. Well, fun Captain time. Marvel, her, her, the lesson that she kind of should have learned after all this time is quit just like jumping into doing things. You did this with the Supreme Intelligence and it fucked up a planet and a star somehow. So whenever you see something, don't just like jump to... A, a problem. Think about it. Yeah, it's surprising how brash they've made her character when all of her life experience probably should have led her to being the opposite of that. Especially being she's one of the oldest mm -hmm. heroes in the MCU. Yeah, how old is she canonically? Like she's she's got to be. 60. She's an old lady. Yeah, she's like sixty years she old. She can't remember it though, so she would act like <laughs> a much younger person. She can't remember what was before. She can remember all of the years she spent well, yeah, as a she, galactic hero. You know. She had six years on uh, on Hollow thinking that she was like part of the Kree, and then you go from 1995 to 2023. So she, she's got like what 34 years of yeah. life as a fully grown adult exploring the galaxy. Yeah. She would be very mature well, and, even and if you started from there. She would have to have been matured a little faster than most even heroes too, because she's dealing with all kinds of civilizations and cultures and conflicts that she has to be the arbitrator of because she has the power to do so. We haven't explored any of that. Yep. So, because that would yeah. be interesting, Mola. We can't do that. This is this is phase five. Yo, sorry. Um, so uh... Well, this bit also does my most hated thing in a in a series, and it's happened loads of times in Disney films as well as other things recently, uh, where somebody points out how stupid their own plot is in the movie, and yeah, that's like supposed kidding. to be an excuse for how stupid it is. It's like no, <laughs> that's basically a fix. That's basically yeah. fix. That's fixing your plot. Oh. Oh, by the way, that's a cry for help out, from the writers. <laughs> as, uh, as has been pointed out in chat, I forgot this film was not set in 2023. Most of these films are set a few years ahead of where we are because Endgame yeah. was 2023, so it's probably more like 2026. So well, they did give the exact up. date at one point. What did they? What was it exactly? You they, remember? It was. They gave it before Secret Invasion. I can't remember, but I can try and look it up. Oh, okay. Um, I figure it's like 2026. Might be even 2027, actually. Um, oh, and, and yeah, like, B Carol kind of at this point starts to have an idea of, like, how it's working, uh, in terms of why they're switching, so she decides to light up her, like, fist to just make it glow, and she gets switched, uh, to Kamala's house, which, um, now, at first I was thinking, well, uh, like, if she, if that's the case, then, if she switched with Kamala, then... Kamala would be put onto the space elevator, but she can't be because we have like a clear point for when Kamala gets teleported there for the first time, which is like she gets teleported when she brings the uh, the Kree soldiers with her. So I guess we have to assume that Monica at this point would have been teleported back onto the space elevator. But like when she talks to Fury later on at the end of the fight, she's talking to him as if it's like her first time back as well. Yeah. And then I guess she would have also decided, despite being switched to fight bad guys, she decided it would be a good idea to, like, use her powers again to get teleported to some unknown place to potentially be fighting bad guys. So, do, do you see... Do you, are you seeing how it's, like, completely breaking down? Like, no, what do you mean? <sighs> no, the only right. thing they were focused on was, thing. what kind of funny things can we do in terms of a character goes to do a thing and then she switched to a different person? What, 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 well, yeah, what, what's what I'm hoping is that it flies by so fast that you don't think about the fact that, especially on the space elevator, there's no reason for anybody to be using their powers up until the part that's playing on the stream here, where uh, Kamala gets teleported there, and now, now there are bad guys, so now there's like a reason why you might be using the powers. But, but like, half of the switches because I tried to keep track of them, half of them occur before that happens, when, um, but despite that, characters keep getting switched in these ways. And um, um got a comment on yeah. tone too, right? Like, one of the initial fights is two space soldiers who look to be hitting to kill just a family who've got pillows. Yeah. An innocent family that's been caught up in all of this, but it's playing fun music, because this is a fun battle. And from what I remember in this, there isn't a single moment throughout the entire fight where a, ma a male hero on the good side hits Oxymoron any, of the, any <laughs> of the people and all of the villains, they never hit anyone and do any damage throughout the entire oh, movie. Well, uh, well, I think because uh, Fury shoots one of them, 
Uh, no, I think he missed this. No, he shoots oh, no, one at the end. Of the right at the, at the end, yeah, end. Point blank yeah. range when he's already defeated. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. after he shoots the window, though. So oh, are, are we talking? Is this oh, yeah. after, before or after he cowers in fear? Just question. Yeah, because he didn't oh, yeah. cower in fear. He would have accepted his. He just accepted his this death shit, at that moment, but was safe. This shit annoys me so much more than it probably should. But seeing him like this, it's like that's not <laughs> Nick Fury. He doesn't do that. He doesn't it, go, it was the oh, way that. Geez. It was the way the dad and the mum behave that got me. That that stuff is entirely... Like, the guy is just running away. But, but he might as well have been screaming and crying. And the the mother is... And pissing she's and throwing shitting. vases, she's well, covering well, him think, with a body, she beats the other guy. Um, <laughs> the part where the dad and the brother, like, start hitting him with a mop and a... Uh, and I think, like, a... I can't remember what the other thing is. So they, they, they yeah, get they a, they like cleaning blows. utensils. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. They got a few blows in Because it's funny. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is where okay so carol uh she 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 tries to blast one of the crew soldiers but swaps with kamala uh which again unless all three of them happen to be using their powers at the exact same moment carol should have been back on the space elevator but she's not because kamala ends up on the crew ship and then and then kamala gets switched onto the space elevator for the first time to bring the crew soldiers with her and then that enables them to have a fight where it makes more sense for all of the characters to switch. But like, up until this point, you just have to accept that there are multiple instances where a character just decides to use their powers when there are no enemies around and there's no reason to do it. Is yeah. everybody in agreement or right? No, there's, there's, just, there's just nothing to say uh, to that. It's just like, yeah, they, they like, didn't think it through much at all. <laughs> like, like, as, I was, as I was trying to figure this out, I was losing my mind. Like, I was really struggling to, like, make sense of this entire fight scene. Um, we appreciate like, it, your sacrifice. It, that's why this shouldn't have been a rule. I, I, I spent the entire movie thinking the rule was if I use my powers, I switch. They could have done that for the whole movie and easily, far more easily made it make sense. There, there was actually even a point when I was trying to figure out, like, what was going on, where, like, it, I, based on my... I was trying to, like, logically deduce where the characters were based on the information that had been presented, and there's one part where there was, like, an outright contradiction, where, like, I thought Monica was meant to be on the crew ship, except, like, Carol was there. Like, you see, it, 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 like, Carol was there, and it's just like, okay, all right, I, the, the point being, this fight scene is really bad, right? It, aside from <laughs> having like standard bad choreography, it just is like dysfunctional. It is fundamentally well, we, dysfunctional. We talk about some of the bad choreography. Um, yeah, not, sure, uh, go for it. Not including you all bet. of the like, just the, these inept soldiers being unable to kill this just family, like constantly missing. And um, well, the, the main thing I want to hit is just uh, try try and imagine your. You are who Nick Fury is, and I know, let's pretend we haven't seen Secret Invasion, so he's one of the greatest spies of all time, always ready to kill <laughs> shit. Remember the scene in Avengers 2012, because that movie's goated, especially at this point, where he gets his moment where they're all coming into the command center, and he gets to kill, like, three of them with moves that you could kind of buy an older but still very experienced soldier knows what he's doing sort of thing, because um, they've got, like, rifles, and he only has his pistol. And in this scene, he needs... Kamala to give him a pistol, which is already weird. It's like he doesn't have his own pistol. You'd think he'd have it all the time. Like this, you think he this... would, and he'd obviously pick it up as soon as he can from a dead soldier. But then, yeah. Um. And so then. she's passed it to him. The first thing he does is see the guy shoot and miss twice and hit the fucking windows of the space elevator with an alien gun. <laughs> oh, you boy, fucking, fucking moron! Thing that wasn't a Halo plasma pistol, or you'd be fucking dead. He's such a stupid fuck. He could have killed himself <laughs> and Kamala. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so when you, whenever anyone says that the continuity of Secret Invasion was ignored, no one <laughs> Nick Fury's a <laughs> Nick Fury's a doorknob. Like Don't a you worry, person. Nick is right here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! He just knew what Secret he... Invasion. He just knew what film he was in. Like, he was trying to get out. He was trying to get out. Can Samuel L. Jackson just stop accepting paychecks from <laughs> Disney, please? He paid a please? lot of money, though. Please. They'd probably pay him, like... Honestly, you know, like, if he was here right now, he'd be like, if you were nearing 80, would you? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He's sitting for most of this fight, to be fair. Yeah. yeah he's, fun, he's like Sylvester fun. Stallone in Exfornables. Exfornables. Exfordables. Another instance. Of, <laughs> another instance of uh, bad choreography is when Carol gets teleported back onto the Kree ship. She she's about to punch one of the Kree, and then she like stops herself going because at this point she has to realize, oh, using the powers is what makes me switch. 
So she stops herself and punches him, and then she's real happy about it. And then some Kree, like, round the corner, and then she blasts him and gets teleported again. It's like, what are you doing? Like, you I mean, just I figured guess it out. If it's, I guess, I guess if instinct? he has to use her powers or instinctive... Yeah, but she's invincible. Why would she? Just punch just, him. Oh, I I don't know. Um, no hit challenge. Oh, and, oh, and I guess know, like the Dark Souls, you know. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, fan. also again, worth mentioning if if think, think about Nintendo. like if Goose didn't eat the let you know let's say Goose <laughs> eats the two free because he hates them. Right? They're they're bad. They're, they're bad guys. So she, I think she actually Goose eats them. And then she gets teleported with Kamala, which is already all right. And then she vomits them up in the house and just stands there and lets them continue trying to kill this person that she just saved in her entire family. Yeah, you like, can't say that Goose has any al alignment at all. No, Goose is just there like for Goose. Cat. Yeah, well, is Goose yeah. But... As intelligent as a cat? Is it? I, I mean, know. more so because it like follows very specific like commands and objectives. That seems to. Well, yeah. he's aware Sometimes. of everything because so at one he's point an he, asshole. He, at one point he eats a chair to make somebody fall on the ground to avoid. Yes. I think that's yes. a coincidence. That's, that's very no, clever. The thing is, I think that's meant to be like, oh damn, Goose just felt like eating that chair and it saved Monica's <laughs> life. I don't. I think really? that was an accident. I think it was I thought an that accident. was to show the intelligence. Um, I understand. I understand why you felt that way. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> I thought it was that. I thought it just wanted to eat yeah. the chair. <laughs> I think. I think on a first viewing, I would have sided with Dispro on that one. But um, further inspection, Goose just does random bullshit. Um, yeah. Oh. Especially the cats yeah. toward the end. They just start eating tables, chairs, and pillows well, and stuff. And it's like, I, I, okay. It's, it's what people say in chat. Like, Goose is chaotic neutral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, like, then, because uh, we, we end the fight with uh, Monica is now in, um, is now in uh, the, the Kamala Khan's house. And she's fighting the Kree. And she beats him up, finishes him off. And then... Just as she's using the power, it switches so that uh, Kamala ends up back. Everybody ends up where they need to be at the end of the fight. Of course, they Kamala ends up back in her house. Monica ends up back on the space elevator, and uh, Carol ends up back on the on the ship. What are the odds of that? Very low, actually. But yeah, they're back where they need to be. That's the fight. It's over. It's it's awful. That fight is terrible. It, like. It makes yeah, it's no a typical sense Disney combat. It really, really stinks. Oh, dude, but it's worse than that because of the switching. The switching makes it even worse. Because if you just had, like, normal bad fights, like, and stupid decisions in combat, that's one thing. But, like, when you tie it in with the incredible luck of the switches lining up in ways that are only slightly inconvenient and never catastrophic, um, that the characters essentially end up exactly where they need to be. And when you bear in mind that there are several instances where the switches fundamentally should not have happened because a character had no reason to use their powers, it's completely fucked. It's just shit. It's terrible. Um, but unless anybody has anything else to add on that, no. we can move along. <laughs> um, All right. Captain Marvel right. fucking punches someone through the roof um, at one point. I, I I raised an eyebrow then. It was like, okay, one property damage, but two, like, you don't know there's not someone upstairs. You probably could have restrained them in another well, way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, but... Why isn't that guy dead? Well, I guess it's worth yeah. highlighting... Uh, I don't know what the power level of an individual Kree is, because if you remember, Whoa. she does fuck up Jude Law, and he's Kree, but he's yes. fine. And yes. then, yes, but they then... have regenerative abilities, because that's in S.H.I.E.L.D. Is okay. it? Okay. Yeah, but, but because like... they heal, um, what's his face, the, the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. in that series. They heal him by giving him Kree blood. Oh, you mean, you talking about Coulson? Is that how he got resurrected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I never right. even knew oh. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The more you know. Hmm. Um. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So now, now everything's been like reset, and um, we we uh, yeah, like we we're back with uh Kamala in her house, and then oh, Fury wait. and Mo people are saying yeah. that this is not canon. I actually meant to ask: Is that still canon or not? Agents of Shield. I don't know if it is because it's Marvel television, so I don't know if it is. I think it got booted out. Right? I mean, it fits in with the movies. I think it does, but at the same time, it was Marvel Television and not Marvel Studios, and um, hence the, the that it might not be canon. Well, I don't I'd even still, know if still... Marvel knows at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'd still say it's still confusing in terms of like what defeats a Kree. It's it's not exactly clear. 
that, yeah. but the idea that like a Kree soldier isn't even matched for Carol is an absurdity. Yeah, that doesn't um, make any sense. Yes. She's just a guy. Well, we, we saw, ultra um, mega guy. saw what she did to them on that moon place in the beginning. She wiped yeah. out like fucking 30 of them just like that. And it's like, oh, there you go. Um, Whereas, whereas, uh, this is, this is an important little factoid to remember because none of you watched Miss Marvel, but Moeller and I nope. did. Um, <laughs> something so that is explicitly established is that, uh, the bangle does not imbue Kamala with super strength. She is a normal, yeah. she's normal. It's, it's, it's like the constructs have mass and there's a part where she like creates, she, she, she grows like a big light fist and then it, like she drops it to the ground because it's so heavy. So she's not super strong. Um, but yet she is in many instances throughout the film in terms of the things that she does. Um, but she's not super strong. But I think we have to assume that Monica must be, you know, with especially with like the intangibility and the flying and everything. She's got to be really strong. My assumption is either she's really strong or that she can just tank any amounts of energy weapons forever like it'll never really do anything to her because she's like she's not even human she's like energy or something exactly. you know what i mean it's like hot sci-fi yeah. person who's made up of stuff <laughs> like okay this is this is why there's two trailers that give two different explanations of her abilities and when she says i can control magnetic fields it, it makes more sense because if she that can control sense. like the magnetic fields across atoms she could essentially repel anything no matter how heavy it was Something to add on to that, because we all laughed at I can see light, because that's hilarious. Everybody can. <laughs> um, well, except for, except for Matt. Uh, but um, the the I the hyper good faith is Matt she can be different. No, Matt Matt Murdoch. Why would you oh, get Matt Murdoch? You know, you know, I, I was just I was just yeah. I just clarifying for the audience. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. Um, but but the hyper good faith is she can see different wavelength. It's like she can change her viewing to infrared or like ultra. Uh, Violet and stuff. That's what she can do. She and that, can, like, and that plays into the story quite a few times, yeah. Yes, yeah, the electromagnetic um, spectrum, yeah, she can mm -hmm. see across yeah. that. Many um, moments where it's like, oh, it's good she made use of her powers to solve that problem sort of thing, yeah. So Monica, Monica and Fury here, which I guess means that the sword base uh, conveniently has its operations above New York, which seems... Abs so, again, I know it's science fiction, but there's a reason why NASA does all their stuff in Florida. There's a reason why... Uh, the so European how Space Agency does all lives. That stuff. And, um, th there's a reason why space stuff happens, uh, <laughs> near the equator. Uh, but, but whatever. It's, well, where, it's where, was, where was Fury at the end and the beginning of Secret Invasion when he got up and down the elevator? Where was that? Uh, he was in, like, some forest somewhere. Hmm. Maybe so they, maybe they left it nondescript on purpose. Yeah, maybe they dropped him into mm. a forest and then they, they drove over to, uh, to New Jersey to, they did it in record time as well. They did it. Basically, what you have to accept is that in the time... I'm just jumping ahead here. In the time that it takes for Monica and Fury to get down to Earth, to get over to New Jersey, to get to Kamala's house, to um, to then have all of their conversation, and then another switch happens in the house, Carol's just kind of, like, Hang exploring out. the ship, you know? Basically. Well, yeah, she could have wiped out all of Darth Ben's people by then. But she just doesn't. Yeah. She's on pause, because you know, she's not on screen. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, in any case, their conversation <laughs> is basically, they're just talking about what happened. Um, Monica just casually discloses ca uh, classified information to Kamala. Yep. Uh, and Fury's like, oh, that's classified. She's like, sorry. And it's like, dude, you're like a captain. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, dude, it, 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 Again, how you write characters, okay? So she, when, when we first see uh, Captain Marvel refer to her as um, uh, Captain, Lieutenant Trouble, I think it is, right? That's the nickname. She corrects her and says it's Captain Rambo or whatever the fuck. And, and I'm just sitting there like, you'll go official when it's about your rank and, like, respect to be given to you. But when it's about, like, protecting actual information that matters to the security of the fucking country, you just blurt it out. It's like, you care a lot more about yourself <laughs> than you do about, you know, what's right for the world has. Interesting. But I'm sure that was unintentional um, entirely. It was classified. Why is it on a transparent screen? And that line just came Well, out. yeah, hmm. that's about... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Fury and Monica have a, uh, they have a file on, uh, Kamala, which contains a pretty detailed breakdown of her abilities, mainly the, the light-based powers creating the light constructs. I don't know if they know about the Noor dimension, or the fact that she creates stuff with Noor, or that she's, uh, an, a, a mutant as well, because that's something that they established in Miss Marvel or T. Well, she's a related to a family of jinn. Uh, yeah, related <laughs> to a family of jinn who came from a different dimension and wanted to... <laughs> 
I wanted they, to. They were drinking the family. They wanted, yeah. they wanted they to, right. and they wanted to break down the veil of the Nor to bleed over the Nor dimension into Earth and destroy it. I love how it's all. You're, yeah. you're pointing out, like, I bet they didn't remember this. They remember this. There's people in this call right now. Are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> What's right, yeah, not not it? No, not the no dimension. The nor dimension. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, the nor the, dimension. Yeah. But I, yeah, n none of that. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, they they just don't know any of this. Um, and uh, but something that I find interesting is that they kind of they kind of just like accept. It's like, yeah, Kamala's powers are similar to mine. It's like, but they're not though. They got activated by a, 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 a quantum bangle. Um, they allow her to manifest quantum like energy, energy from a different universe. Like light based is a very broad term. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're <laughs> really not the same at all. Um, and then of course the fact that uh, that, that uh, Monica got hers from magic. She got hers from plain old magic. But you know. <laughs> In any case, I feel like they'd have a lot of questions that they should be asking Kamala now that they have her here, but they don't really. They don't really have any questions for her at all. Like, I feel like this is an opportunity to get first-hand information on everything to do with her abilities, but nope. And no if need. I'm right, if I'm remembering the series right, Wanda didn't even know how Monica got her powers, right? No. She was surprised. That was a surprise. Yeah. I, she's right. so lucky she didn't die. Like, that's what they thought was going to happen, was that she well, would she, die. Well, she got positively affirmed as she was doing it. That's probably where the power came from. Was Were those voices mm -hmm. here or the other people in the... In the when she I assume them? they were coming from the magic. Like, they were, like, memories. The magic was telling magic her how awesome was she is. Giving her the power. <laughs> yeah. The power of personal um, confidence. Self-esteem. Self-esteem's magic. Um, now, now we're going to get a little bit more character, like, actual trying to develop the, the main character arcs for the first time in a little while. Where uh, Monica it. refers to Carol as Aunt Carol, um, which Kamala notices, but they, they move past it and that's it. So it's like, yep, that's all you're going to get. Five seconds. Uh, moving on. we got plot to do. Um, and, and Fury basically believes it's not a coincidence that um, their light-based powers are the reason why they're like it switching places. Um, and then, yeah, we, we get like, the, the breakdown, which I guess is worth you know clarifying again. Carol absorbs light, which is like again. I feel like that's um, I feel like that's putting it lightly, you know. It's ah. like she absorbs light, yes, <laughs> uh, but she could also fly and she, oh, 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 I didn't. Even she describes it. it as control, uh, as see it and control it. Yes, that's Monica. She can see it and control it, oh. which is funny. That seems to be she has the same power. She absorbs light at the end of the movie, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's important that we try to actually pretend that there are. They're pretend they're different, like, different yeah. That's <laughs> Meanwhile, obviously, Kamala's is very different. And then, yeah, she mentions, like, oh, you know, you could turn light into physical matter. I've never seen that before. And then Kamala just says, oh, I can show you. Um, which, I don't know. I know, like, like you know, like, have, have you not kind of started thinking that maybe the reason why you're switching places is because you're using your powers, like, are you maybe noticing that, like, the only times it's happened is when you've used your powers and for the last however many hours it's I taken am... for, uh... No. You know what I'm, I mean? I, I am willing to accept that maybe the characters didn't realize it was when they used it at the same time. What I'm not willing to accept is any of them using their powers from now on. I'd be like, yeah. no yeah. way I'm risking teleporting in some place that I don't understand or know. Like, never happening again. And yet none of yeah. them have this thought. But, yeah, and so she uses and her it's power... Worth... Oh, sorry. It's worse. It's worse for some than others because, like, you, you can understand Captain Marvel just being cocky and being like, "Well, I can survive anything," but she puts people into her place when she's in a dangerous position. So the whole flying up in the air is horrific uh, because well, she knows that someone will go into the air, and she doesn't know who. Well, uh, we'll get to that one because that's not very far from here. Um, because Kamala uses yeah. power and switches with uh, Carol, who is mid-flight. Um, so that's really unfortunate because presumably she hasn't used her powers for the last hour. But when she decides to, damn man, Carol's flying to where? I have no idea. I don't know where she. I don't know. I I I actually don't know where she was flying. Do any of you have any ideas of where yeah, she was she's flying? Yeah, she's flying. When she got the, the family have just told her where. No, she knew where she was, and the the family told her that they'd switched. So I thought she was going back to where she was originally on that ship. Which I guess save she them. was just. I guess she was like flying in the ship to somewhere and then teleport. You know what I mean? This is before she flies up into the sky and then they, they, they do that, that sequence. Oh, like Carol's just flying around in the ship, I guess. 
Well, um, fighting in the ship wouldn't be unreasonable. I, I guess, but she's flying. Like the the tele it teleports to her like flying and then hitting the table. She's not like standing there or blood. She's flying. I don't yeah. understand why she'd be flying in the ship. I can only imagine her flying outside of the ship, but maybe she was. Um, but this is a stupid. Really this goes back timing. to what you said before. When you teleport, you're supposed to take on their. Like you're supposed to be them. Yeah. So yeah, her you meant flying like through that doesn't even make any sense in itself. She should be sitting down. Yeah, because they are very inconsistent mm -hmm. on that. But basically, what I, what I want you to bear in mind is that for the next, like, two minutes, Kamala is just unaccounted for, and the conversation is pretty slow in terms of its pace, you know? Nobody's in much of a rush to get to, like, wait, where is Kamala? You were flying. Where is she? Is she, like, plummeting to her death right now? There's just no... There's no, there's no hurry. There's no concern. Um, the only thing that you get is that the family occasionally interjects pretty calmly, like, oh, where is she? You know, where, where is, uh, where's yeah. Kamala? But meanwhile, she's totally unaccounted for and potentially being killed. Um, <laughs> and Monica knows better. Carol really ought to know better, because she'd already basically figured it out. It is funny, too, you say, like, potentially being killed. It's like, she has the bangle, too. Like, that's, like, the whole villain's... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just so Which that, stupid. Now, to be fair, they don't know that yet. But I mean, of course, like eventually we're gonna. We're it's just gonna crazy to think out. about that she could have been yeah. facing off against Darth Ben, saying, you know, like I'm gonna get you, and she's like, no, I'm gonna get you, and then Kamala Khan ports in. She's yeah. like, oh, this, in with the bangle. this entire scene sort of reminded me of the first Avengers when Tony's like flying up the atmosphere, and how seriously the movie takes that. Right? Oh, we're not there and yet. No we're not. We're not up to that part. <laughs> we we yeah, we've still got the conversation between then and now. Well, wait. Oh right, okay, okay. We haven't we haven't covered the conversation that Carol and uh, Monica have with each other, and then Carol flies off. Just to be clear, does everybody know where we're at? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um so uh like they basically it's it's like a really awkward like reunion that they have with each other. Um Carol calls Monica Lieutenant Trouble, which for those of you who actually remember what happened to Captain Marvel, that was her. I know nickname. it's a struggle. <laughs> um, and then Monica pretty coldly rebuffs this, uh, and then, and then it's kind of awkward, and then they just move on to the plot. That's it for character. <laughs> Fuck, no. That's it for character, uh, for that, for, like, developing those two. We're back to plot now, which, um, I find hilarious, because this keeps happening, where you get character for, like, 15, 20 seconds, and then, and then it's just like, alright, back to plot, we don't have time for this, let's get, let's get back to talking about, like, the well, power that's right, though, because the plot's so good, so I can see why they really <laughs> want to, you know, yeah, spend riveting. all that time and effort, yeah. They don't even need to build characters, the plot is so riveting. That's true, um, the plot carries the film, that's how strong they are. Yeah. The plot uh, is and character. So, this is basically the part where, th so, this is what, this is what Monica says, she says, But well, wait, our joint right yeah. before that, um, on the Lieutenant Trouble thing, is that not incredibly inappropriate? You I have mean, um, yeah. a nickname for a girl, but she hasn't even heard you call her since she was a very young child, and you know and she knows that you haven't contacted her and her mother died, and she was supposed to, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, hey, and then, like, like Billy is like, fuck you. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> hell? So I, I yeah, guess she was pretty calm, all things considered. It's you know, just, it's just rude to be like, oh, yeah, and then uses the... Yeah, but the maybe that's... But that's the point, Mauler. You know, Carol, she's a little bit aloof. She's a little bit socially awkward. Well, I saw someone say she might be autistic, and I was like, maybe. Maybe at this point I could explain it. Do you think it. that's oh, the she, angle? She might actually be, yeah. That maybe. Would, that, would, mm. that would fix uh, the plot a little. Hey, so, don't you touch her to us. We don't claim her. Well, so, uh, this is what Monica says in terms of explaining the power. So this is, like, the clearest explanation we get. Our joint exposure to these unsteady jump points and our susceptibility to electromagnetic energy has temporarily entangled our world lines. Our yeah. white powers are entangled, so we switch places whenever we use them at the same time. That's the Man, this movie plain makes statement. Me wish I had joint exposure. What, so that you could what? get switched somewhere else so you don't have to, what, talk about the movie? No. Did I do a bunch of, so what's the joke then? I don't, what do you mean? Joint exposure. A joint. Drugs, right. narcotics. I, I think I think I, I, I feel like <laughs> I, I feel like joints. most of us didn't get Wait, that one. Yeah. So you're literal drugs. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, I, I was, oh, no. I was thinking an elbow or something. What are you madness. doing, Rags? The only everybody else here is confused. Okay, this is madness. But uh, it, it just went over my head. It's fine. 
Um, so th- then, then it was I mentioned, so high. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, oh. 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 Hee hee. Carry on with um, your quantum embanglement. I think it's because our brains are shutting down with this movie. It's <laughs> it might like, actually that was, that was be far a too def- yeah, it's a defense uh, mechanism. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I'm thinking about food, so maybe I am high. Unfortunately, we're not a third of the way through yet. We're nearly <laughs> there, but we're not even a third of the way. But uh, no, it's not bad. That's not bad. So uh, they mention Kamala, and then Carol's like, she she starts immediately trying to activate her powers. Uh, and then she walks outside as everybody follows her, and then she flies up into the air, into the like going up into space, and then they switch, and now Kabbalah's plummeting to her death. Who could have seen this you, happen? How about who? How, know, how could anyone have predicted this? And nothing you know, it, throughout this entire scene makes any sense from what anyone. What was she know. thinking? What was she thinking? Like this is. I know we probably we say this a lot, but this is catastrophic for her character. <laughs> it is in, in, like Captain Marvel. What a what a horrific, terrible idiot. Yeah, you're, mm-hmm. and I think you guys are being more generous than I was being in the theater because uh, I was thinking like, oh, she can't. She's struggling to activate it by just doing her fist. Oh, what if I fly into the air and do all the glows? That will get her back. That was my interpretation. <laughs> While I'm in the air. Yeah. You, you have, she's got you a know, special you know, brain. A teenager can't fly. <laughs> That's a special brain. There's one thought in there that I think that was valid that she had, which is if I spam activate my power, then whenever... <laughs> Miss Marvel does it, we'll switch. Cool. I'm like, even sitting down, just going boom, 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 boom. It's like, I'll get it eventually. It's going to happen. I'll be like, okay, yeah, that's kind of fair. <laughs> but then she's like, I'm going to go fly into space. He's like, okay, there's a problem there. There's just a little snag in your plan. Because you just established that you believe that she's going to switch with you at any point of you using your power, yeah? He's like, yeah. <laughs> you trying to kill her? Like, whoa. <laughs> and then that's she successfully plan, switches and doesn't care. That uh, Miss Marvel is now dying. Mm-hmm. This movie so well, Ma- far has been Monica and like Nick Fury and everybody else just trying to figure out what's going on, and Captain Marvel just doing stupid shit all the time or just Captain yeah, she's, off, she's, she's, or she's walking really around, a lot of this, disappearing. This, a lot of the movie relies on when we don't see the character, we don't have to acknowledge what they're going through or thinking. But when she flies up. And then switches, and we we focus on Miss Marvel going, oh god, I'm gonna die, or we gotta save it. But if we followed Captain Marvel, we'd be back on that uh, enemy ship, and she'd be like, huh, well, there we go, I'm gonna start fighting again. And it's like, (laughs) but you know that you were, like, exiting the atmosphere, and you just switched with a little girl. And 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 remember... She does not know that Monica can fly. She definitely doesn't know that. She's going to splat. Um, That's the only thing that she should expect, but she doesn't care. And she never... If she, at least when she came back and slammed the floor and said, is Kamala okay? You know, something like that. It would have been like, oh, that's that's something. But no, no acknowledgement of it at all. It's absolutely no... We just need it to... Essentially, this is a vehicle to get all of the characters together when it's kind of impossible given the distances apart they are. Um, and also, I guess, to have, like, another tense action scene. Because, yeah, now now Kamala's plummeting to her death. Um, and like... and uh, I, I just realized something. So both um, Monica and um, Kamala are using their powers up in the air. But no switching is happening, which means, is Carol yeah. just not trying to switch back at this uh, point? Well, well, so it's, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a problem on multiple fronts. It means, yes, Carol is not using her powers. So she's not in the middle of fighting anybody. And she doesn't care, but at the same time, Carol, uh, Kamala, and uh, Monica should be switching. Like when Monica is flying down, and then Kamala creates constructs to try and soften her fall, they should be switching. Uh, but they don't yes, hurt. true. And um, yes. let's, hurt. N- don't forget as well that um, Captain Marvel does eventually switch at the end of this, meaning that yes. she's not like someone might try and defend it and say she's not using any more powers because she doesn't want to cause a switch. And it's like, well, that's not true because she does. No. Well, yeah, and and, if, and and it's as has been pointed out, we have to accept that at no point while Monica was flying up, which took a little while, at no point did Carol use her abilities. Uh, okay, so she just wants to kill Kamala then. Yeah, and Kamala's see, not this, really doing. There's kind of a clever way to do it. Like a lot of people missed that she was trying to kill Kamala. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kamala's not really uh... doing anything to save her life either. Like the what you, the first thing you'd be like, okay, I'm going to try and make wings. 
I'm going to try and glide out of this. There'll be something that slows you down. You're trying to increase air that. resistance. Like, like some, like a big flat something, or I'd even try like, fuck it, something parachute shaped. Who knows what'll happen. Yeah, but she, the problem is she's like lame Green Lantern. She's, she's got like the Green Lantern abilities, but not with the ability lantern. to create actual like objects that are useful. I'm willing to it's be a little more critical. Form. I think that they realized that she could get herself out of it and they were like, fuck, that kind of ruins it. Um, Cause if she made a big <laughs> flat, uh, construct, it would slow her down. And it would flip, and then she'd have to make another one, and then another one, and then another one, and no, it would... she could attach them to her and stuff. It would dampen like, the yeah, fall yeah. completely. Well, eventually you could make, like, a, um... You could, I'm trying to picture this. It's it would be like um like a like an upside-down hill, like a cup, but it also comes around on the sides, so that she could safely be inside oh, it while it slows down because of uh, air resistance. And that like, would be a kind of yeah, cool scene. Yeah. She's constructing all these different things on the fly yeah. to try and slow herself down and keep herself safe. And do you remember? Do uh, you remember in Doctor Strange when in in the first Doctor Strange when they were in the mirror yeah. dimension and 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 Mordo would uh, he like created platforms to slow us fall because yeah. Doctor Strange obviously has the the cape and he would create platforms and it's like we, you see it in Miss Marvel like she she's pretty she knows how to use her like powers she she's she's adept yeah. she's uh, fairly capable so she should be able to get herself out of this that's true. But she can't. I and guess the solution, she's panicking, that's the best you have to accept. The solution they come up with yeah. is fucking retarded. Oh, well, it doesn't help at all. No, it, yeah. it wouldn't have done shit. Well, um, so, no. wait, the solution would be... So, she, like, creates a... A ball. Like, like yeah, well, like, maybe a ball yeah, or a like, sphere or, like, platforms. Or maybe when she gets near the bottom, she creates a really steep ramp. That she can sort of slide down on. There are like, several uh, things she could have tried that are way better than what she tries. Well, well yeah, just yes. what, what did what was the solution? What did what did Kamala oh, do that, to save herself? Because I don't yeah, see what so else could have been done. They are oh. uh, eventually because yeah, basically Monica learns how to fly, and she's a little <laughs> bit you know yeah, she she just learns how to fly. Are we skipping and, yeah, over the makes, legendary dialogue? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, yeah, because uh, as as Kamala's falling down, yeah, Fury's like, oh, you gotta go up and save her black girl magic, and then she does fly <laughs> up there. That's no explanation. I, I have Jay no Long's idea. Zone. I don't know. How often do you fly? <laughs> oh, all the time. Uh, I always have, like, my uncles yell black girl magic at me at, at random so I can... Heroes. Fly. That's what the, the can Michael teach Jackson's me? abusive father did. He just kept yelling black girl magic at Jackson 5 <laughs> until they became famous singers and dancers. I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, no, with a lot of things that they did in this movie. I guess they, they really thought... Because that one think. was trailer worthy. That was a trailer worthy line. I guess they thought it would be that fucking hilarious. So funny, guys. Yeah. They thought it was like a drum moment. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, he flies up, grabs her, and then uh, Kamala's plan is she's gonna create like a, a sphere that they're gonna be in, and that'll like soften the fall. But I don't think it will. I think they'll just crash yeah. into it and break their necks. I think that makes makes um, it even more dangerous. Yeah, if anything, because like uh, the yeah, ground I just is so softer than the. <laughs> I mean, as odd the, as it is, the ground yeah. is actually well, softer than her reference, her magic she... crystals. She called them hard light. That's what she calls them. Oh, they are, I'll take they softer are over hard light any day. And Soft so, concrete yeah, but, wins. But, but they are uh, they they created and they're about to crash. But then Carol, uh, she uses her power, so she switches and just hits the ground. It is so close. It's like a split second before they hit the ground. Carol hits the ground. So both of them could have died right then and there. But fortunately, I mean, they Carol yeah. used her powers at that. It, well, they should have if they maintained momentum. the momentum. Well, if yeah. they maintain yeah. the momentum when they switch, then they're definitely dead. Uh oh, yeah, they're dead. Which they do because when uh, at the beginning the first swap is, mm -hmm. you know, she goes well, flying forward. That's right. They do maintain that because yeah, they maintain the momentum. Think, so actually, th the movie <laughs> ends right there and there. I mean, Carol, the, <laughs> Monica the, um, dude, the, the what's the picture... whole gimmick of the film? It doesn't follow consistently. It doesn't follow its own thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, imagine but being. What if they landed in a Cree pillow fort? Uh -huh. Well, that's just the thing. They didn't. Darth Ben would be staring down Captain Marvel, actually, this time. They're exchanging yes. this, that, and the other with each other. And then, Captain Marvel disappears, and what does appear is so quick, it's just a slap of flesh and blood into the floor. <laughs> she, she, Darth Ben would be like, what the fuck? And all the other men would be like, oh, 
Uh, they're like, what is it? What is that? What have they done? Are they? Is this like the thing? Are they gonna turn it? What's what's happening? What does it do? And it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. They'll just panic and yeah, run away. You, you gotta understand where where our Monica and Kamala end up on the ship, surrounded by Kree soldiers, and then Darth Ben shows up like ten seconds later. So I guess Carol was about to confront all of them, but then switched because she was using her powers? Yeah, she went to laser one of them, I guess, because she'd completely forgotten about the other people, yeah. about the whole situation. Evident. She had obviously and evidently completely forgotten about them, but whatever, they're here now. And then they get to meet uh, Darth Ben. <laughs> bum, bum, <I'm> bum. Right. <laughs> Wearing got... those cheap uh, area rugs from Walmart. Uh, <laughs> I cannot get over this fucking, these shoulder pads are so embarrassing. That's not bad. What were they thinking? They look so awful. On screen. Come on, Sean. Look. What do you mean? I already have. <laughs> oh, that, uh, yeah. But that's a delay, right? She looks like a Roblox character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do look like Roblox shoulders. Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> it was Minecraft before you could make your slim arms. Yeah, uh, it's um, it kind of it's like a you just carved out a slab of, of rock and then you attached human arms and head to it. Well, and, the, uh, you are currently sculpting, and you haven't done that part yet. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darth Ben might be one of the cringiest villains, um, in one of these movies. Yeah, she, like She's emanate her cringe. eyes out while she has these really ugly contact lenses, so she just looks yes the whole time. <laughs> The contacts do look like, weird. They look strange. My personal pet peeve is those like contact lenses. That's all pet peeves. Lenses in the movies, like why do they keep using them? Make them look more they alien. They CGI it in if you need it. I just I hate it. Are we are we are we saying that they should have used CGI for the eyes there? <laughs> that would have. <laughs> they would have turned into cubes if they did like CGI. They're like googly effect. pupils that move around. <laughs> that would be funny if you had a villain that was like remember that, that the entire movie. Yeah, that'd be funny, actually. That uh, that'd be funnier instead of cringe. Her eyes she just clearly it's... could go. In All three of them were like, like looking look at me. <laughs> they should have CGI'd out her mouth. Give her the old Rango eyes. Um. So something that we see on the ship is that the uh the other quantum band is just sort of sitting in this like instrument. Um. None of the instruments here, I guess, can like detect that the other quantum band is right there on Kamala's wrist. Like, there's no way that they can tell. She, well, she hit it. Because, she, um, she put a little, what, little shit sleeve? over that, it, so yeah, there you she go. Pulled, she pulls a sleeve over it, which means that they would have probably been able to see it for a while. And which it means looks if very someone similar. has the power of detecting light, they don't Ooh. keep it hidden from them. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we just have to, because of course, we don't get any explanation for how they found the first one, but I got to imagine it's because they were able to, like, trace it in some way. But I guess... They can't tell that this one's right here. Despite the fact that there are instances later in the film, not just when the quantum bands are actually used, but just because they're in close proximity to one another, they begin to glow. Kind of like how, you know how like your Bluetooth headphones like can like detect each other? Well, it's just, yes. I find it funny, you know, like Bluetooth headphones can detect each other, but the quantum bands like don't really. <laughs> They just kind of yeah, exist you'd think that they'd like try to like if you took it off and put it on a table, it would maybe orient to it or it would glow when it's closer. Yeah, you're right. I, maybe that would be yeah. that would be mildly interesting. Like they want to be joined. They have this almost mm -hmm. semi sentient nature. They want to join together and kill. Well, that's them actually in suggested. The like uh, Miss Marvel actually yeah. suggests that that they're looking for me. Oh, well, well, uh, well, she says, like, I, I found it for a reason or something. She says or that, well, she believes okay, it's okay, yeah. Case, right? Well, so we I don't are know if it's true. That's just something that she says, like, I was meant to. We're jumping it. ahead and back a little bit, but, um, in the show Miss Marvel, there's an episode where, uh, Kamala gets teleported back in time to, like, the 1940s during the partition, uh, like, the partitioning of India. And, um, mm -hmm. the reason why that happened is because her great grandmother, who was from a different dimension, um, mm -hmm. After she got stabbed by India, one of the leaders, India is not of... a different dimension, Fringy. <laughs> no, yes, she is. came from a different dimension over to Earth, and she was hanging out there, and she started a family. But she was part of Clandestine, a group of uh, the the Jin from the Nord the dimension. Clan, Clandestine. Yeah. Yes, so I came... I see what you did there. Oh, I see what, what you did I... there. <laughs> all right. She came from planet India. Out, Fringy. It is called Clan. Destine. That is their name. That is the name of the the, the group. Um, but they're, but they're from that different dimension. They want they want to get the bangle so that they can go back to their own dimension. And she gets stabbed. 
Uh, and so while they're they're trying to get on the train, like Kamala's grandmother, they're trying to get on the train uh, to go to Pakistan. And um, Aisha, the grand, the great grandmother, says, "What you seek is seeking you," which then is magically inscribed on the bangle, and that's what teleports Kamala back in time, so that she can create a closed loop to save her grandmother from being like stranded, uh, so that she can lead her back to her uh, father, so that they can get on the train. So that's that's so she says that in this movie later on as like sort of oh you know what you seek is seeking you maybe that sort of explains how all of these fucking coincidences are happening. Um, yeah, I makes guess. sense. Yeah. So my so, yeah. brain is dribbling out my ears. I'm sorry. I'm not. Gonna we're not. Dude, we're what not part even... of this isn't easy to understand? This we're not. We're not, a, we're not even a third of the way through the movie. All right, you gotta. You gotta. Uh... <laughs> You gotta, you gotta get Just some of that. Just thank the fucking gods. And it's get it a, back in your ear. Thank the gods. Oh, it's a one yeah, and a half no. hour movie and not a two and a half hour movie. Oh, I thought oh, yeah. this was gonna be a short stream. I was wrong. I was so no, no wrong. way, no way, no way. That's, yeah, <laughs> no, it's never gonna happen. Um, but yeah, we basically have to accept that none of them notice that she has the bangle. They have no means of detecting that she has it. Um, you know. It's just, yeah, I, I, and 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 like, imagine if they did. Like, imagine if what happened is one of them saw that Kamala had the bangle, and then they're like, "Hey, get her!" And then Kamala just out of like instinct uses her powers and gets swapped with Captain Marvel, who is presently flying over through the vacuum of space. Dead. Could you imagine if it played out that way? Dead. And yeah. de definitely dead because she's probably not going to use her powers at that point to get. But you know, like, there's no potential of switching. Kamala would just immediately be like, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, and just, that's it. So it's very lucky that nobody noticed, really. It really is. It's tremendously lucky. Um, so we got a bit of exposition. There's the Cree scientist that was mentioned earlier, who's like, I need more time, you know, with the quantum band to make sure it's safe to use. But uh, Darth <laughs> Ben's like, oh, I don't I don't care. I'm too Chad. I'm too Sigma. For, uh, I don't understand for, how she put it on straight away, but now she wants the scientist to clear it. What? Yeah, because she put it on and used it to create the unstable yeah. jump point over that barren planet. I guess she figured it was safe enough to just give it a shot. I okay guess. there yeah. you go i guess um, yeah but you know whatever uh but then uh because they mentioned that uh you know kamala and monica they're like with captain marvel and she says all right shit we gotta use it now then we gotta we gotta get this air all right we gotta we gotta suck it into a little portal back to Hala. um and yeah she Just puts on the quantum the band and there is no like it doesn't alert her to the existence because i think this is when Kamala hides it. So a, a decent amount of conversation happens between them now. And like, yeah, she puts it on and it just can't, it doesn't detect that the other one's right nearby. You, it Surely it would, right? What's that based on rule-wise? I, I don't even know anymore. I, the, fact head that, the fact that my, the my Bluetooth headphones recognize each other when they're within range and don't when they're not Makes me think that the well, massive quantum those were designed by humans, created. and this is a Marvel movie. Yeah, what if someone just yeah, said they don't do that, Frank? That's, that's it. They don't. They're like, like two I'm swords not... that were made at the same time. They don't detect you each other. You know what? That's that's fair. Maybe that's not a feature. I'm just surprised it's not. But that's okay. I'm kind of surprised too. You think that would be a fun mechanic that they could use? It would be like, oh, she's close or you know, something like that. Well, it's just later on in the film when uh, Kamala gets teleported uh, face to face with uh, Darth Ben. They just begin to glow together just because they're next to each other. But in the instance on Tarnax, it only glows when she uses it. So, nice and inconsistent. Um, but, you know, whatever. Well, I, I <laughs> whatever. think it is going for that whole, they want to be together, the bracelets want to be together, and on Kamala, and so... Yeah, she's the chosen one. They're influencing it in some way to get that event to happen. <laughs> uh... Maybe they are, but then why would they? Why would they glow to alert Darth Ben uh, on Aladna that uh, Kamala has one? That just makes it easier for her to potentially well, get him. The, you could argue if they were that powerful, then it's like we know if we set up this uh, instance <laughs> uh, of events, it'll result in the best result, which is yes, booting okay. Monica out of the universe. That's what I'd say if I was a really bad director <laughs> that desperately needed to fill in a plot hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe who knows? Who knows? Who actually knows? Maybe the writer doesn't even know. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway. Nobody knows. Nobody um, knows anymore. So, so they they're like, "What are we gonna do with these two? And then Darben is about to blast them with her hammer, and then uh, Carol shows up just in the nick of time and blocks it. Yeah, man. If she'd arrived a few seconds later, Monica and Kamala would be dead. Well, probably Kamala. Monica would be fine because she can just she go... just energies. You know, she just goes. Yeah, she, I'm fine now. Be impervious. But goddamn, so lucky. A few seconds later, and it would be game over. Um, and then they, they have a little fight, and Carol shoots a photon blast at Darth Ben, 
and she like absorbs it. Um, <gasps> and then she, yeah, oh my god. And then she jumps out of the ship. She jumps out. Because she, she knows can... that she can survive that, obviously. My best guess is that she uses the laser in the hammer, kind of like a rocket jump, or like, I guess if you could use the Spartan laser to slow your fall, she like uses that laser in the, the hammer to slow down as she uh, approaches the surface. Uh -huh. That's oh, all I got. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I just remembered the thing I was going to say, but I jumped the gun, so now i got to say it now. Uh, how the fuck did Carol get here? Uh, she flew. flew through interstellar space, and she can travel. She can, that space, that's the so. fastest that traveling boss? entity in yeah. this universe. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. did you see the end of Captain Marvel? I guess maybe she, she uh, that, yeah, No, Rags, that was slow. Through, that was oh, slow, okay. yeah. Maybe she light sped through the jump points to get there. Because, like, speed of light is still finite, it would it just... Uh, be, speed of it light would is take slow still... in space. Yeah, well, I was about to say, Fringy, <laughs> the time it would take to get to a, a jump point, even with light speed, right? Like well... The, you got the jump point over Earth, which she could get to pretty quickly, but the thing is, is that the number of jump points varies depending on where you're going. It's not like you just go through one and you're good. She might have to go through many. Um, Did she arrive at um, Tarnax or whatever via jump points? I That's the only explanation that can work. Otherwise, it would have been impossible for her to make it in time. Because it would have taken her, like, several hours to get out of the, the, the uh, like, past the Oort Cloud. That would have taken her, like, a while, let alone yeah. traveling between stars. Same and problem as the first movie. if Tarnax was coincidentally very nearby, which, why would it be? What I want to know is how does she navigate? It's like, <laughs> how does she... Um, she, she... She looks at the magic. stars. She's like a sailor. She looks at the stars. Yeah, she's familiar. And, she knows. And even when she's in on the a different planet and all of the stars are in different places, she knows. She knows how to use in them the to guide. the entire universe, she's, like, searching for a ship. Ah, yeah, well, ah, yeah, well, Avengers Endgame is a great movie, though. You know, that's a great movie. <laughs> we don't need to, we don't need to reopen up that conversation. We still, we're not rooms. even a third of the way through yet. Bum, 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 um, bum. Oh, yeah, and then this is pretty funny. So, Carol and Monica just jump out of the ship and fly after Darth Ben, Darth Ben, sorry, and just leave Kamala there on the ship. With enemies. Yeah. Now, here's the Possible. thing. Carol doesn't know what her abilities are. Maybe she thinks she can fly, but Monica knows. Monica absolutely knows she can't fly. It's bad enough she when you don't know. There. It's like you got to confirm. Yeah. Just double check. I mean, she, like. And then of course yeah, they, uh, they both use their powers at the same time, and nothing happens. And they don't switch. Yeah. yeah. So, so a little question about Kamala's powers, because obviously the, the, these these rules are exclusive to the MCU, so I have no reference. Um, so she can create those platforms, right? So can she control them going up and down? And if so, could she not just fly by stepping on a platform she creates and then controlling the platform as it moves? Or is I that just not a thing? I think she can control them somewhat. Oh, okay. I so, don't know well, if we've uh, ever seen her move the plat. She's thrown yeah, things at, at people, movie. right? At the, at the end mm. of the movie, she she th she moved a bunch of platforms towards uh towards uh Darth Ben in the final battle, but never like in the way that you're talking about of just a controlled descent by standing on it like a platform. Hmm. Okay. But, but she could still make a slide down. But the yeah. thing is, is I don't really see why she wouldn't be able to do that when when she does the big you know because she, when she does the punches, like that extends and retracts. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then of course there's the fact that in the show she uh she can do the thing in Biggin where she just encases herself in armor. Uh, I don't know why she doesn't do that all the time, honestly. Like it just seemed like a straight. Uh, yeah, it's buff. like Monica's like translucent like uh, invincibility essentially. I can only assume that's what it is where things just pass uh, through her. Yeah, How she's about like one just like ready all the time. She's encased in armor and she's basically super duper strong. She can jump really high. Like yeah, I don't know why she doesn't just use that power all the time. Honestly, but she doesn't. She I don't. She doesn't use it at any point in this film, actually. Mm, um, nope. But nope. Oh well. Uh, Carol comes back and then picks her up and then takes her back down to the surface. So she eventually remembers after a little comedic bit that was really funny. Um, and then once I get down to the to surface, lie. yeah. Well, well hey, funny. look, all right. <laughs> it, no, it was, it was. Yeah, it was really funny. Uh, and then, uh, what was funny was uh, the big speech that Darth Ben gives. 
as she's on the ground. <laughs> Her delivery is really embarrassing. <laughs> and she's just like, yeah. you know, you have betrayed the Kree. And because of that, I shall destroy you. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> the bad guy I will destroy you. Yes, but I'm not, going to not... suck your air. She's not Chad. Uh, she's not Chad Aries. This mm -hmm. is Virgin Cuck Dark Ben. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is the part where uh, this is the part where Doge uh, looks at looks at Carol as like you fucked everything up. What did you do? This is a peace treaty. And then yeah, she creates like an unstable jump point in the atmosphere that begins sucking up the uh, the um, the air. It just starts sucking it into a thing that directs it over to to Hala. Um, so space balls. So... Yes. Yeah. Big yeah, big... <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and then and then yeah like. And then she just leaves, and then they order an evacuation. And you mentioned it before, I think, Mauler. He's like, "We have nowhere to go." And it's like, "But you can't stay here. The air's getting sucked out, <laughs> so like, you have to leave. You don't have to go um, home, but you can't stay here." <laughs> and then, um, and that and that's something that we see is that they start getting on like these escape pods and transport ships, and one of the ships gets sucked into Hollow, which I guess means all the scrolls on there would have been dragged out and killed. Uh, on Hala, but, you know, nice. like, I guess we don't care about them. Um, but no. I guess that means that the force, the force that is being generated by the atmosphere being sucked into Hala is sufficiently strong that it can stop ships that have the capacity to achieve escape velocity. Which is that, funny yeah, because it, that's happening and Captain Marvel and Kamala are just talking while that's yeah, happening in the background. Yeah. Like, they might be able to possible. use your help there, Captain Marvel. And she's like, hang on. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm just trying to but figure I out guess what's going on. What I'm heading towards is, if that's the case, shouldn't they all be getting sucked in yes. there? Like, how can anything survive that if ships that are capable mm -hmm. of getting into space, with the energy you need to get into space, that they can't escape the force? All of, of the people Everybody's should be sucked dead. up. It's all done. Yeah. Yep, it's all over. Well, it's all over. Why is this sucking happening anyway? Hala has an that atmosphere. It's not thinking. a vacuum. Yeah, exactly. But well, I, I believe but I, yeah. uh, when we were first watching this in the theater together, Rags, uh, you said, oh, yeah, opening a portal into space. That would, like, have a damaging effect. It's like, well, it's, just, it's not space. It's Hala. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed like to just be poison land. That's all. Things. Like, you could, if you wanted to fuck up a planet, you could just, like, suck out their atmosphere into the vacuum of space. If, but, um, like, it, the way they yeah. treat it is, you know, you know in Civil War when they throw all those gas canisters at the beginning to clear out the room and, and then Doctor Strange, if you opened a portal to that gas room, it would, like, suck all of the air out of his room? It's like, no. No, it would just be, it would just be, like, opening a place between two places on Earth. Yeah, the, the like air would start to mix a little. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, like... I, I guess we have to presume that the unstable jump points are creating a big suck. Um, we just have to accept uh, that they're creating that, even though the jump points don't do that. Well, yeah, because of course so, it sucks up the water, and it's just like, why is it sucking up yeah. the water? Ex yeah, we have to assume that it's. But like, I think the air one is even still like, how do you suck into? How do you suck the air into the? How do you like? What does it mean to suck the atmosphere completely of an entire planet into another? Like another planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would just add guess, more and more and more atmosphere and I guess, to the I other guess planet. That means that, that Hala and Tarnax and presumably Earth all have the same general composition of the atmosphere or of a substantial amount of nitrogen, substantial amount of. You know what I mean? Like that they have the same general atmospheric composition. I guess well, they, they do. Must, because everyone can breathe the same air, so. Yeah. Which yeah, is, so yeah. It, it couldn't be a crazy <laughs> okay. like uh, yeah. the like the uh, the only thing that could cause it would be like a crazy and I mean crazy like atmospheric pressure differential or something. But but I mean, I don't it looks see like that they're happening. just the same. It looks like they're basically yeah. they're just Earth because the cosmic yeah. MCU is so boring. Everywhere's just mm -hmm. like Earth. Everywhere's got people and uh, such that you don't even get as much of what you get in Star Trek where like yeah sure they're all humanoid for the most part but like they they're kind of like all different looking like here yes. they are mostly all humans or they're humans but they're blue or green and very 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 occasionally do you see an alien like one a other, real alien and other even when you do they're a cat harder on um, cultural differences as well like this doesn't bother it's just like whatever no well, yeah, exactly. Think, you know, the best we I mean, got why, was that. Science fiction is famous for not doing anything interesting or or neat. What with or, aliens or different, you know, yeah, worlds and civilizations, yeah. yeah. And the what thing is, Star Trek is on a TV budget, yes, so they exactly. have they, 
they have to resort to forehead lumps and stuff because that's going to be like your easy way to do it. Like yeah. occasionally, very occasionally, you'll get like something like Species 8472, which is just a, a tripod CGI thing that they can show for like three minutes, maybe an episode. But besides that. But if you that, do the forehead bumps and they act different and they sound different. Exactly. Then you're like, and okay. Yes. And if you treat culture. it seriously, I'm game. Yep. Well, and you can uh, say they're different on the wanna... inside. Yeah, but but like ideally, what you want to see is like in Mass Effect, where you got people who, even though they're humanoid, like Torians have a very different kind of like body structure to uh to like human beings, right? And it's it's and and then of course you have like the Hanar and the uh and the um oh, damn, what's the other? What's the what are the short guys? Oh, you remember, right? the the oh, um help us oh, out. What, what are they called? The guys with the the gas mask thing that they wear. What what are they? What were they? Yeah, after, after the first Mass um, Effect, like three of the species just disappeared from the fucking the galaxy. <laughs> the, the Hanar. No, you got no the you the Hanar. The, you said the, the, the El, there was Elcor. Everybody's saying Volus. They're saying Volus. Volus. Ah, yes, the, short guys. the Volus and the and Elcor. Then, and yeah. Yes, there was Elcor as well. Yeah, but yeah, but, they uh they just disappeared from the galaxy. We started. We stopped saying. I think we stopped saying Hanar, uh, Elcor, and Volus. I, I guess. The, the point I'm making is that Mass Effect is what I like to see, where you've got really different looking aliens. Like, Solarians, yeah, they're humanoid, but they don't look like people at all. They're like, clearly Turians not, don't look yeah. like people. Um, uh, the closest you got is the Asari, but, like, the Asari have, like, meaningful differences in terms of, like, the way that yeah. they are and operate and, like, their, their physiology. And, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, here, it's just like, oh, yes, people. And the best that you get is Scrolls. Well, well Veb. The best you got is Veb. The yeah. best, uh, best character. Yeah, best he should have been in this movie to before. save it. He could have. Yeah, he could have told everybody yeah. what to do. They should have had a movie called The Vebs, which was Veb and another Veb, and they go on an adventure together. Yeah, and they uh, got up to shenanigans. Billion dollar idea, idea right there. The MCU. <laughs> they they get into a sci-fi franchise. I respect universe. them. <laughs> Veb, the quest for then, holes. And then it has a horror ending because they end up in the Star Wars universe, the Disney oh, Star no. Wars Finally, universe. Finally, a new universe. <laughs> what are we in Star Trek or? <laughs> No. no, you're a Disney Star Wars. No, you're, you're in a Star Wars. Star Wars. And then that, yeah. Or like, yeah, the post credit scene, it, they, they find Thrawn and the zombie stormtroopers, and it's just like, no! <laughs> it pans out. It'll be great. Anyway, um, yeah, so th they, they need to start helping people, but Carol orders Kamala, don't use your powers, get on the ship. Um, Kamala wants to help, uh, but, you know, Carol doesn't give a shit. Um, this is, I would okay. say that this is like the first of... So this this room is so thin thematically, it's unbelievable. Um, the only one that I feel is like actually there in any real way is DreamWork. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Like teamwork is good, you know. It's good to work as a team, and this is like the first of that. You know, of like, ah, oh, Carol doesn't really. She don't really work well with a team, you know. She, uh, wow. she's, she, yeah. But but then you know, as Carol's flying around trying to save like these escape pods. Kamala sees some debris that's about to fall on some Korean, uh, creep fucking scrolls, and she runs over, and, um, she, she puts up, like, a big shield, and then switches with, uh, uh, Carol, and then Kamala's falling down to the earth again, and then gets switched. Uh, Where is Monica just, during like, this? She's just on the, she's just on the escape pod saying, come on, guys! Come on, run! Come on, okay. over here! Yeah, that's fair, all right, yeah, good stuff. Which is like... Really which yeah. is not helping. If you do that, you're not helping. <laughs> oh, you, you, you want to run up to him and be you like, just... you're only saying this to look like you're doing something to be safe. That's yeah. why you're doing uh, that. Th yeah, you're, you are safe yourself, and you want to make sure that you are on that ship when it takes off, but you don't want to look too, you know, selfish. No, and, you know, well, like she's, she's, she's on the plane, you know. Yeah, she's, she's there. there. Like, you're good. <laughs> like, you don't have to pretend like you're trying to help other people. Yeah. Like, no, we got it. We're, we're not going to get into it faster because you're sort of like... Move like like you're trying to direct me to round third and go home. Like I I, I got it. We're good. And she doesn't and even then, need to be on the ship because she can breathe space. Yeah, and she can she just can fly up. Space, yeah. yeah, she should. She should probably help people, but no. Or you make know, some room no. for someone else who doesn't Cause, need the. Cause, uh, yeah. I I don't know if it, it uh, like because Kamal actually wants to help people uh, like actively, which is you know it's nice when a hero yeah. actually wants to try and save people. And I we like I like that. split focus in terms of we got to save what we can, not lose a whole bunch more trying to save more. I like I like the clash of perspectives, but what I just said is all you get. It's just, yes, it's just it that. doesn't yeah. last. It doesn't last at all. It gets resolved the next scene, um, because yeah, yeah there, there's a part where um, uh, like she, uh, Carol flies back down. It's like where's Monica? Uh, not Monica. She says that to Monica. Where's Where's Kamala? 
And uh, Kamala's off, like, creating a ramp to help some Skrulls escape. And then Cal deliberately switches to get uh, Kamala back on the ship. And yeah, she tells him, like, we gotta save who we can. And then as they fly off, we see many Skrulls getting crushed under the falling debris. It's, um, it's nice. kind of, like, weirdly It was totally really cathartic. Stuck. Well... <laughs> It's, Finally, Secret a Invasion, comedy beat works in this movie. Secret Invasion <laughs> dealt, dealt so much damage. Secret Invasion was so bad for the scrolls. Oh yeah, so the for anybody who doesn't Kirby. know and listen casually and hasn't seen the Secret Invasion episode, there is currently as much as a million sub uh, scrolls subverting all of our political and social systems on Earth right now. Well, that's mean. Yeah, it's not great. They're called the Apocalypse because someone yes. lied to a nine-year-old. Their grand plan was to nuke Earth, and seemingly the vast majority of Skrulls were on board with this. Yes. Yeah. If not all of them. Oh, you know, I'm sure that, as this is why we were highlighting, like, yeah, this movie definitely, uh, totally took, took that forward. <laughs> totally remembered that aspect of the yeah. fucking story. And so, now they're up in space. Why did everything bad. collapse if you're just sucking out air? Uh, I don't know. It's so Shaking sucky, them. it's sucking uh, concrete yeah. up too. <laughs> but, it's, okay. but, but it fell down. When everything got sucked up, it, it fell, fell down. down. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's like I don't know which it's way just, up is. It makes so much sense. It's just hurting my brain, like in a good way, I guess. That's probably what that yeah, is. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's right, um, you know, no pain, no gain. You're gaining brain matter. Um, yeah. I brought it up on uh, on I think it was FNT, but it's it's such a sad and shitty opportunity to well a good opportunity to do something and they did something shitty, which is that there's a choice to be made when Kamala's created that bridge. She's got to maintain it by being there and using her power, but all the fucking debris is coming together, and Captain Marvel can see that, and she's like, I want to get her out. Obviously, if I move her, then the bridge will fail and that'll kill all the scrolls. If I use any of my powers to even get to her, I'll switch her out, and then you know, you know what I mean? Like this, this, this yeah, stakes, there's, yeah. there's issues, there's risks, returns, there's all kinds of things happening, but they just like immediately have her use her power. Kamala gets switched back, and then she grabs like two scrolls and they leave. And it's like, oh, you didn't even acknowledge that by switching her, you cancelled out her bridge, which killed all the scrolls. Like, mm -hmm. oh well, that that would have been interesting. It, it's like a choice or something. Well, I, I, think it's, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to show Carol doing something that. Probably killed a few people. Yeah, like um, genociding Hala or something, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't want to show that. <laughs> That's we in the movie the... between the movies. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of lot of women doing genocides in media the, these past few years. You know, it's just it's, uh, it's something to think. They're about. playing it's catch up. About. Yeah, <laughs> they're playing. They're playing catch up. Gonna level yeah, the playing with field. Hitler and yeah, <laughs> girls get um, it done. So, so they're up in space. And uh, Doge uh, is like, Carol, you you fucked everything up, you know? Um, but he, he's not that angry, and it's basically dropped as soon as Carol says, oh, I caught a friend. Like, there's so many instances in this film of drama gets raised and instantly, uh, like, yeah. resolved, you know? Or, or just forgotten about, where it's just like, you messed everything up. Oh, I caught a friend. Okay, and that's it. That's all you get for that. And then um, and then you see a, uh, a the Bifrost uh, opening up, and uh, it's a Valkyrie. <laughs> Woohoo, Valkyrie! Yo, Yo Valkyrie! Yeah. Everyone's oh, favorite is character. Is the Bifrost something she's Yo, meant to be able to summon, by the way? I've heard... Um, <laughs> um, I got that? really confused because she's wearing her Men in Black costume. And I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 I think uh, she wore the suit in Thor, Love and Thunder at, at a certain point, right? right. Yeah, yeah, for when she was doing official shit, point, yeah. <laughs> Where she was um, sore, Love and Thunder. Oh, that was Yeah, nice. she... She's here, and she's gonna she's gonna take these scrolls to Earth. It's specifically, New Asgard, I assume. Yeah, which I, I don't know. Do they have sovereignty in New Asgard? Why not? I guess they. Why not? They probably have some amount of sovereignty, but why considering that not? right now on Earth, since this takes place after Secret Invasion, America is like very openly declared war there on was, the scroll. There was a <laughs> presidential address where he basically said, "It's us versus them. We're gonna fucking crush them." And do you remember Fury's reason? Vote. Fury's reason for not bringing any superpowered people in is because the worst thing that could happen is they turned into superpowered people, and now they're all Asgardians. And now yep. they're in Asgard. <laughs> and remember, Asgard doesn't just have Asgardians; it has aliens there. It has like people from yep. different different like planets and stuff. So that just gives them a free gateway to like go remember, all across the galaxy. Remember when Fury said the president's speech was hateful? <laughs> yeah. Not right after they tried to like, you fucking bet it was hateful. <laughs> Okay. You're um, hateful. 
And so, yeah, now we get another bit for the, the theme of teamwork. This is like the second of maybe four or five instances of this theme having anything where uh, Valkyrie tells uh, Carol, you can stand tall without standing alone. That's it. And then she leaves. Yay. With the scrolls. I was as, if there was any, as if there was any doubt or conflict about this theme to begin with. Well, the teamwork is good. Well, yeah, like there's never like I have to do this alone or I can't work with people or um, no, but from like the beginning, they're all just like they sort well, of say, well, they like give lip service to it and say, no, we're not a team, but they basically, but they are. You well, know? if we, uh, but, but that's like it, you know, you can dig in from what we've seen so far. If Kamala had been told to stay home and not use her powers, a lot of things would have been done better and faster by now. Yes, that's true. Kamala, Kamala in particular. Is she's she's inexperienced. You she know? shouldn't be here. Like, she shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll, we'll get to we'll get to that part in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so they they've all left. But there's a little part where Kamala's like, oh, you know, Captain Marvel's gonna fix this. Um, but and it looks like Carol's kind of like it's like she's kind of a little bit like annoyed, but also like kind of not because this this doesn't carry forward. Like this is resolved in the next scene spoil for that um but you know that, that that scene's done now we're going over to hollow which we get to see like properly for the first time it's desolate it's dark uh but the atmosphere is getting filled in and uh darth ben's giving a speech in front of a crowd tells him like oh yeah you can breathe some fresh air um and then and then we get the flashback of uh of the good old story with carol but wait where uh, yeah those yeah. civilians, uh, the citizens, whatever have you, of oh, Hala, yeah, this is they, yeah. well, I, I, might, I might be talking about something else, I'm not even sure, but they would have seen, presumably, unless she opened it at some other area of the planet, like, they would have seen what she did, right, I assume, and not only would they have gotten some new air to breathe, sure, would they not have seen, like, many people, ships, architecture, yeah. soil, all coming in under the soundtrack of screaming? Mm -hmm. Would they oh, not the think like getting hmm. sucked in, and landing <laughs> yeah. and splatting on the ground? Yeah, I mean, like the they just see scrolls being like, ah, and they're just like, well, well that's interesting. Like, <laughs> what do the civilians? Where do they think these resources are coming from? Do they know that do they're they being care? stolen from habit inhabited planets? And are they cool with that? Because if they are, that's real awkward, man. Like, because. <laughs> Because they're definitely meant to be, they're, they're definitely framing the civilians as sympathetic, of like, ah, oh, they're suffering, you know, this plight, and it's mm -hmm. unfortunate, and you know, but but I like, I, I don't, I don't know if they know what's going on, like if they know where all of these resources are coming from. But you know, no. <laughs> this is where we get the flashback as well. So we we see that Darth Ben, she saw Carol the Annihilator just indiscriminately like killing all of these crew. She's working her way towards the Supreme Intelligence, and then. She blasts like the roof above Darth Ben and drops all of the debris on her. And then uh and then something that something that Darth Ben says is that Carol said that, you know, it's like heard her lies claiming she was there to set us free, but when she destroyed the Supreme Intelligence, she destroyed the Kree. Um and it's just like, oh, so did Carol stick around for a while? To no, she explain? left. I think we have no. to conclude that she left, which um I think it's safe to say this is this is, this is basically character assassination, which I didn't think was possible with uh, Carol, but they managed it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. It doesn't make any fucking sense. She caused a civil war slash, destroyed everything, abandoned them, and then it's like, wait, but wasn't she already criticized for abandoning Earth? And it's like, yeah, like, she just abandons people and things. Well, it's just, what an idiot. I'm going to destroy the central foundation of this civilization and then just leave... But yeah. I'm gonna tell him like, yeah, but that the supreme intelligence was evil. Okay, you're on your own. Bye. Uh, and just wasn't involved in anything at all. Like, what an Ooh. idiot! Imagine someone said like, your government is evil. Wipes them all out and leaves. You're like, uh... but, I, but, but I voted for that. What? <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy that she couldn't consider at all the ramifications of destroying the governing entity of the civilization and just leaving. That's hard and it's like, for yeah. You. What, uh, well, she's yeah. just a terrible person. <laughs> and she's a coward. It's, it's commentary on foreign policy, okay? This movie's very political. <laughs> ah, yes, I see. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> and they do it yeah, by that... the person everyone respects the most, Brie Larson. I mean, <laughs> at least have it by someone who you think, okay, maybe they know what they're doing. She just goes around the galaxy blowing stuff up at random. 
I yeah, do she, that sometimes. She just cool. she's like Crumbobulous Micro. She just loves killing. <laughs> she you, you loves do killing wonder. She must killing love people. killing. Her. I mean, yeah. remember when she killed all the Kree before and she was wooing? It's like, yeah, yeah it's the right. same thing. Woo! I mean, she mm. has Goose as a pet. Yeah. So. Ooh, well, it's all coming monster. together. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. time she gets teleported into a new room, she punches somebody in the face. She doesn't even know the situation she's in. She just starts <laughs> punching people. Yep. Uh, I like how you replay the fight as well, because as I was glancing over, it's like, oh yeah, remember how, like, she fl the guy on the moon, she, like, threw him 50 miles, but the guy that she threw into the wall didn't throw him very far or hard at all. It's like, yeah, of course. We I mean, we're past that, but whatever. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> the stamina um, bar was low, Fringy. The, the uh, stamina bar was low. The scientist is like, we need more power than the, uh, the band can provide to reignite our sun. That's what he says. Two bands worth of power. Yeah, they need which is funny because consider what happens when she uses two of them. Um and 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 like they're not they're not trying to like reignite their star with with the bands like they they're, they're going to create a portal. That's what they're going to do. So I find this line very confusing. Was their plan to get the two bands so that they could like restart the star? Was that their plan? Is that possible? Is that something that it can do? It can just like restart a star? If... And what does that mean? If the star is deplenished all of it, uh, deplenished, <laughs> diminished, <laughs> fuck's sake, de 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 diminished and replenished is what I, if it's, if it's diminished and used up all of its hydrogen, what does it do? Does it just like restore a bunch of hydrogen to the core so that it can continue Listen, all, fusion? All I know is whatever Monica says is true is true. It's if true. she says yeah, it's Monica possible, says it's possible. Yeah, whenever she it... says science stuff, Sure, that's well, yeah, that's how it works in Marvelville. Because to, to help Ooh. out with the, to help out with the visual, like the the their star is like it's way dimmer. I presume it's it it doesn't their look people like, are way dimmer too. It, it, it has not expanded. It's not like in a red giant phase. It's like the same size, but it's it's like dimmer and slower and something that. It, it, like I don't, I don't understand what exactly I'm meant to believe about what's happening with the star because unless I've got it totally wrong, as I understood it, stars die when they uh, have exhausted, like their fusion process. That they fuse hydrogen, and then once that's done, they have to fuse heavier elements like helium. And that the more that it goes up, the more that it like accelerates towards its death. So if this star is like dying, doesn't that just mean it's like used up all of the resources it can use for fusion? So, like, how do you fix that? Unless I've you got have to pump it full of hydrogen, wrong. right? I guess so. Thing. Again, though, the, the stars don't tend to go cold when they die. Or at least not until, like, billions and billions of years yeah, pass so, and oh, they've completely oh, yeah, cooled down. So that's the other <laughs> thing to add on as well. Stars live for billions of years. The really big stars, like your really, really big, like, blue uh, and white stars, they die really quickly. But remember, really quickly on a cosmic scale, <laughs> it's still millions of years, thousands of years at the absolute least. But a main sequence, like, our star looks like the same one as Halo. Ours is like a yellow star. Main sequence, yellow star. That's gonna last 10 billion years. The red giant phase lasts for like what two billion years? So like how did it die in 30 years? Well how they killed they possible? killed the supreme intelligence. Right, and the supreme intelligence was what? Tapped into there was a, there was a big was like, Ethernet cable uh, that went from the Supreme Intelligence yeah. into the Sun and they <laughs> blew solar power. Hmm? Is it Ethernet or Ethernet? I thought it was Ethernet. I think you're allowed I to do both. Ethernet. Okay, that's fair. I'll allow but, you to do yeah, both, because so I'm nice. I guess, nice. I guess, against all logic, we have to accept that this is the state of the star. It's, it's, it's slowing down its process, but it's got plenty of hydrogen left to fuse. It just needs, I don't know, some a sufficient amount of energy, but to jump ahead, Darben's plan is to extract the mass of our star, our sun, and I guess just deposit it into that star, which, I don't know, man. Do you know how big stars are? Like, do you know how big they are? That how, that sounds mass? like a supernova waiting to happen. <laughs> just, and what, and this, one's, this one's particularly malicious because you'd be like, oxygen, okay, it's quite hot, likely that planets with oxygen may have life on. Water, okay, the same. You can get any star. You don't exactly. need well... next to a planet that's got life on it. <laughs> the thing is, is that we're, we're not at the... Because, you see, that's the motivation of the villain. You see, she's, uh, she's a... She's a spiteful evil, but we'll get to that. Um, oh boy, I'm excited to learn the motivation yeah. of our <laughs> Basically, it's probably going to be really good. Darth Ben's like, we don't need the other off. band. We don't have enough time. You know, Hull is fucked. We got to we gotta get moving. Um, and then that's that. And so now we're back on the ship with uh, Carol uh, and Monica. They're having a little chat as they're making repairs. Um, and Monica basically expresses that, like, so like, why did you never come back? You never came back. You said you'd be back before we knew it. 
And uh, Carol's response, which, be forewarned, this is just not true, okay? This is not true what she says. Uh, she says she didn't know what she was getting into. She didn't know how to explain her obligations to Monica, uh, that she was going to come back, uh, but other people needed her. This is not true, but this is what she says. Um, like, Carol doesn't believe this. It's a lie. Uh, she's lying to her and or herself. Uh, she's lying to Monica and or herself, basically. Um, and then Monica's like, yeah, but we needed you. And then that's the end of the conversation. And we're not getting much more on that until the second act low point. That's when Hooray. we get continued development of this dynamic. So, like, oh. for reference, all we had was, like, one throwaway line in one division, a couple of their intro conversations and a bit of their, uh, they're like, oh, you know, we're not, we're not really, like, getting along. And then it's resolved in the second act low point. And that is the extent of the relationship between Carol and Monica in terms of, like, meaningful direct, um, development of this, uh, this friction. Isn't that incredible? I mean, well, I would use it. another word, need. but yeah, um, yeah. That's just, it's You've something. done it. You it's, did it. It's it's finished. Yeah. Yeah. Really on those parts are also the worst parts of the movie. <laughs> so. I, they are. Well, yeah. I I guess it's just um. I find it insane how little character there is in this film. Like I I find it remarkable. It's not like the plot is so riveting and detailed that you need to dedicate. I just don't, I don't know how they did it. Like, I know it's one and a half hours, but like you can achieve, like a lot of the Disney Renaissance animated films are less than an hour and a half. And think about everything they accomplished in that time compared to how much- And they had better songs as well, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, they had better everything. Um, mm. Oh yeah. And so Carol's like, oh, I'm sorry that how I spoke to you, Kamala. And it's like, oh, it's all good. So that conflict is resolved as well. Like it's already done. It's all good. You know? Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, I'm sorry. That's okay. And it's it's resolved, like, what, four minutes after it happened? <laughs> That's good. Well, uh, I mean, I, uh, check that off the list of things that you mm, have to mm -hmm. do for film. I mean, yeah, that's right. You need conflict, and then you need to resolve it. Ah, yes, good. Got yeah, it. We Nailed need characters it. Right. and a plot. Okay. Oh, swiftly moving along. Um, and then you just have a bit where like Kamala's just like, Oh yeah, Captain Marvel, you're so cool. Oh, what should we have our Woo! superhero names? Oh, we're the Marvels. Haha, <laughs> yeah, we we don't need to talk about this, right? It's just boring and not funny and fucking lame. I agree. Or does anybody anybody have any particular observations about spending like all that time just trying to figure out superhero names for Monica right after a bunch of scrolls just died who these guys like? Um, like what, mere, mere hours after that happened, it's, it's all back to jokes and funny times and haha, -ha, because you can never sit with a sad moment, even though, you know, it's, you can never sit with a sad moment for more than a couple of minutes. You gotta get moving. You gotta keep going. In hindsight, What's it makes jump it rope? bizarre that they ended Infinity War like that and then left us for however long, a couple years, just with that as the state of things, kind of. Mm. Yeah. Also, like... Yeah. Was that jump rope yep. CGI? Because Brie Larson did not look like she was jumping rope in, in oh, that that's, uh, sequence. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's... Uh... We're not there yet. We're not quite there yet. We're, there yet. we're okay, almost Okay, we're not there. to jump rope. We're not to jump rope. Now, now we got some big old exposition. So Kamala shows Carol the bangle, explains how it works. It was glowing when uh, the portal got opened uh, on uh, Tarnax. And she explains how it once sent her back in time, which we already covered. And she, which, you know, she thinks that's related uh, Carol says, oh, that's a quantum band, and she, and that it's a myth, but, you know, I guess it's not. And it's an ancient artifact. It's and... a myth, but I guess it's not. Yeah, but I guess it's not. <laughs> um, and, then, and then, yeah, Monica at this point's like, oh, what are the odds that, like, Kamala and uh, Darth Ben would ever encounter each other in all of, like, the cosmos about it? And then Kamala says, oh, what's seeking you? What you seek is seeking you. And it's like, oh, okay, cool movie. Do you think that's a sufficient explanation? Hey, Faith. A djinn cast a spell on a magical bangle yeah. oh, during partition gosh. or whatever, so fuck you. Was he drinking <laughs> gin while he cast his gin magic? Oh, oh I don't, I don't probably. Know about that, but maybe. Yeah. You know. So, you know, yeah, this is... Oh, yep. Just, just, uh... Cause you, you know, as you said, it's just nothing happens of it, but... The expect I think any normal person would have expected, like, oh, Kamala's gonna learn that Captain Marvel's not the hero she thought she was. <laughs> wow, yeah, that could be interesting. Doesn't happen. Who knows what will happen to her character because if, of that, you know? If some Marvel suit said, we can't do that because we need Kamala to feel inspired by her anyway, and I'd be like, you can still do that. You can have well, the... Why yeah, did you write her to be such a terrible oh, shit just... human being? Yeah, because in a better world it would be, yeah, you got flaws, but, like, you still go out there and do, do her That's the arc. Thing, you... So 
you have her lose complete yeah. faith in it, and then she realizes that a superhero is a lot more than some paragon who's impossible to well, have a I failure mean, of any kind. In, in uh, Far From Home, right? It's like, you can't live up to Tony. Tony couldn't live up to Tony. Like, the, yeah. the, the, like the perfect ideal doesn't exist. He was a flawed individual just like you, but he tried his best, so that's what you need to do. Because... Yeah, I did this in Coco. It's a, it's, it, well, this is what I meant by... Coco. When she had that moment of watching Captain Marvel say, like, we're fucking leaving, go, and it was like, a, oh, I see, what, oh, we're gonna be doing that. And then the film's like, no. No, she's just like, oh, I'm sorry, it's okay, and that's it. You say that as if, like, it's it's not, it's, it's as though the film didn't even acknowledge that that's what they were, you know, if she had said, like, I thought maybe you were a bit different, then she's like, oh, yeah, I'm not, but sorry about that. We don't even, like, pretend that's the art. Yeah. It was more, she, says, she said she was sorry for, for yelling at her. Which is, which it would be, I don't know, it feels like, People yell at each other in, in, in battles, yeah. okay? I don't think that's the kind of thing that you would really hold against each other. I yelled at you in the heat, like in a battle to try and get you to do things the way that I wanted to, compared to, I'm sorry that you had to experience leaving many, as far as you're aware, innocent people to be crushed to death. Yeah. You know, like, it's it's just Kamala, you know, like, I think that she's, the, of the three characters, because I, I basically think that Monica is a static character in this film. I don't think she has an arc. I don't think she goes anywhere. Um, because I barely her, know what we start with. Well, just, her grievance is normal. You left me. Of like, you abandoned us. And she's not wrong for holding that. And Carol basically admits like, yeah, I fucked up. So Monica doesn't have an arc. She is just the way she is the whole time. And she's totally static. Which is, which, by the way, like that's, if she was a great character, but static, that'd be one thing. But she's boring is basically what I'm getting at. She's got yeah. nothing going on. Yeah, like if I have a diamond in my house and it just stays that way, that's all right. Yeah. But if I but have if a you... turd that I haven't flushed, it's gonna I would smell. <laughs> like <laughs> it to go, I'd like it to change or do you should warm it instead. Yeah. But, um, like, but so this Brie, is... This, oh, sorry. The, the lesson that Bree should be learning <laughs> is that these decisions are too big for me to decide. That I shouldn't have done that decision in the first place. And you kind of get like, um... What is it in Star Trek? The, the the prime directive that I can't predict mm -hmm. all of the consequences of this on somebody else's culture that I don't know anything about, and so I shouldn't do it. But her, she, the lesson she seemed to take from it was, I'm sorry, I couldn't fix the problems afterwards. But I don't think she ever even considers maybe I should have left it that way. Mm. Maybe like, if maybe I don't I know what to do, I could just not do some, you know, do something. I could. Like, think and work things out. Ooh, they could do the thing where she becomes overly cautious. And instead, uh, maybe Carol, like, she needs to do something, but she's kind of frozen by fear after what happened on Holland, what she did. So, well, yeah. Yeah, one way is, it's like hyper intervention or just like, no, everybody's problems are their problems. It's not my place to get involved. And then that there's some like. And to maybe fear her own power. Because yeah. mm -hmm. she's just a girl from Earth. She did not expect to be the most powerful entity in the universe. Mm hmm But no. Well, but, that's Gia now. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll see her again. Mm -hmm. um, so, what is explained is that according to Cree legend, the quantum bands were used to create the jump point network. Um, Kamala says this explains their entanglement, which I think it kind of does and kind of doesn't. <laughs> um, because I don't really understand. So, the bands created the jump point network, but they also unlocked Kamala's mutation which allows her to manifest nor from the nor dimension into physical constructs. And it also absorbs, like, the light powers, the binary blasts of Captain Marvel. And also it gives you, like, it can help you travel back in time, and it can also give you, like, visions. You know Man. what I mean? Like, what... What, why does it have all of these abilities? Why, That's just why fucking it, handy. Quantum. I would say all of them are intuitively connected. Uh, oh well, you know, uh, when you, yeah, I guess so. And none yeah. of you disagreed, so Quant quantum say, solves I, this. The word quantum yeah. does solve this. I would say there's this. one gap. Quantum mania. It's filled by uh, the one you didn't explain for me. There's one extra power. You can inscribe writings through wishing it hard enough onto the bangle that will travel That's through right. time and stuff like That's that. Right. So, yeah. Yes. So really, it all makes sense. Um. Oh, right, and uh, the the universal weapon is what the hammer's called. But I wrote down the that it's universal the universal weapon. Hammer. Yeah, that's what yeah. it's called. It's called oh, the it Universal Weapon. Yes. Yeah. That's it? I, yeah. Wow. I feel like that a hammer is, is a better name. Shitty. <laughs> I, I Space hammer that. would be better. Anyway. But is that because it can weapon. destroy universes, or just that it can be used on anything? Uh, 
Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> it can only be used on universes. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Can, does it have the power to destroy the universe? Or are they like, well, this can just hit anything. Like, it can be used universally on all objects. This, this will you know. slam into anything in the universe. Much like a normal hammer, but it's big. Yeah, but yeah. this this uh this this hammer is made out of atoms. And... <laughs> uh -huh. Whoa! Can it see light? Universe quantum atoms. Atom. Quantum okay. atoms. Oh, uh, oh someone in chat just mentioned. It's like, wait, do hammers? you think they just they didn't remember to switch the name? That was the placeholder name. Or like, fuck That's it. Multiple we'll universe a weapon. Yeah, we'll just call it that. I forgot. Oh, lame. Uh, well, anyway, so. Uh, Kamala says that Darth Ben had some star charts on the ship, uh, and then Carol's like, oh, we can use the scroll, you know, torture device to, uh, to get those memories to, uh, find out what was on the star chart. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, she clarifies she's been trying to use them to unlock the memories, and Monica points out, like, wait, you're still trying to? It's been, like, 30 years. And it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. And I guess we just have to accept that in 30 years, she's not been able to... It's another thread. Able to tap into much. Yeah, but I yeah thought... like, I don't believe her, because she learned how to fly in, like, 12 seconds. I thought that the payoff for that was going to be another arc of, like, Carol choosing the, to stop trying to dig up the past and instead move on with her future, but no. Mm, but no. That. Okay, and so so this is, a, this is an important thing to clarify when they use this machine. They find this star chart, and it shows the Magellanic Galaxy. It doesn't show the planet that the Kree are going to specifically. Um, reminder, galaxies are huge. Um, the Milky Way has over a hundred billion stars. Yeah, it says you. Just, you know, well, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I've not gone and counted them myself individually, so... Wait, you know, wait just a second. Just, just to be clear, Magellan circumnavigates the globe. I mean, even, he didn't even make it all the way, and he gets a galaxy named after him? Neat. Mm, yeah, that no, doesn't, I, I don't know about that. That seems a little... They should have just named but the yeah, planet after him. Just a that reminder, all they have going forward for relevant plot stuff is they know what galaxy they're going to. That does all I mean, you that need. Narrows it down by a lot, but in a meaningless way. Mm -hmm. They should use Carol's magical navigation thing. I agree. She has. Uh, I was confused about this as well. Oh, what? Hmm? Which magical navigation thing? She has a couple. Yeah. What? Are you... <laughs> Another the power way she of love. Flies really? around the galaxy, finds random. Oh yeah. Yeah. She could just yeah. do that. Oh, some way. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah, while they're going through these memories, um, a memory starts playing when Carol returns to Earth during the snap, uh, to visit Maria, uh, Monica's mom, who was dying of cancer, and she says, like, oh, you should have been Captain Marvel, it was that stupid race that we did to the hangar, you should have been Captain Marvel, and then Maria's like, oh, you know, I want you to take Goose, but only until Monica comes back, um... And yeah, Monica doesn't want to relive these memories, but Carol just wants to keep doing it, uh, and we don't really get anything... Like she doesn't stop. She just keeps it going. No. Yeah. She's like, sorry, I need to still see this. Even though Monica is obviously and understandably upset about these Like, oh, my these dead mum. Memories. memories of her talking about us. It's like, that's fun. Yeah. When you visited during the snap, but you weren't there when I came back. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Um, you know what's funny as well? Yeah, saying, Monica like, you should have been Captain Marvel. It's like, yeah, well, even if she did go in the training exercise or whatever instead of you, she wouldn't have been dumb enough, hopefully, to shoot the engine all over herself. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but, but as, as, I mean, it might be that in multiple universes, Maria is Captain Marvel because of some weird obsession with the producers, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, that's just a thought. That's, that's, oh, just that's a definitely theory, a nod to theory. that. That's like, that's mm -hmm. the what yeah. if, if she had won the race. Haha. Uh -huh. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, Monica just explains, like, yeah, nobody was there for her when she came back. And then Kamala gives her a hug and reassures her, like, oh, I'm sorry about that. Cause, Again, Kamala's just like more socially astute than uh <laughs> than Carol. <laughs> like Carol's just oblivious. Carol is allergic to emotions. A little bit, yeah. Uh, but that's the end of that as well. It's just like, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. Anyway, moving on with the plot. Yeah. Yep. Like, we're just back to the plot as if nothing happened there. I guess um, I'm willing so, to bet yeah. they cut a lot of the actual like the, I refuse Character. to believe that these there's these pieces, these tiny bits of residue of what looks like writing. It's like, was this writing at some point? And it's like, no, 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 it was all sludge. And you're like, oh, okay. Mm. So this is, um, so I want to I wanna run through all of this information to be very clear about it all. So um, mm -hmm. the explanation of the jump points is that they, quote, stretch and reconfigure space without rupturing the space-time continuum. 
Uh, but the more jump points that are installed, the more unstable the network becomes like fracking. Uh, and then it basically, if Darth Ben, Darth, sorry, Darth Ben, if she keeps creating jump points, it's going to cause problems. Now, I find this confusing because it's, it's like, oh, the more that you add in, stable or not, makes it unstable? Yeah, is that, how that line's only there so they can tell you back fracking is bad. And the fracking line is not, like, that's dubbed over. Nobody says that line in the movie. I wouldn't be surprised if that was ADR. Yeah, because you can't see her. Yeah. Um, oh, right. Also, I just I don't even understand what the comparison is like to fracking versus creating holes in space time. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, they don't fracking seem analogous to me at me. all. Um, but and then and then so so this is how they start deducing where they need to go. So I'm just going to run through it in order. So Tarnax was formerly occupied by the Kree. Maybe the attack was a warning. Therefore, they're going to attack another colony. But the Magellanic Galaxy was 25 percent like controlled by the Kree at one point. So. That's so many planets, it's unbelievable. Uh, but then, oh, well, if, if, Dar if Darth Ben wanted to destroy Tarnax, um, why wouldn't she just blow it up, you know? she was Jump points aren't weapons, but means of transportation. Jump points have two sides. So the atmosphere of Tarnax probably went to Harla, as, you know, Carol figures out. Given that Harla had a shit atmosphere and is suffering from a drought, maybe the next place uh, has to do with water. Uh, and then the planet that they're going to go to is... Alanda is in the Magellanic Galaxy, and oceans cover 99.63% of the planet. This is a correct guess. This is where she is going. In the entire galaxy? In the, in, in the entire galaxy. Man. Wow. Pretty smart. Nice. Wow. Nice. And oh. what's, what's better when you add on top, this is before Carol figures out that Dar ben, Dar, sorry, Darth Ben is specifically targeting places that she cares about. So for all she knows, she's just going to random places to extract their resources. And based on where you are now, wouldn't it make more sense that she would go to a planet that is uninhabited? There's got to be water worlds that have nobody on them elsewhere. So if anything... Marvel would... Universe? Absolutely. The reality is you have no means of actually guessing where they're going to go. When we're talking about a galaxy with over 100... You know, I don't know how big this galaxy is supposed to be, but I mean, if, if you know, if our galaxy is any indication, at the very least, tens of billions of stars, there's no way that you can even... You can't even begin to guess. You can't even begin to guess. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't even be... It wouldn't even be worthwhile to guess. It's like, what's the point of that? You just have no idea. But yes, and they deduce want, that... Yep. You'd want... um uninhabited planets because if you go for an inhabited planet you're going to piss them off they're going to try and exactly. stop you yeah, a little bit. and exactly. this is the fate of your home world you're not going to want to risk it if you want to destroy something you do it afterwards once you've already fixed your own home world mm -hmm. plus yeah, i mean like the lives of kree soldiers that you're sending you know exactly. you want to avoid that but that's kind of what i'm getting at is that even though guessing is pointless even if you wanted to your guess doesn't make sense why wouldn't they go to a place that has no people on it for just those reasons because i don't want to get into a fight I'm just, I'm tired of science fiction stories not understanding how big the universe is. Like, these types of, like, shitty Marvel movies that, like, just think that the universe is tiny. It's really fucking annoying. But you know? it's, it's like, like oh, open yeah. a nice moon. They, they open the portal next to a city, rather than anywhere else on the entire planet. They, it's just yeah. like, well, we built a set here, everything must happen. Like, if you guys want to have a Marvel. fight, then just show up and say, hey, you want to fight? Like, I, ju I just... Basically, like, John Wick. <laughs> like every planet has fight. one every planet has one city they all speak the same language um they, they all, look all like humans sort of like a, yeah they all look like humans everywhere is really close together everywhere is inhabited unlike in you know as far as we can tell most planets are empty uh or like not empty but you know m most planets don't seem to have life at least at the at, you know our solar system is any indication i just i don't know I, ju I just find this all really annoying and the fact that they guessed it correctly like, the whole movie ends if they got it wrong, and the odds of them getting it wrong are, like, astronomically high. Not possible like, so to high. comprehend. Yeah. yeah, like, we're talking, like, the, the chance of getting it right are, like, 0. 0.000. 000. Like, there's, there is no educated guess when we're talking about billions of potential locations. But whatever, you know, they, they got it right. Here's a <laughs> question. Why didn't Darth Ben just open one portal on Earth in the ocean or above it and suck up the air and the water at the same time. Oh, because yeah. fuck you! 
Well, because Earth, Earth yeah, you can do it right on the water level. Yeah, get them both. The old one-two punch. Earth, and Earth it would piss off Carol. That's right. Two birds with one stone. And then, when you're done and sucked it all up, just flip it around and get the sun to. Mm hmm. But I guess the logic would be yeah, but this one's 99% water. Which, by the way, you talk about the evolution of. The evolution of a humanoid species on a planet that has, like, no fucking land. You know what I mean? Do we even want to think about, like, what is the evolution? They moved there from a oh, different then again, planet. Then again, then again, the Celestials might have planted a seed in uh, Atlanta or yeah. uh, Atlanta, and then they guided them, and then the the uh, the Deviants were there, but they stopped them, and so, like, humans flourished there, and then the Celestials are going to emerge, uh, emerge out of the planet and blow it up. Maybe it Marvel had really big ice universe. caps at one point, and it melted. Mm. Yeah, it's weird that, like, human, like, great apes would, you know... Emerge on a planet everywhere. Water. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I guess everywhere, but doubly so. I, mean, huh? I know that, I know <laughs> yeah. that uh, it's called convergent evolution, right? When uh, two independent species develop, like, similar traits. Is that what yes. it's called? What's the, is that the term? So, yeah, like, convergent instance, evolution, yeah. Because yeah. right. uh, raccoons and tanukis, you know, they're not related at all, but they, they, they're they both adorable little uh, little critters with their... Yeah, they're great. Little, uh, yeah. Yeah, crabs keep evolving is uh, the big joke of convergent evolution, where all these independent species just turn into crabs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, com crabs Carol like acting... It, it's interesting because yeah, a lot, a, a, a lad. I keep saying a ladner, a, a ladner. Say a uh, ladner, you know. Yeah, uh, Carol, <laughs> Carol's acting uh, weird about it all, but which you know Kamala and, and Monica both noticed. But you know, it's it's uh you know whatever. <laughs> now now we're now we're at to uh, like Fury's taking. So Fury because Kamala's family insisted, uh, he's bringing them up to Saber. Why? Because they insisted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he has no power to just say nah, bye. But he's he's bringing him up, um, and and then they're having a call, and and Kamala's mother, who by the way, after watching uh after watching Miss Marvel, she she's one of the better characters that's been introduced in uh in Phase Four and Five. Kamala's mother is like she's actually like kind of an okay character, mostly normal, responsible um, parent who's trying to make the best yeah. for her family. <laughs> it's just like yeah. <laughs> um, so she, you know, she's rightfully anxious about Carol taking her teenage daughter, like, on a dangerous cosmic mission. And, uh, Carol and Monica basically reason, like, well, she needs to stay with us because we can't risk, uh, intergalactic body swapping. But, like, if Kamala just went home, didn't use her powers, and took off the bangle, if we're going to assume that that has anything to do with it, there's no risk of switching places. Just yes. don't use your powers. The risk, yep. and, like, sh the, you, we're talking zero risk versus potential risk of death or serious injury why is she actually going with them i just hate it uh -huh. they take an underage kid to this very very All very dangerous mission <laughs> 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 well i don't and think they, they have much choice because they'll just swap anyway so it's probably safer that she's with them to swap oh, no, a no. small distance but so, well, so that's what i was saying it, right? though she, she can just because remember using the powers is what makes the swap so Kamala could just like not do that. Not, oh. Just go home, don't use your powers, take off the bangle. Because something that's worth clarifying as well, Kamala doesn't need to wear her bangle to have her powers. I thought that's how it works, but I'm just jumping at it. At the end of the movie, she uses it without the bangle on. So <clears> she <throat> don't even need it. So like, why are they taking her? Why? Why? Like, why? I think I think they want you to go like, oh yeah, they can't risk our interdimensional, you know, interplanetary like swapping. But just don't use your powers. I don't also, understand. Rags is wrong. Like, Captain Marvel is an what? overage kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, in Infinity War, right? Remember when Peter, like, almost goes to the, like, gal outside in the space? And, mm -hmm. like, Tony is freaking out. He sends him back to the Earth. And when he finds out that, he, you know, Peter actually snicked, snuck into the ship. He's like freaking out. What is you are a kid, don't be here. Like, why are you here? Even the cape is freaking out. <laughs> the, <laughs> these people are like, okay, we're just gonna take this kid to this very, very dangerous mission, and we promise to protect her. How can you promise that? There's going to be a combat that is gonna endanger her life. And she's 16. Yeah, but it's funny. It's like the yeah. writers can't understand that this is 
like it, the writers know everything's going to work out in the end, so they write the characters as if they all know the same thing as well. Like they can't yeah. actually comprehend danger. Yeah, pretty much. Um, like it, I just, I just find it fascinating that they didn't have a real conversation about that or actually taking off the bangle and hiding it. Because if, if Kamala's going to wear it, and then you know you're going to go and potentially confront her, as far as they believe, they're heading to the place where they're going to meet her. Like, surely it's a good idea not to deliver the bangle right to her. Just hide it somewhere else, you know? Take it back to Earth or take it somewhere and hide Saber. it. Saber. Maybe keep it on there. Study it. Or, or, you know, she could have given it to uh, Valkyrie so she could have taken it to Asgard. You know, the new Asgard. And they could protect Oh, and I guess White now's the time. The next um, where's Doctor oh, yeah, Strange? Sure. Where's Falcon? Where's... He's in a different galaxy, Doctor Strange. In a different universe, a different reality, a different, yeah. uh, in a different realm. Or a different timeline. Or or maybe he's pulling together all the timelines and turning them the color red and blue and oh. making a big tree. <laughs> red and oh, blue. Nice. Uh, very Time true. is purple. <clears throat> but no, there's there's not even a... Usually we get the throwaway line of like, oh, they're busy, but we don't get anything in this film for other Avengers. Not even when the Earth Real is about bad. to be destroyed. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um... Oh, uh, and and again, this is an important detail. Goose has been brought aboard Saber. Mm. This is so important, it's unbelievable. <laughs> like, it's so important. But uh, um, anyway. If this were a Telltale yeah, game, it would be like, the game will really remember game this. Will remember that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'd step onto Saber with the cat, and then you get the notification. The, the game is saving. will remember this, <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. what I Checkpoint. Do? Did I do something uh, good or bad, <laughs> or what? I remember, Meme, you, you really wanted to... Because now we're at the montage of them testing and learning their powers. You were really... You really wanted to talk about the... the them, like, the, 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 the jump rope thing, yeah, right? Yeah, because it looked like... Uh, it looked like she was jumping in front of nothing, and then they added a jump rope. Like, not even, like, that they right. CG'd, but there was, like, footage of a jump rope they added behind her. It was, like, the fakest jump rope jumping I've ever seen in my life. Um, oh, which, by the way, that jump rope thing further confirms that when they switch, they sort of switch to the orientation because it switches to the character holding the skipping rope and then the other character obviously not holding it and doing the, the jumping. There's no way that you could sink. It would be so disorienting that there'd be no way that you could possibly sink in any way that's, you know... I don't... Uh, you know what I mean? Like, no, ma no yeah. matter... I don't know how much training you could do to be reoriented to, like an entirely different sort of like place and perspective um and and being in perfect sync but uh, they want to imply like ah oh, see they're growing better as a team they're getting their power level is expanding i just don't buy it but no you know nothing of note there um but then this is of note we're back on saber station the power is it's going floopy mm. um partially because of the um it's it's there's there's like pulses emanating from the jump point because of these new unstable ones it's causing problems but as they're looking around, they find, like, a strange alien egg. Um, they don't know that it's an egg, but we might as well just say it's, like, a strange alien egg sort of, like, in, in aboard the ship. Again, this is really important. This is so I, important. It's crazy. We were talking earlier about, also, like, phasing in and out of the movie. I think I did do a little bit of that because I remember when they have it in, like, a tank where they're studying it, I'd just seen RoboCop 1 and 2 back to back. Uh, well, rewatch one, uh, watch two for the first time, I think. And it's a neat movie, I recommend it. But there's uh, several pieces of imagery of brains in, um, in, in like tanks and stuff. And I actually thought it was a brain for a bit. I was like, why do they have a brain? <laughs> like, what's, why is Nick Fury <laughs> studying like a brain? A brain? Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> a little bit like a brain, but no. I, well, it was... I, I would, like I said, phase to get it out of the movie that I was just like, what's, where's this going? And I just, for a moment, was just entertaining the idea of like, are they going to put the brain in the machine? And... <laughs> yeah. Is that going to solve a problem or something? The, the first time I re recognized that that was a thing was in the tank as well. And I, it was so random and like just a complete non sequitur. I thought they were setting up a different movie in yeah. the movie. I didn't think it had anything to do with this one. <laughs> yeah. I noticed what? it right away, but i it's still very random. Like, what is that egg doing on the ship? Oh, it's oh, such well, a big payoff. Well, yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you just lay eggs? Like, no animal would lay <laughs> eggs randomly across a huge area where they couldn't protect them. Oh, and also... I don't know. I, I feel like there are animals that would. There's probably... <laughs> I'm not well, there's, all, there's, there's animals that eat their own I'm eggs, I guess, ready. you know? So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not ready to make that um, call. Something that's worth noting is, because we'll we just cover... Because Fury starts examining it in the in the little thing. 
There were there were aliens on Saber. One of the guys says he's like 300 years old. So there's a bunch of aliens here. Nobody recognizes Flurkin eggs. No, oh. but they do know Flurkins. They know Flurkins. They know Flurkins enough to rate them as high risk and terrifying critters. But they don't know what a Flurkin egg looks like. Nobody on no. there. Can the no. flicking egg be analyzed? Basically, just like they got nothing. They're just like, mm. yeah, you can't put it through like a ultrasound. That would be that would be incredible. You can't just like scan it and clearly see that there's a cat inside. Well, we have to remember as well. They're so far ahead of us in terms of technology now. Like it's absurd. They've got like seven different sources of tech that's centuries ahead and shit. It's just like Earth should be in a fucking utopia at this point. Those are my Pretty fucking much. tax dollars. At yeah, work get a right ultrasound there. already, losers. I'm like legitimately upset at how insanely incompetent they are. Like, at least NASA NASA gets to space, you know. And these guys <laughs> allegedly. are allegedly like, private companies. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So, oh, um, Lord. which which brings us to something I really don't have much to say. So, <laughs> you know. The, they travel to Aladdin. Carol says she's famous there because she helped the prince with a legal oh, issue. Um, and then we get a really, really long musical sequence. How, how it's did how did really it long? It? It's fucking gratuitous. Yeah. They're getting their money. Does Disney I guarantee you it's cut down. Cats? I guarantee you that's a cut down scene. There was more of it, and someone at fucking Marvel was like, maybe don't have the singing sequence be ten hours long. Maybe just go for the ten minutes. The other I... singing sequence. <laughs> there probably Why? was more than one. Why? Well, yeah, we have we already we already had one. Well, because why the people there... on the planet they they speak in song. That's why. Why they? Their <laughs> Which is not is song. It's not as intuitive to me at all as different languages because they just speak normally, but with like a yeah. melody to it. That's it. Well, they yeah. still speak English. Yeah, it's it's so it's English. But then we establish, I mean, I know I know it's in the future, but like we establish that they can be bilingual. They can they can actually like learn it's the same language. Learning. It's the joke. <laughs> yeah, like, it's that's just... like that's something that like that's a comedy thing. It's not like an actual you're not like it's not a serious movie joke. That's a comedy movie joke. It is, yeah, because and... well, jokes are meant to make sense. That's partly well, what's funny. Teaching any of those fucking song speakers how to speak you know, speak the other language would just be, yeah, just do it, but don't sing it. <laughs> like, it's... This, this is the same movie that includes genocide. Oh, yeah. They have a lot of those in Marvel <laughs> these days. A lot of genocide. But, if it's against, but it's against the scrolls, so that is a comedy. It's not... If it's against the scrolls, it's not genocide. It's pesticide. Oh. Rags, you should run for president of Earth in the Marvel Universe. I have a very. I hope, I hope they're Fury one issue voters because damn, I ain't got nothing else. I just really hate scrolls. Okay. And that's all you need. For all you know, your entire family is scrolls in that universe, rags. So maybe you'll learn to love them. <laughs> not possible. Scrolls don't See, know what love is. See, I'm not offended that there's songs. I'm I'm offended that there are lame songs. This is not going anywhere near my Spotify. They could have given me at least a, a good song. No, don't they don't even want to be there. They don't even want this song. They just threw it in because some exec wanted it. You know, they, they um, threw it in because tell. cats. Remember cats? You guys yeah. know cats, right? It's, this it's is the song yeah. for cats. This whole this whole sequence is again it, it it sort of is exemplifying why I really hate Marvel's interpretation of like space and science fiction. Look at how wacky they are, except they're all people and they all speak English, and it's all pretty legible. And everything's normal like the, the, except the singing. Society, part. like all of the structures, feel like they're reminiscent of like Mediterranean. You know, like all of the build, everything's really clear and understandable and comprehensible. But look, zany wacky, they sing and they they talk in song. I just think but... it's so lame. Hmm. And, and of course, um, the fact that the, you know, the, the music and the lyrics aren't interesting either. It's just like, oh yeah, it's pretty bo pretty boring music. And the three and you can... uh, sort of modes we're on for Kamala's just like, oh, this is kind of neat and fun. Uh, Captain Marvel is just like, this is so awkward. And then Monica is like old woman mode, where she's like, oh, this is neat. Ooh, and she's walking yeah. around like really badly dancing, like, eh. And then when she gets there, she's like, seems tired. I was like, how old are you, man? <laughs> We're in your thirties. You know, <laughs> All you did was walk. Like, yeah. 
Ugh. The whole thing is awkward and lame, and I got nothing to say about it. Well, really, I would also say it's cringe. You know, get that in there as well. Cringe, it's very yeah, cringe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The, the only, basically, this sequence lasts for longer than it, it's too long. Um, how long it should, does it in the file? Like seriously, I, how long does it? I don't last? know how long it lasted in the theater. I don't know. Um, in the theater, it was my guess was ten longer. minutes, but it was probably a lot shorter than that. It just felt longer than that. It probably oh, it feels long. Yeah. Ooh, it feels um, long. And yeah, so basically, the only takeaway is that uh, you know Carol meets it's Prince Yan, and she's princess of this this place, and she basically says, "Oh yeah, like Darben's coming, and we need we need new battle worthy suits because I don't well, have them." <sighs> but that's not well, true. Um, Captain Marvel has her suit. Monica doesn't, and uh, uh, well, no, wait. Monica had her saber suit, which I guess is not a superhero suit. Um, Kamala doesn't have hers, but Carol does. But we need, but you know, we really need these new battle worthy suits. It's not for merchandise. What does no that way. mean? We really don't, though. What does we it mean? We really don't. What do they uh, do? Destructible. They don't do anything. If anything Except one like, of them has a super scarf. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, but um, I mean, it's, it's basically just for merchandise. And remember, also the the whole bilingual thing. Like they they have shit they need to be doing. We don't need to be dancing and singing and doing all that stuff. We've got like to. Oh yeah, that's probably worth mentioning, lives. right? They assume oh, yeah. that war is on the way, and they're like, "Let's sing!" Yeah. Ha -ha. Yeah, they're... Hey, now here's something. Here's something to consider. This is jumping. Uh, well, we were, we already covered the. Uh, so, the the armada the the Kree armada comes from Hala through a jump point that directly takes them to Aladna. Uh, meanwhile, like you know, names so close to each other. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the the Marvels, this little team, they had to go through multiple jump points to get to Aladdin. Was there really any reason to think that they would make it before them? Really? No. They, knew a, like they, they knew a shortcut. Well, it wasn't a shortcut. It took more jump points to get there. Well, I, yeah, I guess... but it was those jump points were much shorter. Oh, maybe, but, Frank. Maybe they're still sucking the air out of that other planet. Oh, no. Even though they had left, they just and and uh, the, and they came back to to finish the job or something. Um, there you go, makes sense. Well, yeah, because we we have to accept that there was enough time for Darth Ben to leave Tarnax, go to Hala, and give her a speech, and then get the Armada ready to go. Eh, you know, okay, whatever. But but I mean, the timing is still just as they get ready with their new battle worthy suits that look truly terrible. Um, they look. I don't awful. know how everybody else feels, but these costumes are pretty bad. They are yep. shit tier costumes. Just like, put on, ju just put on a t-shirt and jeans. Which is, mm -hmm. is kind of lame because I think uh, I think that Captain Marvel's costume that she'd been wearing up until that point in this movie is like kind of good. I, th I think it's like a good uh, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's uh, whereas the, the new ones like really washed between out. the three it's of them, very, uh, you got tacky, dull, and overdesigned, which is impressive. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yeah, it's All kind of an flavors. incredible They were just, yeah, they don't, they don't look very good. Um, but the, the timing is so convenient because just as they are, just as, as they have their conversation to explain to Prince Yan their plan, that's when the Armada shows up. Mm -hmm. Just that. What perfect timing. And basically, oh, this is their plan. Their plan is to ambush Darth Ben when she, like, comes to meet with, uh, Prince Yan, which is already a big assumption. Like, why would she do that? Why wouldn't she just take the resources? Why would yeah. she go down? Imagine yeah, they picked the wrong planet and they were waiting and setting an ambush. <laughs> <laughs> they were just waiting and waiting and waiting. Their army pretty funny. is just waiting. They're a lob system, by the way. Is just singing afraid. Yeah. Yes, that's right. They sing. <laughs> they're just like, oh, they're coming. It's <laughs> so stupid. It really is. It reminds um, me of the fucking get... Black Panther water drums. To <laughs> it's like, what the fuck. <laughs> Don't there are times you. where I want to see alien cultures that are very different from ours, but usually when it's pragmatic and war related, I want to see some fucking pragmatism. I don't want to see. Yeah. We got to like sing. With war, man, we got actual lives at stake. We got to. Yeah, we can't be flowery and oh, sing battle command. No, we all have to fucking get shit done. Mm hmm. Ugh. But no, that's, you know, uh, th this is something that's also said. Carol says that they want to keep their, you know, unintentional switching to a minimum. And and that and that the plan is going to be that Carol and Monica are going to try and get the bangle off of Darth Ben, and I guess Kamal is just going to hang back, sort of, and uh, yeah, why and, not? and yeah, like I guess that's their plan, which again relies on Darth Ben going down to, like I guess feign diplomacy before stealing all of their resources and dooming them to death. Um, but she does; she actually does go down with her uh, Kree soldiers. 
to uh to meet with him and, and i find this particularly funny um she tells she tells prince yan to kneel he says no and she immediately tries to kill him with the hammer <laughs> <laughs> and then just the negotiations time, were short monica jumps in the way and tanks the blast and absorbs it all just oh, in wow. time what Obviously. a hero and, I guess that's something she can do. Also, just just to give to paint everyone a little bit of a picture. So, um, I fucking hate anything like military related in uh, in this world, and kind of in Star Wars too. Disney just can't do it. They they need to hire a consultant, or just anyone who gives a shit. Um, but the warriors of these two nations, th this isn't a science fiction race. This isn't like they they don't have guns or anything. It's just the king in front with his not armor. And a bunch of people behind him in like, like, like ball masks, and they all have spears. Yeah. And then you have the bad guy, and she's up front, the leader with her hammer. And then she has like two rows of people behind her, and they have their spears. And that's, that's the that's that's it. That's the invasion of they're gonna be fighting. They no do... one has a gun. No one has armor. They do the thing Weapons of like a bunch of people standing in a vague what looks like maybe formation and move apart when like the leader comes through and that's as far as they'll go at pretending these are militaries. So like that looks kinda like one, yeah, sure. Also someone in chat just said the it's guy like who plays is a hobby for these these science fiction, these like entire yeah. cultures and civilizations. Like, man, Novacore had their shit together. Yes, God they did. damn. Yeah. They like um, I could but that was in Guardians of the Galaxy when it was good. Someone said uh, Prince Yan's actor spent two months filming this, so they must have cut down the musical planet oh, by a it's, lot. It's obvious that they cut it down dramatically because what again, that to feels? jump, what to spend two months that's working bad, on a man. film to it, find it, out the part that would get me is if you cared and you put loads of work in, and then you know that's going to be lost to the annals uh, of time. That's gone. I mean, I guess we. Well, I mean, it's the same, I guess it's uh, the same, but not as pronounced as like the fucking Warner Brothers movies like the new one, the 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 Wile E. Coyote movie that's now just gonna be locked up forever. It's like, damn man, everything is God and nobody gets to see it. Yeah. It's gotta suck. I, I don't know because if you know it's gonna be awful, you wouldn't want it to be out anyway. Uh, be like, that, oh, well, I mean, I every, that one wasn't because every... of that though, right? Not it was it was just again the the whole write off thing. Apparently yeah. it got uh it got it got tested really well. It tested very positively. Yeah. So I'm guessing they just thought it wouldn't make money for whatever reason. But I don't know. I kind of like the idea of a Wile E. Coyote movie. He's like he, he's one of my favorite Looney Tunes characters. So he's great. Oh well. He's yeah. just down on his uh, luck, you know. The the fight happens, and yeah, basically the only reason they came down is so that there were people on the ground to fight because there's no reason to because the Kree have air superiority, as as far as I can tell. It's like they have which a, means they, they win they, basically. They which means they, that like really gnarly yeah. AA that you show to us. Um, yeah, you're gonna not uh, any or not alcoholics anonymous. Um, <laughs> if, unless you don't have that and really show it, I'm like, oh shit, yeah, they've got the this air power, this air force. They're gonna fuck you up. It's just it's just bizarre. What the fuck is Darth Ben doing? Like, you just go to the other side of the planet just and drop, the open the portal up in the ocean, in the ocean. Yeah. Why, why, why with the pretense? You're gonna kill them all anyway by destroying this planet. Like, why not just take it? Yeah. I without, know. without anybody knowing, or go to a planet that They're has not gonna... no people on it. I just love the idea. It's like, submit oh, to me. Way. Let me steal your ocean, and then I'll be gone, yeah. Miss Chill. And it's like, I... um. I know. I know. It's no. just she's a clown character because, of course, you know, motivation is she's trying to target all the places that. Which is which is funny that she's surprised that Carol funny, would yeah. try to intervene in her uh, plans when she's <laughs> and she can with ease places. defeat her at yeah. any moment. We do discover that's the case. It's only at the end that they allow Captain Marvel to defeat her in a fight. Uh, of course, but um, yeah, but but, but uh, well, yeah, because in this fight you have a two v like Carol and Monica two v one her and lose. Yeah, you know, that is, she slams the gravity yeah. hammer down and blasts him away. And it's like, dude, Carol. Nearly beat Thanos when he had all six Infinity Stones. Oh, don't remind me. But, but, yeah, but this is the Universal Hammer. That's true. And the Quantum Band. And this is Darth Ben. Yeah, Ronan didn't so, know what he was holding, this man. Is, this is Darth <laughs> Ben with the Quantum yeah. Band and the Universe. And the Universal <laughs> Weapon. <laughs> so really, oh. and, you know, it's no contest. Oh, and, and really this, part, this part's really weird. So Prince Yad tells Kamala to use her scarf as a weapon, 
And then she dispatches of several <sighs> enemies with the scarf. This is one of the, this happens all the time in these movies where we say this to chat and I'm like, I know how it sounds. Maybe you're only half listening from over there. Someone's listening to this while crossing the street or no, just, it's just worth sitting repeating in a chair. Just sinks in. Yeah, this is one yeah, of those sorry, ones where it's like reminder. you have to go like really slowly because it's just yeah, so, so hard to smaller. believe. So Prince Yan tells Kamala to use the scarf that's with her costume and she grabs it. And she starts swinging it around and dispatching of several Kree soldiers with the scarf. Yeah. Mm. And it, it's not like a simple thing. She doesn't use it as a mace or she does it first. She doesn't well, then she get up behind him and like choke head. him with it. Yeah, yeah she wraps yeah. around someone's head and forcefully pulls him off balance as if she's got super strength because she's like at least a foot shorter than him. And, and it's like it's, the, it's We're not the, making fun of it by cape. saying it's a scarf. It's called a scarf. It is a scarf. It, yeah, it's he a, says it's a scarf. The scarf. It's a long, yeah. thin yes. piece of cloth designed typically but, uh, to wrap it's, around it's, one's neck to insulate it. It must be magic. It. it has to be magic. It has to be magic. Technology. Yeah. Or like it's it's like the cape in Doctor Strange. It just like wants to kill. That's why it's red. <laughs> yeah, it, it wants. To it I, just wants to fucking kill. I'm honestly it still when it was created. convinced there's something I missed because I just I just don't get. Uh, I remember seeing this it. Is what I, was I think like, it no. was. This is why I think I think that this is an instance. This is what further baffles you because it's like well we need to find a reason for Kamala not to use her powers for some time because. We, we, we don't want to deliver her to Darth Ben just yet in terms of a plot revelation, so how can we have her participate in the fight without using her powers? Oh, magic scarf! There we go, problem <laughs> solved, we got it! Give her a sword! Give her a He has a sword! A have, her, have her helping civilians get to safety. Or you could yeah, have exactly. her spotting for Captain Marvel and yeah. Monica, telling them where to no, go. she has to fight, she has to punch and, and jump around. And then she just starts using her powers anyway. <laughs> yeah, she does. Well, she just decides. Which, to by use the way, anyway, incredibly irresponsible and unethical. You don't know if you're about to kill yourself or prevent Captain Marvel from saving someone. Exactly. What if Cap What if Carol was like helping somebody who was falling into the ocean? And you switched and like, why would you do this? Though to be fair, this is jumping ahead a little bit because after Darth Ben uses her gravity hammer to shoot Monica and Carol away, she like walks back to her ship. Yeah. Which must have taken a couple of minutes. Yeah, right? she's walking Where pretty are slow. Monica? <laughs> yeah, Carol and Monica are just nowhere to be found, and she's slowly walking back to her ship. Where are you? This is the worst uh, plot device ever. The switching back and forth thing. Oh, it's, it's a terrible idea. So, it's so bad. So bad. It was, a, it was a terrible idea. I don't know what the conceptually it sounds stupid. Um, I don't see it as like an interesting pitch at all. It just seems dumb. And then of course the way that it's employed is incredibly stupid. Well, um, I think they would, probably yeah. went from the end backwards. So I think somebody thought about the fight scene at the end and thought this would be really cool for a fight scene. Mm -hmm. well, let's like make they're a movie switching line. all over the place while also all attacking. You know what? Also awesome. I think you might be right. Maybe somebody did the previs and they were like, yeah, can we like make the movie this? It's like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll figure it out. And then they didn't. <laughs> and now they're going to lose <laughs> They <money>. never do. <laughs> um, so, th so this is, by the way, this is when we really start to see them not listen to their own rules. So like... Monica is flying over to Darth Ben and begins fighting her by using her powers. And while this is happening, Carol is flying around blowing up Kree ships. They should be switching, but they don't. Oh. Nope. And then they eventually Oh, sorry. Swap. Uh, like, worth mentioning, too, that Captain Marvel should have won this in a minute at maximum. Oh, of course. Yes, in a minute. She she can fly at light speed. She's indestructible. It should have been over. But they, they swap. Uh, like the, She's like, oh, tag me in. And then they swap in. And then Carol starts fighting Darth Ben, and she's using her powers. And then Monica, who would have been switched up into the sky where Carol was, flies in and like kicks Darth Ben. They're both using their powers. They should be switching, but they don't. Again. They keep breaking I, I, like, their own they, rules. Yep, mm. they do. Um, and then, yeah, they keep fighting. And then, yeah, K uh, Kamala decides to use her powers and gets... She gets teleported onto the sh onto the ship, and this is when Darth Ben sees that uh, Kamala's got the bangle. It's like, oh no, oh no, this bum, is bum, really bum. bad. Um, and then and then and then yeah, Mo like Kamala runs away onto her little like platforms, and then it switches again because Carol is flying. It should have switched instantly, but it switches a little bit later, and then Carol flies in and it tags perfectly. It doesn't it doesn't reorient it to where. You know, it looks like Kamala would be flying and then I guess plummeting again to her death. Shouldn't she? She be? She she should be plummeting to her death, right? She would have been teleported into space. As far as I know, yes, sky. she should be. Or, or, wow. And, and well, Captain no, Marvel never. Captain Marvel never cares. She's a, no. no. She she never should... There's no acknowledgement. It's not even like she does it by accident. Which like I can. 
I can forgive them like using the powers just out of instinct like oh shit yeah. you know and then they use it and but then there's that acknowledgement and then they have to go like we got to go find kamala or where was i where was i like that that scene that's a scene they never had that they right. that you'd think they do where they switch and they need to get there and it's like oh shit where where am i from here and she has to find out where she is and then how to get there but like maybe in the city you could have done that where they, they swap and like oh shit i was in the i, I was at the Rec, the, the the town rec center, and I need to go to the bowling alley. And the, where was like that? And she has to ask for directions or something. Like she tackles Darth Ben, and she doesn't at all think wherever I just was, that kid is there now. Oh well. <laughs> nope. Hopefully, hopefully she's okay. Yeah. And she. And oh, by yeah. the way, that's the other thing. She seems so ready, as though she is being tagged in by Miss Marvel. That wasn't a planned one. That wasn't no, planned. It wasn't. Um, because Monica told her to get out of here. And so she started creating the platforms, and then Carol tagged in, and and it, 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 like it wasn't tagged; it was just that they were using. But yeah. again, if, if Carol was flying around somewhere, then it should have instantly happened. As soon as she created the first platform, they should have switched. But it takes a little bit. There's a delay for some reason. So um, it's funny how slow she's traveling as well. When we know she has access yeah. to hyper speeds, I'm not even saying like I understand not using light speed in combat necessarily, but why are you using like super slow speed? Yeah, why is she going so slow? She can travel real fast, but no. Nope. Like, because what it happens if, if if Carol flies into Darth Ben at light speed? Darth, Darth Ben's dead. Well, the, the, like, there's, there's moments where Darth Ben's avoiding her attacks by like doing normal avoiding. You know what I mean? Like she yeah. goes to punch her and she it moves. Be possible. Like Shouldn't you can't dodge someone who moves faster than you can react. She can travel at light speed, but no, she because when when she tackles her like. Carol grabs the bangle and 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 Darth Ben's like, haha, I'm absorbing your powers. And then she blasts Carol away. Um, and then she creates a new jump point to steal all the water. It's like, good job, guys. This should have been an easy KO, game over, you win, mission accomplished, good work. But uh, no. <laughs> nope. No. They lose. Inexplicably. I the power levels are I don't so understand. out of yeah. Movie. I just, yeah. Th there's the we've gotten this before a lot. It happens mostly during combat. Um, you just have no idea. You can't imagine what's going to happen. It, everything is to the whim of the writer, the whim of the mm -hmm. plot. What needs to happen, what you actually see doesn't matter. You know, it, it's like the the plot armor or stormtroopers not being able able to shoot or military showing up. You're like I have no idea what this means because it's not going to be logical, which is makes me wonder why why am I watching it at all. Just tell me how it ends. Real difficult to have stakes when anything can happen. Pretty much, yeah. Like, this is the most stakeless movie ever. And also when your Le characters Mignon, are overpowered not. as fuck. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, Cap the, the problem, it's one of the problems of writing Captain Marvel is she's too, she's not too yeah. strong, but she is so strong that she it makes it really She basically has difficult. no limits. Nope. Because even, even Superman is vulnerable to kryptonite. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That's the com like that's the comparison everyone makes, but like I was about to say, but he has character. There's no acknowledgement. The film doesn't even know who she is. Like it doesn't seem to acknowledge anything about who she actually is. Because a lot of people would say that she's blank, which I think is certainly as of this movie, we've got plenty of uh, sort of patterns we can deride, a, a, devise a character out of her, I guess. But it's just like there's 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 so little um, I don't know to care about, I guess, because she's kind of like we said about the assassination. She's kind of a monster. I mean, she's yeah. a she is responsible for like uncountable lives. It's it's insane. But like, she's not aware. Nobody else is aware. So nope, no one cares. She doesn't and that's, care. Except that's Darth a key Ben part of Superman, <laughs> and that he holds Whoa. back his power because he doesn't want to kill the person. And so, if he he gets beaten up a lot at the start of fights because he's holding back because he doesn't know what you can take. And then over time, he'd be like, okay, I can I can release myself a bit more until I eventually beat you. Whereas because she doesn't care about killing them, she should just like splat everything the first time. Yep. There's really no yep. reason to hold back with Darth Ben. Her plans entail the deaths of many, many, many people. Um, yeah. I mean, she doesn't hold back on random Kree soldiers, but like the actual person orchestrating one of the another no annoying tropes in these uh, MCU films is when they kill all of the goons, but then let the villain live. When the villain was the one who was ultimately and principally responsible for uh, all of the bad stuff that's happening. I just, I don't get it. And I mean, and again, to reiterate in terms of the power levels, Quantum Band does not make you stronger. That's something that's like, 
At, at the very least, in terms of, like, Kamala's interact, she has one of them, and she has her light powers, and she, it's explicitly said in that show, no super strength. So, she doesn't have super strength. She's a regular Kree lady, and apparently is able to take on Captain Marvel, who nearly beat Thanos with all six Infinity Stones. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, and then, um, as this is happening... Because of this new jump point, there's like a big old pulse in the Earth jump point that disables the Saber Space Elevator and half of its escape pods. So yeah. very rapidly, very <laughs> rapidly, the situation on this space station has deteriorated to the point of impending catastrophe. Why don't they have enough sca escape pods for the people? That sounds like a uh, really bad idea. I don't well, buy this. Arthur Why wouldn't they have ships that are on Earth disabled. that could help them? No, that no. The only people who work for Sword are the people on the Remember station. Remember the ship in Captain Marvel, where they just leave the hangar in the nineties and go up to space. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. Earth now have a bazillion of those? They probably. Why should, not contact but... Wong or Doctor Strange with them? Oh my God! What a <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. We don't. We have, we don't, not, well, you don't even need Wong or Doctor Strange. They have portals because they have portal well, technology. Yeah. Well, the thing is, right, you don't magic. even need all because the 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 um the the Kamataj has a bunch of you know trainee. You can send one of them. They have know, some like a trainee idiot sort of thing. janitor over there that probably could save <laughs> them all with a portal. <laughs> but no, America Chavez. They're in so much trouble, all right? They're, it's they're, so but, but like, ridiculous at this point. That doesn't mean the world's up, completely unraveled. We're not up to the cats yet, though. We, we still got <laughs> we still got drama back on Aladna. So oh. because uh, Kamala and Monica get back on the ship, and uh, and and then they they start flying off, and Monica nearly crashes the ship into the ocean because she doesn't know how to fly. And while this is happening, really? Carol's just casually destroying all of these Kree ships. She just keeps flying through them. She's into- how did she lose? can Darth Ben fly through a ship and survive that? I don't know, like, when we were watching, uh, when Mahler and I were watching this in the theater together, um, I had said, if she wants to kill him, she can just destroy the ship. She can just fly through the spaceship and blow it up. Yeah. She doesn't we've seen her to, do countless times in both this film and other films, so it just don't get it. Yeah, there's no reason to have a confrontation of any sort. Fly through Destroyed the ship like you did Thanos' battleship and all the other Kree warships, just do that mm -hmm. and be done with it. Why does she fly into the? You know, I'm getting ahead of Oh Captain, My oh, Captain. No, that's, that's possibly that's the most cringe. Ooh. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, we oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dead Marvel yeah. Society. Yeah, oh, so I think just for reference, guys. That. Basically, uh, Kamala looks out the window and sees Carol killing all of these people, and yeah, she <laughs> says, "Oh Captain, My Captain." Um, that is yeah. horrible. Um, <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> <sighs> uh, it's just like, okay, yep, yeah, yeah, Captain Marvel, she's so cool. She was with the Avengers, remember that trailer? Doesn't that... Tony, Steve, That's Carol. Right. They, showed the, they showed the Avengers, some of them, and then they showed her. So that's, Doesn't that illustrate I mean, that's it. what Kamala actually, like, why she found her inspiring is just because she's powerful and can kill people? I mean, yeah, it's a little bit awkward, right? Yeah, what hero to... work have you done? The, the, well, just, this is what know, I mean. I, I don't mean to be, like, sappy or even soy, but imagine she had said that in response to Captain Marvel, like, negotiating some kind of, you know, treaty or taking care of one little girl who didn't quite make it to, like, the ship. She goes out and gets her. And that's what when, when she uses a word like that. Or, or a, a appreciation like that. Instead of blowing up several ships with soldiers in it. It's like... Yeah, I guess you know that that's. That's an interesting to think about, considering that in in a lot of ways. I, I, now I can't really speak for the comics, but as as the way she's presented in this film, I mean, one of the one of the like general rules for like a lot of the the writing for Marvel characters, as Stan Lee's talked about, is the idea of like you know they're just regular people in these extraordinary circumstances, and they got like normal, relatable kind of problems, and that like a lot of what it means to identify with them is to identify with their flaws. Meanwhile. Fucking Carol is basically she's indestructible. She's super duper powerful. Purported to be perfect um, morally and physically, yeah. and, and it's just like, oh yeah, no, she's so cool, but she's pretty antithetical. To oh my god, you know, of, I was just thinking about I mean? like, um, imagine Captain uh, Kamala had said it when Captain Marvel had a chance to like take her revenge on this this evil villain or save like a group of people who were stuck in something, and then I was thinking like, oh, you mean like Walker? In Cat Falcon the Winter Soldier, <laughs> Chad, Chad, Chad Walker, Walker yeah. yeah, he dropped the shield to save the people. And oh then my God! Holly Morgan now jumped on him to stop him from saving them. Uh... <laughs> oh, John Walker. They even An played the music. hero. One An of the last hero. heroes of the MCU, John Walker. <laughs> 
But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we're our captain, my captain, but not said for Captain America, John Walker. No, it's for Captain Marvel. Oh, wow. Fucking um, hell. But, that, yeah, so she, she gets into the ship, I guess, to help them fly it around because they don't know how to do it. And um, they're being pursued by several Kree ships. And I don't know what they're going for with this beat, but, like, Carol's like, oh, I can lose them. We can't leave. You know, we can't leave. And, and Monica's like, well, no, we gotta, we gotta get the jump point. We gotta spawn a jump point here in atmosphere, because I guess you can do that, to get out of here. Uh, and then a bunch of missiles get launched. Well, and it's I assume like, no, that's no, no, not no, a problem, no, because the bad guys have been doing it. No, but, but, yeah, but they've been doing it. Jump. Yeah, not only is yeah, it unstable, but they're doing it with right. the band. Is Miss Marvel right. has to press a bunch of buttons to open it? Exactly, which doesn't. Uh, make that, sense that's to that's me unprecedented. Either. We've never seen that. Yeah. They, they've we've made it clear that. jump points are located in places. You yes, can't make remember, your own jump points. In Guardian two, it was okay, a, it was right. difficult. They had to fly through a quantum asteroid field to get to the jump point, which they they couldn't just spawn a jump point in front of the ship. They had to fly there. But they just spawn one. Yeah, in they made them. that up. <laughs> Hell, yeah, that, that's made up. But yes, they, they they spawn that, and then they get spawned into like a, a wheat field on I well, guess some other planet. Just to slow it down, right? Your Captain yeah. Marvel, your motive is I gotta protect this. This planet's important to me, very important to me. And failing here is like failing Hala. And she, she's very personally, emotionally, and everything invested in being here and fighting back the the Kree. It's like okay. However, Miss Marvel and uh, Monica have both decided we have to get out of here because if she gets her hands on that bangle from Miss Marvel, we're doomed. Like she's uh, just I think gonna... I know where you're going with this. Uh, maybe I don't know. I, I'm sort of thinking out loud while I'm explaining this because I, I, you know, the people have asked us before, how do you do this? It's like find out what everyone's motivated for. It's like okay, so Miss Marvel overrules Captain Marvel's choice and activates the jump point in front of them, and so they're going through. It's like. Captain Marvel can avoid traveling through this. She can go back, but she can also get out of the ship herself and go exactly. back. Exactly. Yep. Just, just leave. It's like, okay, you two leave. I'll stay. Yeah. There's, there's, there's really nothing. And to be honest with you, that sounds like the thing that she would want. You guys get out of here. Don't use I'm your powers. I right. will take care of this. Yes, because I can do it all by myself. I don't need team. Teamwork does not and make you know the what? Dream work. That's true. Yeah, she doesn't she need you guys. You guys will yeah. make it worse if you keep switching exactly. with her. So really, teamwork isn't good. Teamwork is teamwork bad. Is bad. It <laughs> Literally, in this movie, it's just an inconvenience for her. Yeah, she's more powerful than these two combined. So switching back and forth is just standing in her way, basically. If she wanted to help anybody, really. Yeah, you yep. know what? It's kind of the fucking anti-Avengers, where in Avengers 2012, <laughs> them teaming up is the reason they win. Yeah, in this case, them teaming up is the reason why they lose. It's so fucking yeah. lame. Avengers. You can't write. Stop. Well, I mean, one of the challenges that they have is that all of the characters in the Avengers have unique skill sets that aren't replicated by other characters. Um, Imagine like, if I, someone... What? Oh, yep. Yeah, it, no, finish it. No, no, no. Go for it. I mean, imagine if someone switched with Tony mid snap. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just like, losing it, all. it teleports fucking dead into the suit. <laughs> He's just like. <laughs> 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 oh, no. oh, oh, oh my goodness, no. I, I kind of thought about this when we were watching the movie. I didn't say anything because my brain was fried, but I was like, man. Oh, well, it's a good thing that this the the whole yeah the spacey transition and uh, just the whole mechanics of it. No, just imagining Ned getting transferred. <laughs> I am Ned. Um, but now now we're in the wheat field, and this is this is this is our big dramatic second act low point where the characters are going to resolve their problems and really kamala is like very much a third wheel in this situation she's just sort of standing off to yep. the side while uh, carol and monica and their grievances and so carol explains supreme intelligence ruled the kree for a millennia uh the supreme intelligence you know led them into the war with the scrolls and carol thought the only way to stop it was to destroy it but all it did was make everything worse because she's a dumb uh, she fuck because she's a fucking idiot. Uh, she believes herself responsible for causing the Kree civil war. It's how she got the name The Annihilator. And Carol never wanted Monica to see that version of herself. She thought she could only come home after she fixed the problem. And this is why she never came back to Earth. And that's fucking crap. It's also a that's lie. bullshit. And it's not true. So it's... It, 
but isn't that incredible? It's like, ah, see, that's why she wasn't there for 30 years. You guys were wondering, like, you were wondering with the Eternals why they didn't do anything about Thanos. See, we got a good explanation ourselves. Um, she didn't want to be perceived badly by her, uh, adoptive niece. That's why she didn't you, come back to Earth. You know that when she was in she Tony's thinks... funeral, uh, Fury was like, you, you gonna go see Monica? And she was like, hmm. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah, I don't want to be perceived badly by. Yeah, you. I don't want to. Be, you know, because obviously Monica would know about that thing that I did in a different galaxy. <laughs> it's like what? What? I don't. Uh, it's absolutely baffling, and I I want to have just a slight sliver of sympathy that I think the writer of this was saddled with solving that problem. I don't think they made um, it up. Uh, yeah, uh, so. I think that this was generated across the other Marvel projects where Captain Marvel had abandoned Monica and you have to make a reason for that. It's like, uh, but, but why? It reminds me of like, why did why did Black Widow never acknowledge or do anything with her family? And it's like, well, why have you made me solve that problem? What the fuck? Why have you made this well, yeah, the case? It's, it's the same with the scrolls, right? That Carol abandoned the scrolls and that's now just a problem that yeah. you inherited. But at the same time, while I don't think that there were really any good explanations for her absence, this is a really bad one. Yeah. Um, was well, a lie. The same way that, well, it was, yeah. Uh, uh, like, the earlier explanation if I was mentioning... you're gonna lie, make a better one. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the, better, the, the better one was, um, I was too busy. You know? Yeah, I had to it, deal with that, at least it was, well, I, I just had to, you know, when you were there, like, I had to stop civil wars and incursions mm -hmm. or excursions and attacks and whatnot and Thanos' army remnants. <laughs> Like, if you were there, you would understand, you know? It's if not, you had to see the still, suffering, well, but, but I had to stop yeah, it. And the point is, that's still not good enough for her not being there for, like, Ultron or Thanos or anything like, well, you is, know, for Thanos the Infinity War. But it's it's something. You start to pick at it in terms of, like, trying to redraft, and you're like, okay, if she was to say to him, be brutally honest, I kind of... I, I don't think you can say she forgot about it, because it wouldn't really make 100% sense. But if she did say, like, you just... You, you know, you, you get the, the back and forth that's simple at first, like, oh, I was busy, or I was doing this, or I was, I was fighting that, and it's like, oh, this is this solving this problem, getting it. And then she can throw back at her, like, oh, busy singing and dancing, getting married, busy, and, and quote another thing she knows from this adventure. And then her just, you know, Captain Marvel being like, you're not my world, you're not everything to me, you don't matter, like, that much. And then in the background, you can have, you know, Miss Marvel, who, Captain Marvel is her world, she's inspired entirely by her, like, almost exclusively. She can just be, like, seeing this unfold and be like, oh, shit. And then Monica can be like, my mum was my world, and you left her. You left me. Like, you, you, you you're you, the, like, the reason you're even where you are, the re you, you've always, like, you know, it's to do with our family, and it's like, you, you can't say we don't, even, like, like, are you not human anymore? Like, that sort of argument that goes back and forth and back and forth, and this was the time in the timeline where it, the conversation ends badly. That's what's supposed to yeah. happen. But That's how instead, stories go. <laughs> it's supposed to yeah, end badly. Like, this is not a. This is not a satisfactory answer. Like you. Well, yeah. Like you're just shit. Like because sometimes the the terminus of a conversation is just confirmation that the other person is shit. But instead, the com the conflict is resolved in about ten seconds. You, you Monica <laughs> says, oh, well, uh, you, oh, you sorry, have it yeah. end with Captain Marvel saying, "I don't need you to." Like you, you both fucking suck. Don't use your don't use your powers. Let me solve this. Fuck you, basically. And she leaves. Mm -hmm. That's how that scene's supposed to end. And then you have like, you know, Fury is probably the one to do it, right? To give Monica like what she needs, and then to also give Captain Marvel what she needs, or someone else. You know, whatever. It's just, you, and then you they team back up, and then the third act happens. That's, that's what happens at Avengers. Yeah. Like, it's, it's what happens here when Monica's just like. Oh, uh, you know, you think I cared about that? I just wanted to see my aunt, not Captain Marvel, and then and then that's it. They're resolved. That's they it. They're, when, they're done. When Brie Larson starts to smile, I was like, no, seriously? Yeah, you've resolved like, it? Really? You've resolved it? You, you've only brought it up, like, twice, and now it's resolved. This is not how you it's write It's ridiculous. Story. It's happened so fucking fast. Because people would be like, yeah, stories happen faster than real people. It's like, not in seconds. No, <laughs> no, but this is, it's so like, you're at your second act low point. This is when, if you want to go like the most conventional way you play it, where they do break up. And they it's don't a, it's like a second each other. act. It's like a it's, second well, act remember, stumble, like, but you don't fall well, from it. Look, well, it's like Shrek, right? You know, when when the team splits apart, uh, the second act low point after. Yeah, you get a Rufus Rainwright song, thing. and everyone's still yeah. sad, and that's, what's going to happen next? Shrek, by the way, a blueprint for good stories. It is a blueprint for good stories. That's like a normal second act low point of 
things go badly and they're split up and then at the climax they come back together whereas here it's like oh you know i i felt bad no i didn't even care about that i just wanted to see you well i'm uh, you know i'm glad you're here now the end of the drama the end of the conflict right then and there yeah and they're like more unified than ever when we have no reason to th think that would be the case it sucks you know um there's been a lot of appreciation for a particular scene in Avengers 2012. It's been sharing around on Twitter recently. It was kind of strange. I was, uh, I've been sending some of them to Fringy, being like, I don't know what's going on here exactly. A lot of people have been <laughs> talking about the scene. And like thinking Morpheus, about it, they're beginning to remember. It's, um, maybe it makes sense because it's that, that is the, the scene I'm talking about is with all the Avengers break apart, uh, gradually. Yeah. And you have a, a heavy, extreme amount of reasons and layers for why all of them kind of distrust and hate each other. A lot of it based on their own perception rather than what actually happens, which has benefited from us all getting their own movies so that we know why things happen, but we understand why other people might see it differently. Of course, um, you know, just stuff like Cap thinking that Iron Man only does everything he does to have money and fame. Um, Hulk not trusting anybody because he's been brought in to be released. Nobody really respects him as a scientist sort of thing. And then uh, all of them being on edge with Hulk because they don't know when he's going to pop off, including like, you know... Un, uh, un, what will be unbuttoning the uh, the safety on some of their guns like during the scene, and then yeah. Thor because he's affected by the spear letting out part of uh, his prior you know experiences in Thor one being yeah just being like you're all so fucking small like all petty, all this stuff is going on, and the camera's like spinning around we're dealing with all of it and then you know everything falls apart and they try to work together but they're bound back by the fact that Coulson dies and Loki's trying to prove that they're all pathetic and a shitty team and then uh, a lot of them prove what they were saying about you know there's the opposite of the criticisms that were given in that scene there's loads of stuff mm -hmm. that's like written in there and and it's supposed to be sad and drag you back down so then they push you all the way back up they even have it in the third act fight we have the second act of the fight low point where all the characters are yep. losing. It's, because um, the, the highs and the lows are a part of the storytelling equation. Yeah, they define each like, other. Whereas here, the lows are like... It's like a dip in the road. It's not like a valley, you know, of like the mountain, you know, soaring to the mountaintops into the deepest, like, trench and valley. It's just like, oh, it's like a little bump in the road. And then as soon as it's... As soon as you notice that it's gone, it's done. We're back to everything being totally fine and normal. Everybody's sure with each other. Sure, they had problems, but they resolved them pretty swiftly. And remember, this is like the third scene that actually deals with this as a conflict for these characters, and we're done. I can't believe it. I, I kind of can't fathom how shallow and thin the, the character it's writing like is it's in this film. It's like the checklist. Like, well, we, we talked about it. Like, we kind of addressed it, so that's it's done. It's finished. You see this across mm -hmm. really all the Disney stuff, whether it's Star Wars and... Dude, um, I feel like, I mean, it's like the Ahsoka of Madness, thing, like, well, right? uh, Multiverse of Madness is absolutely fucking awful in terms of its character work, but its bigger problem was that it had too many threads for, like, the characters in terms of arcs that it thought they were going on. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, man. Even with that said, it felt like it, 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 there's a greater quantity of character there. It's more, it's perhaps more contradictory, but there's a greater quantity. Here it's just like, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's so, it's so little. It's so limited and lacking. Well, someone said, no, they were just paranoid from the staff. It's like, no, that's what's so good about the scene. The staff just accentuates all the thoughts they're having about each other anyway. Yeah, these, are, these are all still true thoughts that they're having. Like, none of them trust Cap, S.H.I.E.L.D. at that point, because they've been revealed yeah, to like, have been using the, uh, the Tesseract. Cap doesn't like Tony. He thinks that he's arrogant. Um, he, he does believe that he wouldn't make the sacrifice play. And then we know that Tony is jealous of Steve from the relationship he had yep, with his father. Exactly. And exactly. Obviously... And and Bruce is absolutely upset about being uh, there. Yeah, he's, he, he makes that explicit from the moment we met yeah. him, that he's like, you're going to drag me from... He says in the scene, it's like, I was happy, yeah. I was peaceful, and exactly. you fucking ruined everything. Yeah. Yep, it's a great scene. <sighs> Meanwhile, you get like okay. it's like this, like the 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 conflict. I was ready for it to be critical of how they execute it. It didn't even happen. <laughs> I was like, no, it didn't okay, happen. there was no conflict. It was it's just like, yep, no, we're all good. Yeah, all right. Anyway, moving on. We still got plot to do. <laughs> Woohoo! Like, uh... I don't think it's just that though. I like you have to remember it from Disney's perspective and from the writing perspective. The, the they don't. This movie wasn't created purely for entertainment. There's a whole like set of ideas within disney of how this stuff can be written so they, they're kind of handcuffed in the stories they can do and if you see these people as like literally meant to represent people in real life there comes a limit on how offensive to the audience you can be because the people that like this stuff now see themselves as those characters 
So you can't really have a hero become evil because you're essentially calling an entire group of people evil. Uh, what? So it's like kind of like the the nature of like you're moderating. You have to moderate the content down. So even though you know there yeah. needs to be conflict, yeah. it can't be too bad. Yeah, like Mar the, the, Brie Larson said a lot about Captain Marvel that it was mainly for uh, so young girls could see what they could turn into. Mm. And then Miss Marvel is essentially the the Oof. living personification of that. So she's yeah, I mean, now the little girls watching Captain Marvel, and now you're actually representing real life people with your characters. So anything you do to those characters, from their perception, okay. you are doing to the audience. The easy so way Marvel to get around is that catering is catering to, not... to narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we already said little girls. You know, the, the easy way to get around <laughs> oh, is like <laughs> That's actually part of it. Don't have a big plot point be that she caused a civil war that ended millions of lives. I was Maybe gonna say, they didn't do a very good job. Just, <laughs> just lie and say they she was dusted that as her or something. Fault. As far as they're concerned, what she did was right. Like, uh, kill, no, no, killing no, no, the I, machine was right, it was their fault for the power imbalance that did it, and she's just upset that she couldn't convince them in somehow to be good guys. They yeah, don't see I think, her as responsible okay, yeah. for that. I, I, I think I, yeah, I think... And I think that their, their perception is, yeah, but she restarted the star, so any culpability is Yeah, gone. yeah. She, I was about to say, yeah, like they do them. portray her with, like, a sense of guilt and failure of that. It's like, yeah, but I actually think they probably think she's in the clear after restarting the star, yeah. so. She fixed the star, so all the people who were dead, it's kind of like the same problem with Endgame. <laughs> yeah, you brought everybody back. Never mind all the people who died in the interim. Never mind Wait, all the families the, that were destroyed, the nations that were destroyed. So all good, you brought them back. Their ashes can be bathed in sunlight now. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Like, this movie, man. Oh, <laughs> so now, now this is when they realize, oh, they're ta she's targeting all the places that I call home because this is all you've got for motivation for uh, Darth Ben is she wants to save the Kree. She's incredibly indifferent to the suffering that it causes and she really hates Carol. Yeah. That's, that's her. That's all she has. Um, and so now they realize they're going to go back to Earth to warn uh, Nick Fury about what's going on. And then... We cut back and we see that another blast of energy has um, has uh, emanated from the jump point and only 15 escape pods on Saber are functional, so not everybody on board can fit. Um, and then Fury's like, well, start loading as many as you can and then I guess we'll figure it out from there, which is not a great plan, you know, but I, I guess what are you going to do? You know the space elevator? There was like, I want to say, I don't know, 30 chairs in there? Yeah. Can we, can we just... At like least immediately start loading that. Yeah, uh, could, could we try a little disabled. harder. It's disabled. It's disabled by the pulse. Yeah, the pulse is disabled. The space elevator and half of the shuttles, the escape pod. So why hasn't it done anything to their like systems? Oh, well, it has. It's, it's, it's all one of those. It's one of those on floompy floomp. No, but like it's everything's working. Monica's occurrences. like using the computer and shit. Like that's, why? That's true, but there's a little bit of floomp. There's a little floomp. All right. That's no, true. Yeah. Well, a gee whiz, There's I guess they're real lucky it didn't wipe out their systems entirely, huh? Well, Correct. they're lucky it didn't wipe out the uh, the life support systems. Could you imagine if they came back and got on board and everybody was just dead? Dead, on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Including, just, yeah. Loaded it. And like the Flickens mm -hmm. got desperate and so they just started swallowing the space station. Yep. But, whoa, well, well, so now we're here. Now we're finally there. Fury, he, 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 he opens up like a chamber to uh to to get like a fire extinguisher and he sees goose she's inside and there's a bunch of alien eggs that begin to hatch and then you've got the the, the little baby flurkin cat aliens oh it's um, so cute there's a little cat them. there's a lot oh, no. there's uh at least a dozen of them i at least a dozen no more sorry dozens there are do there might be a hundred like there are so oh many God, of these this alien cats. Oh my goodness there's dozens so hundreds oh no um, dozens and, and, hundreds. And, so, just can't stop. and so now now you know the, the marvels are back on and basically fury tells yeah. carol that his plan is to have the flurkins eat all of the saber personnel herd the cats onto an escape pod and then release everybody down on Earth. Herding, um, herding so, cats is literally what they have to do. Well, they, they make oh, the they joke. Do oh, the we gotta, they make the joke, but then they successfully do it when it's impossible. But but you know, to just to just lay out the coincidences, just for total clarity, if Goose weren't brought aboard Saber, but had instead remained on Carol's ship, hundreds die. If Goose wasn't pregnant, hundreds die. If Goose only had one baby cat, hundreds die. If the eggs hatched an hour later, hundreds die. So you're saying they were a little uh, bit lucky. 
It doesn't even literally hatch in his hand. Like, as he, he picks one up and it just hatches. Well, so he opens the container and then it hatches. It's like oh, okay. right when he needs to find out, they start hatching. Yeah. So you stack all that on top and it's like, all right, so that's just a that's just a good old break in uh, in continuity and logic right there. That's that's too many coincidences. This is oh, one wow. of the things I think was severely cut. I reckon the, the space station had a lot more plot on it that they just... I think Because this right. comes out of nowhere. I think you're right. It's, uh, we get like one, we get like maybe 30 seconds of total screen time, like dedicated to this, establishing this as a plot point, and then it happens. I could totally believe a lot of stuff was cut here. Wait, so for clarity, it isn't the eggs that's causing the, the, the space station to, to, um, no, it's the pulses. No, no, no. It's the pulses from the, uh, the jump point network being flumped. Oh, okay, so this is even worse than I thought, because I thought, oh, the alien egg, oh, look, the bad guy left something behind. Why is it hatching into a cat? Wait, it's what? A... <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. It's a lot. This movie. Yeah, and then, and then, and then, yeah, we get to the part that we've already talked about at length of the alien cats running around eating everybody while... This is my while, favorite scene. You know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's so, how... like... Where do you even begin? Yeah, like, it's, the uh, most, it's the most. This is the MCU. Welcome. This yes. is what it's become. <laughs> yeah. We used to have like we were, like we had Avengers and we had Guardians of the Galaxy and you know we the had Iron Man, Iron Man One. And, yeah, and now Civil look, War. They had Spider Man Homecoming. Civil War. Oh. Man, look, I, all I want to do is re-edit that entire scene with horror music. And then it'd just be yeah. like, oh, the, the Flurkins don't actually have a portal. We've made a horrible mistake. Like, well, no, you see, you see, well, yeah, it's, it's like we said, imagine if one of them buffed up a skeleton. It's just like, oh, <laughs> shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoops. Well, so the question, of course, is they do have to eat at some point, right? They don't just... Because there's people in the yes, chat being yeah. like, wait, how do people get in there? It's like, we have to kind of ignore that. We have to just be like TARDIS logic, fantasy. Well, I think, I think what that says, well, in Captain Marvel... You know, buffed up the Tesseract. It's like, yeah, but it didn't buff up the Kree soldiers at eight. The Tesseract is like indestructible. Yeah, I wouldn't expect to be able to digest the Tesseract. Yeah. Well, yeah, how can it metabol? But yeah, we we just have to assume that I guess the Flurkins are like some Lovecraftian monsters that teleport them to like some different dimension where they hang out and then get buffed up eventually. What if it's the Nor dimension and oh. like Miss Marvel is pulling the energy from these people? Oh my God. What, extracting their life force to yeah. create this construct? She doesn't know where her power is coming from. It could be well, horrific. She's never been to the Nord dimension. Maybe it's filled with flurkins. That it, flurkin bellies, like the, the way, universe is comprised <laughs> of where it sends them. These people, some of them are like screaming and being trapped yeah. by Miss Marvel with yes. her powers. I want to be the person that just fucking jumps on her and be like, yeah, eat me now. Like, uh, Got you, bitch. Like, you're the one who's been trying to fucking, like, quarter everybody. <laughs> like, and then she'd be like, no! And it's like, yeah, how does it fucking feel? Because this is the thing. There's no consent. I know that sounds a little silly right now, but, like, it's just that a lot of characters get to continue planning things and being the ones that'll go well, on the functioning. Well, family, they get yeah. to not be eaten, even though they, they're not but, saber like, personnel. This they is... can't operate any of the equipment. They're asking you to be eaten by a newborn Lovecraftian creature in the hopes they can save your life, when you could be like, I'd rather just take my chances. Um, yeah, I'm not interested I mean, in this. I don't know what this is. But you don't they're get a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're screaming, and they're... And it's meant to be funny, obviously, of like, oh, look, they're screaming. But the, but the thing is, like, it, they, they want it to be like, oh, it's the juxtaposition of them being cute cats. It's like, yeah, but they're not, though. They're, like, crazy. Like, they're not, because they're crazy alien Lovecraftian monsters. So, like, there is a fundamental disconnect of, like, yeah, you can say they look like cats, but they're not. And then I guess they'd be like, yeah, but that's what we're going for. It's like, I don't know what you were going for, but it didn't work. And um, from well, and, and no character. Perspective, Go ahead. From her perspective, she, she's just, like, letting kittens swallow up people but how does where does she get the guarantee from that they're gonna be like oh fine there i guess like, her these logic are new would be the, the, the cree that got buffed up and she's like yeah well there's no difference between them being a baby flurkin versus a fully adult you know flurkin there's no difference you know well, that's it, the thing, it, right? Yeah, but... Seeing them buff up anything does not confirm safety. It just yeah. confirms yeah, that that guy got buffed up. up. That's all. What, what if the Kree guy gets buffed up and he gets and it's like, oh, you have cancer, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, you're, like, well, you're yeah. covered in the digestive yeah. juices of a fucking yeah. alien creature. Like, who knows what that fucking does to you? It's, it's insane. Like, that it infects you with some crazy illness or something. Yeah, yeah, like that. You're getting all these people and getting them, and I guess it's like, oh, well, yeah, but would you rather die? It's like, I don't know, maybe. If maybe, I'm yeah. By love I have no idea. Like. <laughs> 
I don't <laughs> like, know. Like, what if it like, what if it's like a sarlacc pit in there? Well, yeah. If someone said like, what would you rather fall and be killed by the thing, the the sarlacc, the rancor, or like drown? I'd be like, fuck me. Pro the I guess the well, thing is the if, least you know, likely one. <laughs> we're talking about Lovecraft. What happens if when you get swallowed, you get bombarded in your brain with things that destroy your conception of reality? Yeah, and then when they get buffed up, they're all like floopy. And then your boss is just like, don't worry, I've decided this is what's best for you. It's like, and it's like, are you gonna get eaten? Nah, I'm the boss. <laughs> I'm, I'm too good for eaten. that. That's why this yeah, is so funny. Because they had Miss Marvel, who's the like the happy-go-lucky character, and she's walling people off. She's picking yeah. up oh, yeah. and pointing up at people. She takes the most glee in all of this, yep. and she just I, comes across as like a yeah. serial killer. This is why you shouldn't uh. take sixteen-year-olds on these types of missions. They don't, they don't have fucking brain capacity to well, decide this. Yeah. You imagine the trailer. You remember the what makes her a her or. If they had that trailer and it cut to like Captain Marvel getting all these cats and getting them eating people with the screaming, you know, like that in the trailer. Inspiring. Like, hero, like, <laughs> <laughs> like maybe oh, just right here also, in my sack. What I'm wondering about is like, how do they manage to catch all these little kittens? To, is there um, anything to get like them to cats? The you know, because... is there anything like real cats? They're yeah. not going to do what you say. I mean, right after this, I went home, and I was trying to catch my own cat, and I hit, she was running away, and I hit the, my head on the table, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I have a concussion, even now, so. This might be the movie. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, the movie wasn't real. I have never been s the same since, but still, <laughs> I, there's so many kittens. Yeah, Slot. it's like, I think it might actually be a hundred. Like, it's it's dozens, at the very least. And yeah, oh, you and can the herd them in there. Yep. Yeah. Well, my, because my the implication is they're using right cat after it. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's a weird, weird coincidence. <laughs> yeah, and they're using the world's smallest cat toys to herd them as well. Like, that, a kitten might go after it for a little bit, but you're going to want to get, like, the big boy stuff out if you want to uh, get, like, a hundred kittens to chase it. Like, you know, ugh. Mm. They could have made and, uh, this scene more horrific by like, well, we've got to lure the cats into the pods, so why don't we stuff it full of food? And they're just like sh shoving the people into the pods to get the cats to eat them all. <laughs> and then the people are terrified inside the pods because they think they're going to escape, and then they just get eaten. Mm. Oh yeah, use a laser pointer. Why? Why didn't they use a laser pointer? That's a good point. Oh yeah, maybe maybe like you can get Monica to do that with her little laser powers. That'd be a meme to do, yeah. That would be a yeah. meme of her, like, flying overhead and just directing a laser, like, uh, and they're not listening or whatever. That's okay. Um, but hey, there's only, like, 20 minutes uh, left of film. There uh, is. We're getting real Ooh, close yeah, to the end. That's right. Um, Every yeah. second that goes by is a second closer. Yeah, uh, so now, I got a... I gotta, oh, oh, yeah. yeah um, so, so, so this is about the point in the theater, because my alarm went off at... Because I have alarm, an alarm that goes off at 10 and I saw a late night showing and i was like oh 10 wait i this is meant to end at like 10 20 but this feels like we're only like at the second wait the film's about to end and i and so and suddenly i was like wait we're, we are firmly in the third act what the hell happened this was the point where i was like did, did we did they hit the skip button am i am i missing something what is what is what's going on we I feel like we, we've got about four other uh, we've got like another hour's worth of film to get through before we're supposed to be here. <laughs> so there's, yeah, a there's, there's a bit of a pacing problem here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Amongst yeah, other things. Way too quick. Because now the we're that... at the point. Uh, yep. Yeah. And the fact that we get over emotional beats, like the important emotional beats so fast, it just makes it even more like just feels unfinished. It just feels incomplete. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, because there's an, there's a Kamala like says goodbye to her family, and it, it's kind of like a heartfelt moment where her mom's like, "Oh, you know, you were chosen for a greater purpose, so you have to go." But I'll never let you go. Do you understand that? And it's like, "Oh, yeah, that's kind of alright." But it's only like twenty seconds long because I gotta get moving. You still got plot to do, you know? So <laughs> I gotta get going. Um, and uh, so because at this point, Darth Ben, oh, sorry, Darth, I keep fucking up. Darth Ben <laughs> opens up a jump point next to the sun, which immediately begins consuming its mass, which, as was mentioned earlier, this means that the gravitational pull of the jump point has to be considerably greater <laughs> the than the, the sun. sun. 
than the sun. I don't which know, I, man. I don't know about <laughs> that. Like everything on your side is gonna get yeah, sucked. It's gonna get sucked into through the into the sun. But it's fortunately, just, she's gonna be like, wait. Oh, but also, oh, yeah. yeah that's for, fortunately, the uh, not, yeah. But that, but I guess that's what's happening. And so, you know, now Fu Fury, as as this is all happening, it's like, do you think it's a good idea to you know take that second bangle to Darth Ben? And Kamala says we need both of them to close it, which is like, do you? Do you? Um, you know she that? used one to open it, uh, but I guess maybe you need two. You'd use one to uh, close and, it, I would oh, assume, and, right? Of course. This is funny because she doesn't use the two to, to close it at the well, end of the movie. Wait, so how does how does um Darth Ben close them? She uses... So, I don't know that she does close them. I think she just leaves it's them just there. Into yeah. perpetuity? They're just open forever now? Seemingly. There's not much yeah. said on that part. <laughs> They're not good. Mm -hmm. do, do they even have a throwaway line like, oh, we went back and closed all the other ones or something? I mean, I don't even know. But if, if if she closed them, then that would fix the problem of the instability of the jump point system. Right. So they have to stay open. Man, that seems like a big problem of having a giant hole over your own planet right next to the planet <laughs> whose resources well, you plundered. Picture being the um the Kree on Hala. It's like the portal that gave us the air is still just open. They're still screaming and scroll bodies splatting into the like your world. <laughs> then there's another yeah. portal over the other side with a big waterfall coming out of it. And you're like, I guess that's good. We're getting we're getting our water. And then she's like, Don't you worry, I'm about to open one that's gonna bring through a sun. You'd be like, What oh god, what are you <laughs> okay. what, what does this mean? What's okay. gonna happen? Man, um What a hero. You know, the, if she if she if she uh, enacted this plan a little bit earlier, then the Eternals and the Celestials might have had something to say about it, taking away the the star. You know, where then, is Doctor Strange? Where is right. Doctor Strange? Yeah, where is everybody? Um, I just find it funny that she doesn't even use the bangles to close the jump point at the end of the movie. Like she doesn't use them to do that. She uses them for something else. So <laughs> I don't know. I just find that amusing. Yeah. Um. But then, as was pointed out in terms of the gravity, Fury's ship actually, as they're leaving, him and the Kamala's family and all of the cats, it does get dragged to the jump point. But then a pulse just happens to go off right as they're about to get sucked through, and it blasts them down to Earth. And just It's a crash right, landing. There's no call from Fury to Captain Marvel being like, whoa, whoa, help us, help us, where we're getting sucked in. There's nothing. He's just like, you know the vibe? It's the vibe of those family traveling movies where they're in a big truck with all of their luggage and like several kids and some of the aunties and uncles and the cameras slotted so that you know everyone's all over and the driver's just getting annoyed you know like are we there yet? yeah what's going on he's like oh geez come on everyone yeah that's like that's the vibe and it's fury is the dad on his fun little family vacation it's like how <laughs> is that what's happening when you're all about to die how? You and all of your staff that are in the Flurkins. You know, this is hundreds of lives at stake, and it's just kind of a fun, goofy meme. But fortunately, a pulse saved them. Just a pulse oh, that comes. Good. Good them. pulse. Good. Yeah, it's one of those good ones. That's yeah. very and, good. And, it, and then they crash land, and they crash land in New York because the only city that exists <laughs> on Earth in the MCU <laughs> is New York. New York's yeah, real big. They were right above New York. That's where they land, right in New York. New York is the center of the. <laughs> And not only, it's not like they land in some random place in Brooklyn. It's like they land in Battery Park or something. They right. land, yeah, they like anyway. fly right past the Statue of Liberty. I was about Liberty. to say, yeah, yeah, they may as well have just landed on the Statue of Liberty. Fuck it. Exactly. Just, weren't they renovating that thing, by the way? Or did they? Oh, yeah, the Captain out, America well, one. Yeah. I guess they changed yeah. their mind on that for some reason. <laughs> that poor statue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, they crash land and they were okay. And then and then the Flurkins just start vomiting up the, uh, the Saber guys. Um, but this is this is what I find really interesting, and I don't know what they were thinking. Like Fury looks up at the sky, and the sun like visibly dims. <laughs> it's over. It's <laughs> over. It's Biden. It's you so, finished. And yeah. wow, that how insanely powerful must that portal be? Just so quickly through such a time, like the scale of the planet compared to the little opening is like yep. it is and in remember, infinitesimal. The sun is a million times the size of Earth. And then you've got this tiny little portal that's probably no bigger than like it's a the Honda size Civic. Of, it's what, the <laughs> it's, size of a Dacia Sandero? It's, yeah, it, and, and meanwhile it's like absorbing enough of the mass of the sun to make it visibly <laughs> dimmer on Earth, dim. in which case it's already Jova. It's over! It's, it's it blighted. Would... Yeah, and you well, know, I'll is, say and, it. And, um, if, if someone's mm -hmm. going after your sun, uh, as in like our sun... If, Feel like that's a call to all Avengers at that point. That's kind of like a emergency, yeah, that, you might that, say. 
that's an Avengers level threat for sure. Yeah, we need oh, our that's sun. What the sun... Oh, and as people pointed out, because fucking light speed isn't in it, that's eight minutes yep. delay. So if it's getting yeah, dimmer but... from Earth, there's eight minutes of extra sun extraction that's already Yeah, yeah dude, imagine the, yeah. the Cree home world right now. They're just seeing like pieces of light just <laughs> flooping in. Like what? Turn it off! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a there's a sun. They're right all just incinerating, there. like it's incinerating. A, it's got there's a hex yeah, like, burn mark. Because I guess we're <laughs> <confused>. <laughs> so they would disintegrate up, like next to the star, but maybe she accidentally put it over so, the city. <laughs> it's a. Sarah Connor and T2 when she's having that vision. That's yeah. all the Kree. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the, the death <laughs> Oh man, fucking hell. I just find it funny. Why would you show the sun visibly dimming? At that point, you're already done. It's setting the I mean, stakes, it's not like bro. if you close the portal, it's going to get brighter again. Well, yeah, it's not going to return the mass. <laughs> but, okay. And then, yeah, Carol flies up. Well, he's still the the spinning off. Die. Mm, well, on Earth. Just gravity's changed. Too. My yeah, eyes. That's right, yeah. The goggles if, if you're to announce changing it. the mass... <laughs> that's a good meme. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Carol flies onto Darth Ben's ship. And she says to Darth Ben that, you know, that, that you, essentially what she's doing will entail the end of the Kree and the end of the everything, I guess, presumably by destroying the jump point system. To which Darth Ben says, you took from me, I'm simply returning the favor. What is that response to what she what said? What does that mean? You took from me, so I'm going to take from you. Oh, it's a stupid, when, stupid to, logic. In response to her saying, what you're going to do is destroy the Kree and the universe anyway, so stop. And it's like, Yeah, but I'm crazy you know, and I, mad. I'm, uh, yeah, she is just crazy. Uh, so stupid. And then Monica sneaks up on her, punches her, and then Kamala switches with her, because I guess they synced that one, they communicated, timed that one. And then Monica phases through the floor, and yeah, now, now we're ready for our big final showdown, which is pretty poorly choreographed again. Oh, so they definitely like, use their powers at the same time. As an audience member at this point, you're just like, you should have beaten her ten times over. Why is this happening? Like, this is dumb. You like that okay. the um the money shot for the for this whole film of all three of them attacking her has Monica and Kamala using their powers at the exact same time and not switching. Yep. Isn't that just so <laughs> funny? <laughs> Come on, you can't expect I, them I, to I, remember these things. It's ridiculous. I just find the power levels absurd. It's a three on one. Captain Marvel alone instantly vaporizes Darth Ben, but all three I mean, of them together. Very few creatures in the universe can even like put up a fight against her. I would imagine Thanos almost lost, and he had all six Infinity he had Stones. All stones Thanos, yeah. if he just without, had a couple stones, without the Infinity Stones, can one v three Cap, Iron Man, and Thor? He beat. He beat. He beat Hulk the, pretty the, easily. It was absolutely nuts in terms of power scaling that she's now, like, Captain Marvel was just the top tier. There's nothing that can stop it. And then it's like, well, Gaia. Gaia. Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know, and ignoring that. Maybe Monica, because she's impervious to harm as well. Well, I guess that's more of a stalemate. I don't know. I guess, yeah. But, well, it's just so that she can match her, I guess. But I, I just don't see how it's possible. She's just some Kree lady with a hammer and a bangle that doesn't give her strength. Um, and yet she does pretty well, honestly. Um, but then this it's is where it weird. gets real. This is where it gets real confusing. Like she gets blasted, hits the wall, and debris falls on her and stabs her. Captain Marvel wouldn't be stabbed by falling debris. What? Yeah, no, so she'd I be just, killed like, by it, Freaky. Uh, How does Captain uh, Marvel? I'm referencing cut her Ab. Oh, oh yeah, that's Ab. right. That's right. In Multiverse of <laughs> Madness, yeah, that's right. She did get cr no, but it's because Wanda sucked up the uh, the powers. Yeah, okay? she she did space yeah. suck and it got her cosmos mm -hmm. or something. <sighs> But yeah, like, Dar Darth Ben's been stabbed, which, again, Carol can't be stabbed with just, like, regular metal, so... Yeah, and it's no, so the, funny. The power levels are insane. Because she, like, goes, oof, the ooh, the and then... Stabbed, no, it was, I, oh, thought no it, the I thought hammer. it was the it's hammer. hammer. It's not the hammer. It's, it's the not the hammer. It's the yeah. Oh. yeah. I thought it was it's the hammer, the, though, it, first time around. Because if it was the hammer, you'd be like, oh, well, okay. It's sort of, like, logical. Yeah, it's a special thing, I guess. It's purpley. Um, all right, and so this is this is where we get to some real fucking stupidity, you know, Ooh, just in case oh. we didn't have any already. Wow. Um, you know, Darth Ben is there, like, oh, you suck. You know, oh. you're the annihilator. You're the worst. It's your fault. The stars dying. <laughs> the worst. Which I, I, no, still, you I still, suck. I still you're don't understand. 
I still don't understand what it means that it's her fault the star's dying. But then, you know how it was mentioned that whenever Monica just says something science, it's just true? So yeah, this, is, yeah. this is what she says. The reaction in your son's core has slowed. It needs an incredible amount of energy to jumpstart it. And that's what you have, Carol. You can use your powers to save Hala. What the... It's so funny too because if if Carol had said would that would that kind of exchange kill me, Monica probably would have been like, no, no, you can <laughs> take like, a million. Okay. Oh, no, not now, even close. So, no, correct, go for it. correct me if I'm wrong, but the the temperature of the core of the sun is like a million degrees without exaggeration, right? It's it's, it's about it's a million. Uh, like 10, Ten million. It's a million. It's a oh, oh wow! So I was I was low balling at that. Yeah, it's a cartoony yep. amount of degrees. It's absurd. It's pro it's probably not real. The sun is probably <laughs> they probably made it up. I don't believe them. They they went too far this time. I don't believe uh, them. And, and then of course, when you move past when you move past yeah, so people are saying oh, twenty seven no, million degrees 20, Fahrenheit. 20, 20, 20, <laughs> Fahrenheit, which is million, sorry, which which is about fifteen million degrees Celsius. And and yep. of course, when you stack on top of that, the gravitational like pressure is. It, the center of a star is sufficient to fuse hydrogen. Like, so So basically, Monica comes to the conclusion that, yes, you, Carol, can tank 15 million degrees and the gravity at the center of a star and supply it with sufficient energy to restart its fusion process such that Can't it won't you, die. Pussy? <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is like... Which... Man, which like, if this is true, if this is true, because this hasn't happened yet, if this is true, Carol is, like, actually indestructible. Yeah, I, I, I feel like she is more powerful than Gaia at that point, but Gaia has her power, so... so what force exactly. could, in the universe could possibly, like, stop the Captain Marvel? She what is, could stop it if she like, can tank 15 million degrees Celsius and... Well, you could just... She can tank the, a the sun. If she was to sun. clash with the yeah. sun, she wins. And, and at mm. this point, we still haven't established... In the law that they're not they've stopped switching places because nothing has happened that would cause them to stop switching places at this point no no, no there, so you you would have to hope you just be like okay monica kamala i'm fucking serious don't use your powers while I'm, while if you do and unless you can tank a star <laughs> you should yeah. not use your powers um by the way, I was just gonna say, free. Imagine when they was sucking up uh, the the sucking first time to happen for the sun. Imagine fucking Icarus got sucked out of there. <laughs> That's an Whoa, Eternals reference right there. In, in well, the Eternals, all we know, you're close to the sun. He just he, go, oh, he goes whoa, whoa 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 and like gets pulled what? out. He's like whoa, what's going on? He ends up on fucking Hala. Like okay, I'm confused. <laughs> like, Mola, you joke, but that might actually be what they do to get him back in like the next. Uh, if they they probably aren't going to, but if they did, they probably would use that little they don't have the little money. loophole there. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> But, um, so this plan gets floated, and I get the impression as well that this was- I get the impression that this was a reshoot. I don't know, it feels like it wasn't leading to the idea of, you can restart the- 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 the, mm -hmm. the star, you can- so I get the impression that it was actually gonna be something different from this, but whatever. It's, um, they- they basically agree to do this, and it's like, oh yeah, for Hala, woohoo, I'ma help you up, Darth Ben, and then she immediately- She Betrays immediately them. grabs the hammer- and well, Kamala and Carol use their powers and switch so that Darth Ben can, uh, like, basically uh, trap uh, Kamala and you know, basically is like, oh, you, you, if you move on me, I'll kill her, which doesn't even mean anything because Captain Marvel can move at light speed. Yeah, um, and, and if they both use powers, she's already out. Switch. switch. But um, yeah. what I was going to say as well, just setting it up, like, when they defeat her, she hits the wall, lands, and goes, ah, like Peter Griffin yeah. style. They all immediately <laughs> switch from battle mode to, aww. Like, yeah. aww. <laughs> and it's just like, what? What the fuck's going like, on? Like, what? Like the Puss in Boots eyes or something. Yeah. It's like, it's, like, it's, it's, they're, they're even, they even have these faces of, like, like I think uh, Kamala is, like, almost shocked. Like, oh, what have we done? It's like I think you meant to feel kind of sorry for her, and it's like, dude, she just tried to steal the sun. <laughs> and the motive yes. was clear. She's just an asshole. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And because it's not even, like, a deep That's cut. It's just, plot. like, a little, little, oh, it's a little stabby stab. Stuff. Yeah, yeah I, that's I what I mean. She's like, like oof. Oh, you just emphasize again, you know, if you're like, oh, but Darth Ben's trying to save Hollow, it's like, no, she's trying to kill Earth. That's <laughs> she could just get some star that nobody lives around. 
But no, she specifically, she's, she just sucks. And it's like, oh, you know, it's so sad you who decided to do all this. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get the angle. That makes Captain Marvel care more about Darth Ben than she did about the scrolls <laughs> that she left on that planet. Yes. To That's a little bit, yeah. And then, of course, this is really awkward when this is all a ruse and she immediately tries to, threatens to kill Kamala. And then it's like, oh, well, you know, I, th what I find so funny about this is like, oh, yeah, I'll kill her before you can move. And then she takes the bangle, removes the hammer from Kamala's head, where, like, she was pinning her down with it. And then it takes, like, a good, like, maybe, like, five, ten seconds for her to put it on. Why didn't Carol stop her? Like, just light speed and stop her straight away. Do you wonder, do you wonder if it matches the thing that's going to happen a little bit later? Maybe she wanted this to happen. Hmm, interesting. You gotta uh, wonder about this Captain Marvel character. Because I was just, I was thinking as well. You know, like um, she's so conflicted and angry and trying to, you know, Darth Ben now. And then if someone could just be like, so either you destroy our universe or you kill this little girl. Do you ever wonder if you're the bad guy? Sometimes, mm, maybe. Just interesting. <laughs> it's something like to think about. Mm, something to think about. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What a great selection of characters on all ends. Uh, I this, like this, yeah. this, this next sequence is like oh, edited and plays out. Yeah. By the way, uh, Captain Marvel does it and Darth Ben does it, but um, in in Miss Marvel, I think it's like episode one. Like, oh damn it, I can't get the bangle on. It won't just, it just won't go. On. Oh, it unclips and then you clip it on. I see. That's like a, that's like a, they made a deal out of that in Miss Marvel. Yeah, and then and then in this film, they often just slide it. on They just and slide off. it on. <laughs> like, you, yeah, okay. you just put your hand, you 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 put your hand, you know, you clamp it together and then just put it on like that. When it it definitely was like you had to unlock it and lock it on. Yeah, the the implication of course was that it was it was kind of mystical to some extent and whatever. But it's like nah, you're like okay. Nah, you just kind of do it like this. It's all good. Which is, I, I, I find this next scene, it's just so weirdly edited and cut together. It's like, Darth Ben, despite having already opened up a hole that was already extracting the mass of the sun, she wants no. to use it again. Why? Because. Um, <laughs> she wanted because. to make it maybe a bigger hole or something? Can you be sure I she didn't guess? just want to die? Make... Ma uh, <laughs> well, because, yes, as, as was mentioned before, the, 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 the trailer... The trailers spoil it. Like, Carol tackles her, tries to stop her from, you know, doing the, the Wakanda Forever thing to make it activate. And she fails, and she activates it, and then she explodes. The, I mean, to be fair, that's still a good reference, but it's more like the Wonder Woman thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah, because it's the braces. Yeah, it's, it's Wonder Woman. Uh, she Wonder like Woman, and, and then she explodes. She just uh, dies. And, that's and I think, that's <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, many audiences were confused with this. It's like, oh no, the villain's got exactly what she wants. She's doing exactly. She's dead. It says oh. specifically in the movie that the braces allow you to control more energy, and that if you had to, you could control more energy. So doing it with one is what would kill you. So she yeah, should have like more of a buffer for energy, not I, less. Maybe she still doesn't have enough, and it just like I don't yeah, know. That's maybe it wasn't meant to be. That is a good point, because it's, the, the implication of the, the jump points and the way it's working is that her way is like a makeshift workaround that's unstable, and that the two of them together is the way that you cleanly create new jump points. But I guess all we have to conclude is that she's just not allowed to. Kamala can. She has yeah. some unique connection to it that enables her to use it safely, though they don't know that when they give them to her, which we're jumping ahead of it. No, but she, when she Marvel's uses it, ego. kills her. Nah, well, yeah. I just, it is pretty funny, right? It's like, oh yeah, the two of them are meant to be together, but if you try to use it, it'll kill you. <laughs> like, okay, and then it does, and she explodes, and it creates a, the, 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 the jump point, it goes real floompy, and it gets oh, real no. big and violent, oh, and then it, oh. it cr uh -oh. connects to like a different realm, a different universe on the other side. <gasps> Incursion! Um, okay. Yeah. Incursion they, they, time! They, <laughs> basically, uh, <laughs> they regroup. Um, on the they regroup on the ship now looking at this and uh monica says yeah she tore a hole in space time a different reality is what she says but i guess it's a universe is bleeding mm. into theirs now and monica again in keeping with her she just theorizes correct things with no information whatsoever believes that carol and kamala can generate the same amount of energy that created the hole direct it into monica and she can repair the tear yeah why not that makes sense. And Which... I thought they were being clever at this point because at first, uh, you have Captain Marvel brings back the braces, but she only gives Miss Marvel one of them. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, because she's just seen someone put two on and she doesn't want her to explode. <laughs> and then without saying anything else, like about maybe like two minutes later, gives her the other armband and they just decide to do this plan. And there's been no conversation about whether you can handle two, whether they're supposed to be split up. And it that them definitely something was cut there because otherwise you just give them a both right at the start. I genuinely like I want that one character to be here. Make it Jar Jar Binks if you want. The one character who's down to earth and sees her hand the bangle over and she pops it on, then just him go, You just tried to kill you. You're like, what do you mean? It's like you just that we just saw that kill she just she wants you to be dead. Like what what, what is going on? No, 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 it, it only works on uh Cree. Oh, okay. yeah, part of the, oh, yeah, part, of the part of the prophecy. Yeah, because she's connected to the Nord dimension, so it's okay. Yeah, I think that, we have to just accept yeah. that that's the, fi the, the film goes that far. It just says I'm the chosen one. It's like cool. Yeah, yeah but if they, oh, if they knew okay. that's how it worked, why only well, give her one bracelet to start? I would. I would. It's mean, about like, two minutes uh, before they give her the other one. We don't know why oh, they were separated. Yeah. Well, oh no, he means why did they just hand her her one and then hold on to the other one? Why didn't they just give them both to her yeah. straight away? They, just they have the conversation her. before they give her the second one, as if yeah, it's meant to mean yeah. something. Because right. I, I thought that was deliberate, but then it they never mention it. No. I, I also find it funny, it's like, you know, if, if two of them created the tear, then presumably all you need is the quantum bands to fix it. Why don't they try that? Just like use the quantum bands and fix it. Why would you need to have the quantum bands and all of Carol's energy redirected into Monica so that she can fix it? Like that's think just about Monica's ego, right? You, uh, you've just seen somebody with this amount of energy explode, and you're like, "Yeah, yeah. but I can take it." She's got <laughs> she had these arm buns, but I can just take it now. And she's totally right because she absorbs it and she gets all of this super energy, and then she says, "Higher, further, faster." Which, by the way, that's a lame. I don't. I don't find that a very interesting catchphrase. It's very lame. Mainly because yeah, there's no cringe. there's there's not alliteration carried through. Higher, okay. Oh, further, faster. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? It's just like, what? Okay. I don't know. It's just like, huh, all right. It was I just realized farther, further, faster. they missed out on some fun by saying like, you know, don't, don't give that to Kamala. She'll explode. And it's <laughs> like, no, Kamala can handle it. And then that person will be like, no, Kamala can't. Get it? No! Oh. No! oh my God. Can't. <laughs> Come on, but they didn't. Oh, my luck. We, that would have been the best line in the film from us. <laughs> never forget. Um, then, yeah. So they they give her the power, and then Monica can now survive the vacuum. I guess she flies across space, <laughs> goes onto the other side of the tear, and starts shooting lasers at the hexes that are appearing, like in the fabric of reality. To make them like repair. To pull it. Yeah. She like tries yeah. to go on the other side and pull. She's pushing on the other side when you wonder if she could pull from. I guess not. It's but, bullshit, you know, is what it is. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, so she's doing that. And then Carol's like, yeah, it's working. All right, come on back. And then Monica's like, um, no, I can't actually. Um, and then she said something really stupid. She said, I always knew I wasn't coming back. And it's like, um, I didn't what? need that. <laughs> That's what she said. She said she always knew that this was like a one way trip. Um, and then at this point, Carol jumps out and tries to fly towards her. Clearly not moving at, at light speed. Because she doesn't slowly. make it. In time. Pretty slow. She doesn't make it. Like she she doesn't get there and it's like, oh no, I missed you. Oh, I think you were saying Mauler, it's like it's as if she was pretending that she was actually she, trying to reach her. Yeah, when she comes <laughs> back, she'll be like, Gosh darn, I tried so hard, didn't I, Kamala? I really tried. Uh, You'll tell people Kamala. that, won't you? Oh no, uh, I tried. Uh, if only I could have gone faster. And Kamala's like, Yeah, you, you weren't going uh, that fast. She's like, Nope, maximum speed that was. Yeah. Maximum speed. Eighty yeah, kilometers an hour. <laughs> maximum speed. Um, Gosh. Yeah, now uh, I guess oh, Monica ain't coming back. Oh, damn it. No, Monica's oh, in a different geez. universe. Oh. She she saved the world. The terror has been fixed. What do you think's going to happen to her stuff? Oh, a hero. I hope Monica oh, is trapped wow. in another universe, he's, and, and he's Carol's going to cause an incursion. Oh, yes, I guess. Oh, 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 yes, yes that's right. Him the cosmos to destroy. Oh, but maybe, <laughs> then again, maybe maybe Loki in becoming the god of time with his tree of green. He'll protect it. Uh, Timelines Loki became the god of time? Yep. Yes, he did. He became the god of time and weaved the fabric of reality into like a giant tree that's now the multiverse. It's a big tree. <laughs> and all of the- uh, Shut up, it makes sense. No, all they're of the not multiverse the fuck you mean. <laughs> they're gonna well, be so confused. Right. That, is, like, that is funny. There's I people in chat who are now. like, sorry? And it's like, yeah, we've referenced this a couple times yeah. this stream. Tr Loki became a tree, what? 
Loki yeah, becomes a time tree. <laughs> Yggdrasil, <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, let's pretend it makes sense with Norse mythology. Why not? Let's do it. Yggdrasil. <laughs> 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 so, so wait, you're telling me that the god of mischief became the god of time? That what, explains so I mean, fucking I mean, much. I mean, by the way, that was so depressing. I think I mentioned it when we were watching the episode. Is wouldn't it have been kind of awesome if when they had their final shot of Loki sitting there, he smiled menacingly? It was all part of some <laughs> grand plan. <laughs> Why are all of these abilities the long game. To become the master of time? But no, he's a good man. He sacrificed himself and killed many past versions of himself by traveling back in time and supplanting their consciousness to Groundhog Day his way through trying to solve all of these problems before. Becoming the new he who remains the Pre god of people, story. People barely understood the Marvel. So don't don't drop all this on him now. No, no, no. We're, we're nearly done, by the way. We're so close <laughs> to the end. We're so close. Um, Help me, so God. This, I can taste so, freedom. By the way, I'd say Help this is the, this is the clearest Help. evidence to me of reshoots. On Saber, you know, Fury walks in and one of the staff says... The planets are expected to make a full recovery and a team of scientists have been sent to Hala to try and help the people. It's like, oh, full recovery with no no atmosphere and no ocean left. <laughs> okay. How do, are they just going to magically generate water and air? How can they recover? Scientists. Maybe the so AI awful. came back and so the sun works again. <laughs> It's like even if you if we lost one percent of the water on like Earth in the in the oceans, that would be like cataclysmic, right? Because um, it we'd alters have everything. Ocean levels. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, one percent less water. Not that the oceans are not just that they've like that. There is one percent less water on Earth now. Oh, like for every one hundred. You're just removed. Of water. Well, on it's the, just, uh, you know, no matter whether the water. Cataclysmic. I don't know, but it would definitely maybe. hurt. It would. It would be. Uh, it's going to have extreme knock-on sure. effects, of course. But um, it's yeah, a lot yeah, more than one percent, obviously. It's more than one yeah. percent. If Hollow's oceans are being regenerated, it's more than one percent. Oh, it'd yeah. probably um, exaggerate anything, at, like any current issues. So if you're so, near a yeah, desert, exactly. you... it, it would probably mess up like ocean currents. It would fuck. It's got to because the, the amount of water that is on Earth is consistent. Like whether it's ice or unless I'm totally wrong, right? I, th the, I the believe it is slowly evaporating. I, I think okay, every planet loses okay. some. But very slowly, we're talking like slowly to a degree that's like barely possible to count over the course of years. Slowly compared to a big sucky tube going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree. Big, big sucky tube. Very, very big tube. Sucky tube. Yes. But, uh, sure. but yeah, they're, they're going to make a full recovery. But... Because remember, we just left Aladna and that was it. We never went back there. We never double checked. It's just over. We're gone. Are we supposed to we assume no... that Aladna, Tarnax, and Hala are all just fine? Yes, they're gonna make a full Everyone recovery. Acts like they're fine, He's, so I it, guess that is what the other guys, funny thing. The guys, yeah, that's what he says. The funny thing about the way this works is that you've got three planets, that's presumably equal size and need for resource. I don't know; they're never gonna tell us. And it's like, how do you get a full planet's worth of water and air when you have two between three? And then you have to wonder, like, well, yeah, but where did Hala's go? And it's like nobody knows; it's just gone. They lost all their water and air. Nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows. Now, now, Oh, uh, oh, so, oh, fuck, sorry, I accidentally skipped, we, we skipped past Carol reigniting the star. She did that. She you? flew over to Hala <laughs> and reignited the star. She, Why like, not? flies over Hala, goes to the sun, flies through it, and the sun just becomes brighter, it's regenerated, all of the people on, um, on, uh, on, on Hala are like, ah, oh, yes, sun, woohoo. And Carol was looking over her good work, just like, yeah, I did it. And then she flies away. She fucking restarted a star by That's flying into it. That's a baby. Even she's if you want to say that she'd survive, her suit wouldn't. Right? No. Well, of course not. But, yeah. <laughs> well, now she's got super, like, Same invincible clothing. Superman. Same problem with Superman sometimes. But but yeah, like, Carol is the strongest person in the MCU, other than Gaia. She can she can tank a sun, and, and she's just totally fine. She restarted it, and now it's all good. And Harlow's save, everybody's happy, no lasting ramifications, except there were, because the Civil War did happen, and many people did die, and many Skrulls died, and people on Atladna would have died, but it's all good, happy ending, all sort of. Yay. And she learned mm. nothing from that, because as far as she's concerned, What's it's like reset her morality back to before it was done. Yeah. Yes, so I'm a good guy again. Time. She'll the film believes she is back to being good because she she undid the problem, even though you can't undo all the dead people over thirty years. But no. you know, it's all good. Could. Um, well, they could I, with the I time machine. Like, I do like the idea that Gaia could do this. She could just fly into yeah. a star and restart it. 
not something she can do. At, at oh, this point, I just assume you? she pretended not be not to be able to beat Thanos. Like, what the? Yeah, f yeah she could have flown yeah. him into a sun. sun. Oh, there's so many things she could have done. <laughs> but oh well. Um, yeah, I, but I guess yeah. It's they they're gonna make a full recovery, and that's that's that. And you know, Fury's real sad. Oh, Monica, she was pretty cool. I interacted with her over the course of this movie and nothing else. And <laughs> Oh man, I'm so sorry. We can sad. assume that they had a long, a long and illustrious story sort of with each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. She had then, yeah, but, magic. I thought it was yeah. funny that like he asks what happened to Monica and Miss Marvel's explanation is pretty vague and there's yeah. way more questions to ask that he's just like, uh-huh, okay, so where's uh, where's Captain Marvel? And it's just like, but it's like oh, she's, she, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like she didn't make it. It's like she's dead? Well no, she got trapped in an alternate universe. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that follow. That follows. Sure. Though. Yeah, because the way they act is like she's dead. When I mean, it seems like she's probably alive. If she like, there's no reason to believe that she couldn't continue to live in the vacuum, or that she, you know, she, uh, unless they believe that she got stranded in like interstellar space and is just going to starve to death, sands any planets to go to. But you know, but you know, we're, we're going to find out her fate soon enough. We now find out that Carol is moving into. Uh, Maria's house in Louisiana. Uh, Kamala and her family are helping. Um, Kamala's <laughs> only wearing the one bangle, so I guess Carol must have the other one. Um, and they just have a chat about, oh, yeah, no, you know, it's uh, Monica, she was pretty cool, and, you know, we made a really good team. And then we cut to New York, where uh, Kate Bishop from Hawkeye is, uh, she's coming back to her house. And Kamala's in there, and they, they're trying to do the Iron Man post credit scene, but now it's self-referential and lame. They, they even try to, like, copy the dialogue, and and, word and, for word. and it's horrible, like, mm -hmm. and it's just Why? a reminder. No idea that yeah. happens. Well, yeah, she doesn't know what exact lines, so it's, a, so it's an astounding coincidence that she chose the exact same words that Fury did, oh. when she doesn't know what he said. Um, and yes, this is meant to be a setup for the Young Avengers movie that's probably never going to happen now. Uh, she mentions, oh, do you know that Ant-Man has a daughter? So they're going to they're gonna recruit all your favorite characters. Kamala Khan, and <laughs> Kate Bishop, Nepotism and Cassie, the Cassie uh, Lang. What a, what a dynamic the team. Of spy skills. <laughs> like, what a that's mess. That's never going to happen, I don't think. Um, and then, and then that brings us to finally the last scene in the film where Monica wakes up. I guess they threw an iron heart, wouldn't they, as well? Where the audience wakes up. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. And uh, maybe America Chavez as well would be part oh, of that team. Oh my god! What, what a what a great team we got there. But uh, yeah, Monica, Monica wakes up in a facility, and Maria's there, uh, but she's in a different universe, and it's kind of awkward because like the actress for Monica is like really 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 trying but this is like a post credit scene that's setting up like other movies and stuff so yeah. it almost feels like it's kind of misplaced she's like really trying to act like a woman who has finally like her mother is alive after she thought she died she's like very emotional but it's in this it's it's a post credit scene to set up x-men so like it comes it's it's kind of feels like her effort to like almost mismatch with the objectives of the scene but then we see cg beast Played by uh, Kelsey oh Grammer, and it's and it's and it's not her mum because it's a different universe. So this is um her name, I believe, is Binary. Um, that's Maria. What? That she found her yeah. in space, brought her to the X Men facility. Um, she's in a different universe. It's not her own. Her presence here ensures an incursion will happen. Um, but you know, whatever. And then <laughs> Beast... don't think about that because no <laughs> one remembers that. Beast uh, mentions uh, Charles and then leaves, and then we have a long shot of Maria in a pretty lame looking suit, and then Monica's like, oh shit, this is you know, this is not what I thought. And then it's finally over. It's done. That's the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. How are we feeling? Pretty good. Feel pretty good. Um I liked it. Uh, uh not, I just I, I don't like to give ten out of tens wildly. So yeah. yeah. A lot of people go in 10 out of 10, I understand that, but I don't like to give them out too much, so 9, I think. I mean, it is, it is a pretty good movie. Um, there's a lot of riveting <laughs> character work. It's got some great action. It's a triumph. It, short. Um, it really is. It's a uh, Yeah, a little bit short. You know, I could have used a little bit more runtime, but it's a, it's a fun movie, and it's got great characters and a great villain, and it, it teaches you lessons about life and the universe and everything. And teamwork. Um, so... Th this is absolutely this is absolutely one of the worst Marvel films. <laughs> <laughs> This is absolutely one of the it's worst. It's short. 
Oh no, Fringy's glitching I, and he's he's saying something from the other five films we covered <laughs> recently from Marvel. I know, <laughs> no, I just want to do a director's cut oh, and just show getting, us the extra hour. Dude, I'm getting so tired of saying that, but like, they just keep making awful films and shows. <laughs> yeah, but we, we don't have to, it. there's no like sense of needing to compensate for this in terms of like explanation. The box office is fucking showing it. They're crashing. It's fucking yeah, it's, painful it's, it's to, like, for them it to- It is absolutely and utterly Jover for them. But you know what they'll learn for this? It won't be that the film was bad. It's that the strike hurt it and the actors couldn't go out and market it and that's why. I, so I think that that's <laughs> the forward cope. Something that I kind of wonder is if the, with what they'll think is, ah, female-led superhero films, they're not actually, they can't succeed. I wonder if that's <laughs> oh, like- There's such monkey brains that are in charge of a lot yeah. of that stuff. It's like, Wonder Woman goes out, oh, women can make money. Marvel goes out, no, they can't. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a little more complicated <laughs> more than that. that. Like, <laughs> what does that no, say no. about them, right? <laughs> Maybe they just made a really, really bad movie, which they did, and what? everybody-, everybody I, th I think it's just a th there's only so many times that you can go to the theater and see absolute like shit before it, all all of like you're coming into it with the absolute best faith of oh well yeah this is Marvel they're generally entertaining how many times can that happen before it's like dude I kind of expect like I'm not expecting anything you know like I'm not expecting this to be good and then it's like oh wow lo and behold it was terrible yeah I'm not going anymore I don't want to keep going to the theater and being annoyed and disappointed yeah I'll just stay yeah. home and do something else yeah <laughs> yeah. Might yeah, well. I wouldn't have seen this if I wasn't invited onto the stream. That was like <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah, I'd escaped. Mm, yeah. What kind of <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess it's what what are we thinking in, how, what's everybody at in terms of a number score for our All right, so well film? let's just cut to the know. chase. Does it violate space and time? Yes. Kind of, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, then yeah. I guess it's a. I guess it's a one because basically oh. nothing works about. Well, what works? Oh. Well, let's talk about what oh, works. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. It was I... short, and I was out of the theater quickly. There, there we go. Ooh. Which I'm yep. only saying because it's Ooh. awful. Rude. <laughs> um, for, I, I, for, for I'd me, have to give it a couple of points just for like the the cat eating scene. I mean, <laughs> what I found funny, the, the thing is, I see that the same like as Robin Hood and everything else. It's like, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it for a reason that wasn't intended. <laughs> but mm. I still got entertainment from that scene, so... I will say, it I almost feels like it, it deserves a point for being so much shorter. We need to encourage them to do this in future, you yes. know? Well, so, yeah. what I would say <laughs> is that when I watched the film for the first time, my takeaway was, this can't be better than a two. But I mean, like... Oh, there's no way, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I, would like, I would happily cap it at two, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, two is the cap. It's the upper cap. Which That's is, you know, good for you, Marvel. A whole two, if you can manage to get there. But whether or not it sinks, whether or not it sinks to a one, though, you know, that's a prestigious, that's a prestigious club, the one out of tens. I mean, pretty much every <laughs> character is super retarded. Everything they tell us is not how anything works. You know, they assassinate the hell out of their main character, and then and the all of physics is falling apart. And it's thematically, there is one clear idea thematically that's completely abolished by the film. It's just like, no, mm -hmm. not good to work as a team, but you should work as a team. Yeah, and then and then there was a the fact that they do actually. Th there are multiple instances of really messing with time and space. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so when you factor all that in, it's like, damn man, did you do it again against all fuck? Like, because with I wasn't expecting Ant Man to uh to end up at a good old one out of ten territory, but my god, they did it, and I think they might have done it again. <laughs> I think this is worse than Ant Man. I oh, do you say you don't Ant think Man or do you think? Ant Man doesn't. I, I, have I, if, if you if I had to watch one of them again, it would be Ant Man over this. Ant Man has Modok, who is like an actual good character. <laughs> Ant Man has Modok, which please no. never and forget. They Vib. gave us Modok. <laughs> and, and it has Veb. And it has Veb. It does have I guess, Veb. I guess the the question is always because the the absolute worst of the worst is Multiverse of Madness. It's uh, is it how does it stack up to Multiverse of Madness? I don't think, it, I stand by what we said at the time, I don't care if people are surprised by this every time, but there's not going to be a movie that's worse than M.O.M. for writing. That film, it was just a billion contradictions per second, it was fucking insane. Yes, it was pretty remarkable. Um, it's almost like this film benefits from being less dense. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Multiverse of Madness is exceedingly dense in terms of what's 
the, like the contents of the story in terms of what's being delivered and how much stuff is breaking all the time. Whereas this one, it is really concentrated. I mean, we talked about it for fucking five hours, but like it's uh, it is a thinner story overall. Yeah. What about Thor? Uh, what about Thor four? That's the interesting one because I think we settled on the one Thor. for uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. I've, like, <laughs> I one thing seen this it. movie. One thing this movie has going for it for me personally from a very sp subjective standpoint is that it's like differently from Thor and like Ant-Man and stuff like I I did not expect anything from Captain Marvel movie, you know? So there's not there was no like disappointment or like, you know, expectations. You know, yep. when I went into this, I was like the worst this could be is boring. And it was not boring. It was cats meets like despicable me. And it's absurd, and I did not expect much from it. So it was not, like, heart-wrenchingly, like, bad, you know? I didn't feel much for it. It didn't make, make me feel shitty, you know? Differently from the things that I expect um, the most from. I kind of agree. Like, Multiverse was pretty miserable. Um, that was a pretty miserable experience. Thor Love and Thunder was pretty miserable. Uh, this one was more... Well, no, I, I, this, was, this was pretty sad to watch. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I tend to agree with Drinker at this oh. point. Um, his one of his big points in the opening of his video was that this is no, this has moved on to another stage again. Of instead of like being when you went from angry or all these different ones, he was like now it's sort of like you pity them a little bit. A little like bit. it's just yeah. embarrassing. It's, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. Sad. It's it's like a big fat old man trying to bend over to tie a shoe and he just falls and you're like, oh, well, it's just, you know, Marvel's <laughs> not the cool kid anymore. You know, it's kind of. Everything that's kind of happened in terms of the last couple of weeks with all the reporting and everything is that there is now blood in the water um, for Marvel. It's okay to, like, be It's okay doubtful. to shit on yeah, yeah. very publicly and loudly. Yeah. Um, yes. And to proclaim there was a scourge on the entertainment industry. Speaking of which, welcome, new fans. <laughs> We've been doing this for a while. Hi there. Uh, uh, so, yeah. in, the, in the wake of that, I mean, Marvel's, Marvel is in a lot of trouble. You know? Yeah. They just are. This looks like it's going to be the first failure. And I, I don't see this as being the kind of... This is not like a case where it's like, oh, but the film might be appreciated, you know, five years from now. But, oh, it wasn't so bad. Nah, no I don't know. What's to appreciate? <laughs> What's to appreciate here? No, I, that's the thing. that It's so lacking in substance that I just don't think that this is the kind of film that could ever sort of recover a reputation. I think it's just kind of doomed to be, like, pointed to as the really bad, accepted bad Marvel film, because, you know, Multiverse of Madness is still contentious, unfortunately. Uh, but this one will probably go down as just an accepted bad, cynical film. Um, but more <laughs> relevantly, the first categorical, undeniable Marvel failure. Which, um... um yeah. It's worth mentioning this this film has a cinema score of a B, which is catastrophic which, and to, to know, which is oh funny, no, right? B. Which uh puts it in the company oh no. of Catwoman, Green Lantern, Batman vs. Superman, and the Eternals wow. and Quantumania. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Nice. Okay. Because yeah, the Metacritic score is fifty, which for a Marvel movie is that's low. It's obviously way too high. The film is not a five out of ten. Um, no. In yeah, terms but, of an aggregate. Now, it, the only people going to the cinema to see any of this stuff like this kind of movie. So it boosts the reviews. And for reference, uh, by the way, yeah. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has a higher Metacritic score than Marvel's. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Nobody likes Call of it's Duty. It's so Modern funny because oh. we've been tracking it so, dare I say, intimately, and yet the, the, the reactions for a lot of people is what happened? It's like, well, it's. Mm. It's kind of it's it's really it's a logical cause and effect story of yeah. <laughs> two years of consistent bad movie except for Spider Man No Way Home consistent yeah. bad Marvel movies um there's and and a and a deluge of a, 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 the quantity mixed with the terrible quality all together as well as a general dislike for kind of what Disney and Marvel represent in the entertainment landscape anyway. Uh, as well as broader declines in interest in superhero films, all sort of culminating in one movie. Fittingly on a project called The Marvels. Well, and also fittingly on the uh, 100th anniversary of Disney. I feel like it's oh, kind nice. of an ode to what Disney yeah. is as a company right now, that this year has been pretty bad for them. 
um, and that a lot of the normal ways of making money of just kick out a Marvel project, just kick out a live action remake, you know, just fucking get it out there. That that's not re- that's not working anymore. It's not working. No. It's Jova. Um, and so is this is, movie. It's all. And what is going now. on over there at Rotten Tomatoes? What's going on there with this movie? Oh, I what mean, do you mean? I, I don't really like Rotten Tomatoes at all. Yeah. But it, how is this fresh? <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait, yeah. More than 50% over so there. So it's and then... uh, 60%, I think, for us. Yeah, oh, is it? Um, I, yeah. I know that this could be like, oh, you're just being a dick. But I was just like, when I saw the score, <laughs> I was like, okay, 62 on uh, on critics. That's like, what? 85 for the audience. That's bullshit. There's yeah, no fucking yeah, way. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's I don't believe lie. that it's for a goddamn lie. second. <laughs> it's another lie. And ben, 85. Half of them look fake. There's no fucking way. That's impossible. What a cry, um, just... uh, a lot of fun and nice references to other films without <laughs> needing to explain them. The leads are great and I hope to see them more in the future. Oh my god, it was so good. I loved everything about it. I already seen it twice and plan on seeing it a lot more times. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loved it. No, we are just showing the list. Just a lot of fun. Some great oh yeah, definitely directions. verified. All audience is 73, which is still too high. Yeah. Is there I don't I don't use or rotten tomatoes at all. Like what what is the nature of being a verified user? I think you have to uh... it it like um you know how Steam has this person has bought this game kind of thing? Oh, that is right. You've bought the ticket through a certain... Like, you can prove you've bought the ticket, essentially. Oh, okay. But it means that Rotten Tomatoes could essentially choose who gets into that and who doesn't. For a worst movie... Worst MCU movie to date, they still give it one and a half stars out of five. That's and generous. They also... We know they shadow ban people. Oh, they actually so. explained themselves. They said 1.5 because of the cats. And the end credits scene. <laughs> the end credits were good. Look, I was wetting myself as all these heroes are going around making cats eat people. Like, that was entertainment to 1.5 for me. And I guess we, we would have to accept on that reference to the post credit scene that basically admitting before the movie was out that it's about X-Men, it didn't work. No. It is not mustered uh, significant enthusiasm to go watch the film. The strategy... It is not mustered enthusiasm, so it must catch up. Oh my god. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Incredible. Definitely not the scores that they relish. Oh. <laughs> oh, delightful, fun, steady pace, and the characters were well fleshed out. Enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> Four and a half stars out you of five. You know, five. the X Men thing, it's not like it didn't give them some of a. Like, some of these reviews explicitly mentioned the fact that X Men is even in it at all. It's like, oh, that, that's that's why the film is cool. It's like, you're fucking. The film was cool because <laughs> Beast showed up for 30 seconds at the end after you had to sit through the whole movie that had nothing to you do with that. You know what the funny part is? Uh, we were talking about some Friday Night Tights. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were talking about Binary and the, what character she is. Which, and I was like, you guys do realize most people's conclusion is that Storm in an outfit I don't recognize. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't even blame them. Like, wh- how is wh- like has anyone heard of binary from the comics? Well, it's just what well, no. people would be like. Oh, it's just Captain Marvel in a different universe, but with the X Men. If it's with the X Men, you just be like, oh, this is an X Men. Yeah. I but mean, no. I've always considered myself normal and all this kind of stuff, and I literally thought that that woman turned up from Men in Black for at least like twenty seconds before I realized who she oh, was. Oh, Valkyrie! Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's don't it's a wear mess. the same costume from another movie on the same actor. It doesn't work. It's it was hard enough to keep track of this stuff when people cared about it before the TV shows came anymore. out. I'm, yeah, that's right, and nobody cares anymore. It's 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 like yeah now now the the greatest strength of the MCU well the purported greatest strength of the interconnectivity is its curse it only makes things more confusing it creates more damage that gets carried over to subsequent stories and people just don't want to deal with it anymore. Dude, this this is a five out of five and it says uh, people will hate whatever they want to hate regardless. The movie is fun, funny, entertaining. The time of the OG Avengers is over and people need to move on. Tell the trailers that. <laughs> oh my God. Right? Trailers, you cannot afford to let you forget <laughs> you That's don't get I... to demand what the audience likes and what they don't you're supposed to give them what they want so you can keep telling people and trying to deny all you want you'll just go broke well what what's going to happen you're going to convince people to not like 
Tony and like your new character. You gotta make. <laughs> They've tried like that new over and over again. It's been horrible. For the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> like, at the end of the day, you got to make people like these new characters, and if you fail at that, then yeah, because I mean that's that's like the product of it all. <laughs> who watches that? You know, no, like who watches that scene of like, oh yeah, Young Avengers? That's going to be so exciting with all these riveting characters. Like who who would who even exists really Dude, that's excited for that? There's a review here that says it was a fun movie that showed the value of relationships. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. I, <laughs> Just I mean, relationships in back, general. Baby. Relationships. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Nondescript. You know. Other agents. Yes. Like, what? Like, okay, all right. I mean. I love this. It was good, super fun. Yeah. It had everything I liked. <laughs> That's got to be real, <laughs> really? right? It has to right. be. It did, Very, this film did not have full frontal nudity. Very detailed. It, 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 it did not. Oh, these reviews are so informative. Great, fun, awesome movie. Right. Ooh, yeah. We should see it then, because that sounds right, pretty good. And awesome. I, All three. Ooh. Nice. Well, I have a reviewer here called G, who said G. entertaining and fun. Whoa. See, they they still make those? <laughs> yeah. Nope. <sighs> entertaining and fun. Thanks, G. Marvel is back, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> back from hell. Marvel is always what? coming <laughs> back. It's, when somebody, uh, it's never somebody here. Writes a comment like that, I, I'm curious to hear, like, so what was the low point? Just to be sure, if this is coming back, what do you think the low point is? All of it. Oh, God. I need to know. Let's see. <laughs> uh, this movie was a blast. The three leads have fantastic chemistry, and you can feel the heart in this film. I'm looking forward to seeing these three ladies in the future. <laughs> oh, no. You might not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, so I mean, what what do we expect now going forward? Uh, in All terms right, of, like, here's just the Marvel movies. So the attitude that I currently have is, as I've said before, no Marvel movie exists until it is in theaters. I don't care if it's in production, if they're shooting, if they're scripting, hiring for it. It doesn't exist until it's in the theater, and I could buy a ticket and go to the theater until and see you can it. Buy it and peel over it. That's Absolutely. You know. Until Actually, that point, it doesn't exist. Marvel is, Marvel is going to become more like DC to where there is a degree of unpredictability to whether an announced project will actually materialize. Yeah, so all Star that Wars extra credit one. stuff, all even Star the X Men Wars. stuff, who knows when it will come out? Who knows mm. what will become of it? Like, legitimately. Who knows? It could be years until we actually see that happening. You, Maybe it would. Who knows? Do you guys think that they will move forward or move back uh, Avengers movies? Oh, move back. Do you think they might not want to rush it to try and be like, oh shit, you guys like Avengers, right? Honest, Avengers, that, that's like potentially going to. I don't know. But if you put Avengers, like if, if you have a trailer for Avengers, who are the Avengers? Uh, and if Captain it's. If it's if it's all the new uh, shitty characters, then like Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, Captain Shang Falcon, Chi. America, <laughs> yeah. Shang Chi. Uh, I think Knight, they'll at least try Moon, that first. Moon Knight. Well, he won't be an Avenger, right? He uh, well, be. he should probably be in a different. Because now I think they're scared shitless of doing other team ups like Midnight Suns and stuff. I I get the impression that if that was on the cards, they're like, oh shit. But this failed, and this was like a team-up movie. Oh shit, can we actually do that anymore? Are people afraid of uh, watching a film that has multiple characters from different shows and movies, like, teaming up? No, I, I think they believe in the brand rather than the character. So they'll be like, well, the Avengers is popular, let's take the Avengers. Because all these companies love taking an IP and then just putting stuff in it. Like, they mm -hmm. think it's the, the IP that matters rather than the content within the IP. And so I don't yeah. think they'll grasp that it's the characters that people like. Yeah, I, I don't think they actually know what's wrong with their movies. Um, or they, they might get like a token Iron Man and then just uh, fill the rest with all the others. Maybe oh, yeah. what I would do would be... I mean, well, I don't I actually don't know what I'd do. Here's what I think they might do. Um, what they should do, I suppose, is make that X-Men movie, market it a lot, because a lot of people might not like think X-Men... You know, like Marvel Cinematic Universe, they think they're different. They think it's a side thing. Um, and you, if they make a really good X Men movie, 
I think they've got a shot. I think they've got a chance that they make a few good movies in like rapid succession. Um, yeah, I think but that could all the movies that, at. but all the movies that are like slated to come out or planned to come out or that they've already kind of started working on. Oh, they're all well, shit. So, so to, so to mm-hmm. remind everybody who doesn't know, so because of the actor strike and the writer strike, there have been a lot of delays. There is one MCU film coming out next year, and it's Deadpool three, which is interesting because Deadpool three again is a sequel to Fox X Men films. Mm-hmm. Um, it's co-produced by Ryan Reynolds and his production company. It is not totally a Marvel Studios production. So it is, and and then there are some Sony Marvel movies coming out next year as well, like Venom and Craven and uh, Madam Web. But there's only one MCU film, uh, and no DC films either, because Aquaman's no. it. That's it, and they're done. Um, and then after that, it'll be Captain America Four, which is getting extensive reshoots five months worth of reshoots oh and is now coming out in february of 2015 at 20 2025 <laughs> it's going uh, back fantastic <laughs> fantastic four is out on may in 2025 thunderbolts is out in july 2025 and then blade fine <laughs> finally blade maybe who knows on november of 2025 so there and was- these are all I- gonna be terrible um, I, I don't really have any hope for any of them, except for maybe Deadpool, maybe, yeah. and even then I'm pretty scared yeah, shitless. Sure, because of um, time travel and TBA apparently going to be in it. Oh, yeah. the TV. I'm intrigued by Deadpool 3, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to Spireverse, I think. I want to see what happens with that. And maybe like... Oh, but Echo properties. as well, that's coming out in uh, J- January. Oh, Echo. right, yeah. That, they're, oh, I think that's already on the... That's already getting sacrificed, I think. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Molik or Long Ball. <laughs> 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 oh, there's your new PFP right row. there. <laughs> it just fits so well, you know? Like, um, you, can't, you can't see the beauties. Geez. It's all just... I mean, it really. Oh my goodness! There they are. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Jeez, there they are. There I don't know they if you're are. supposed to just be like have a six pack or just rolls of fat. Those are oh, that's that's a six pack. Yeah, titties. it's a six. Yeah, yes, that's, it's six definite, <laughs> definitely a six pack. Fat. That's right. Yes. De- definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, I mean, yeah. obviously, I'd say right. Obviously, yeah. that's what it is. Oh my god. <laughs> Didn't bring you them. get to be the genocider. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> How does that feel? Uh, uh, it's Feels just, pretty yeah. good. Feels pretty good. Um, oh, joke is coming out next year. That's right. Um, so that's you got that. Oh my god, mm. look at those evil cats. <laughs> That'll hopefully oh, be refreshing, man. even if it's bad. You know, like, even if yeah, uh, well, at least you're trying but, something. Yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, that could be a musical. Do, do you think? Uh, do you think any heads are gonna roll at Marvel? Who's uh, who's the fall guy? Um, I, don't I mean, I think the responsibility for this has to fall on the directors and the writers. <laughs> like, I mean, all of them. In that case, it's Kevin Feige. That's the true responsible person. But the, the no, I don't think it is. is. Yeah. Like it people probably, keep talking about his house. Like, like he didn't write it. He didn't make the movie. No, it, I like, I totally agree with that. Like he didn't tell them to make it shit. But at the same time, he chose he these people. He is in charge of hiring. Yeah, and he's he, in charge of hiring all the people, and he consistently and, and we'll get rid of all of them. Hiring the worst people. Oh, I, yeah, like, like, what an act, yeah, right, yes, I, clean I, house. I clean Let's get rid of all of them. We have. I mean. This is like when the communist dictatorship takes over and just like everyone fucking dies and we're starting over. I think you if have you to. wear like, glasses, you can't reboot, you're dying. You, you can't reboot a series while we're still keeping the, the people around too. that made the last one. No, it, it it just doesn't address that. It's kind of the reason why, like, even though I'm a little bit, well, I'm I'm pretty concerned about like this DC reboot. There is an element of yeah, but you got like diff- oh no wait the the co-producer of like a whole bunch of the uh. The older movies is actually the producer going forward, so that's not even analogous anyway. They still got some of the old regime. The reality is, uh, the MCU is a juggernaut, but like it only remains a juggernaut for as long as that is benefiting the newer projects. As soon as it not, it isn't. As soon as you put out something that is like, look, it's the next thing in this big set of things, and no one gives a shit. It's like that big set of things becomes worthless. It's what have you got? And it's like, oh shit. And, uh, well, it becomes worthless, but it costs two hundred million dollars to produce. So it's like <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like the 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 benefit, what what they have is that history. But as soon as the history isn't giving them anything, it's like guys, it's bad. We're back at square one almost. And if anything, it's worse than square one because we didn't have so many losses. Like the 
you know, they're, they're probably the best time for them was probably Avengers 2012, where everyone was looking at them and they were like, "Wow, what are you going to do next?" And they're like, "Yeah, all the investments, all the plans for the future, and the money was pouring in, and the budgets were much lower." What was the budget for Avengers 2012? Uh, I think it was. Let me check. I think it was like 200 million, but that was again bigger movie than this and 220 million yeah yeah so it's the same as this movie but remember inflation, remember <laughs> that it's a longer movie as well it's two and a half hours this is one and a half hours well this well, is two oh, and half it's, it's, it's so, so much better <laughs> and it's so much better yeah and it's about a bunch of people that people care about age of ultron. i think age of ultron cost nearly 400 million dollars right so it started to really balloon, but that, but they made they made like over a billion dollars. They made, yeah. and of course, Endgame made like nearly three billion dollars. So, yeah, it's just this this model is that ain't happening for a long time, if ever again. Probably not. I mean, I guess no, eventually it'll happen again. again. But I mean, it'll be many many years. We'll be old and gray and crotchety <laughs> sitting on our porch before we see what's that? that? Well. They released a good Avengers it's, uh, movie. What do you mean Avengers? Uh, oh, the eighteenth was good. Ooh. <laughs> it's something I mentioned a few times, but like, in, in an attempt to, I don't think they can cut, there are ways in which, the, the, the films are perceived as being cheap, even though they're not, and I don't know that you could convince a lot of these actors to keep participating in this series if they're not getting paid a lot of money. Like, why would Brie Larson want to keep doing this unless Such she's a bad getting move. paid, like, five, ten million dollars a year, like, it each project? It doesn't assist your career whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It can, fucking, no, even it's, Robert Downey Jr., who, uh, arguably from any of the other actors' perspective, got the best journey in the MCU, was worried how it was affecting his career. Imagine how it's affecting your career now. Yeah. Badly. Exactly. Is the point of that. Um, also, oh, fuck, we, we were seconds away, I was gonna, uh, say Disbrew had to go, but conversation, you know how it goes. But even if he's not here, I'll uh, he's I'll here say. In spirit. Um, make sure to check out his work. He's been uh, he's been toiling in those editing caves. He's been covering that Robin Hood show that and everyone. The <laughs> dungeon. Oh, brilliant! And the editing um, dungeon. Yeah. He's he's more of a fan, I think, of covering the absolute destruction of the MCU than individual projects. Like I said, it's kind of um, the cruelty of me that got him to see this film. Um, so now mm -hmm. he. At least you have some more insight into why everything's falling apart for this movie. I That's mean, right. Um, this is this is good context to have, fresh on your brain. Yeah, this can only help you. And so, um, link in the description to his channel, and I'll uh, spam it in the old chat as well. Check it out, subscrizzle. And I guess uh, that's a good way to prompt wrapping up. So we'll um, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll go with uh, J Longbone first. What are you up to? What's happening? Where should people find you, and why should they subscribe? Uh, uh, check me out on my YouTube channel, Jay Longbone. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing some uh, Robin Hood videos as well. This came out the second episode a day ago, and uh, I'll be working on a review for The Exorcist Believer <laughs> sooner oh. or later. I mean, you oh. sound so enthusiastic about it. That sounds pretty Wait. fun. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's it's gonna be funny because I really hate that movie. <laughs> so okay, you know, yeah, I it, it, it killed my soul, but like it, it's funny. Aww. It's gonna be funny. Power of Christ compels you. Well, excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, you you've you got any um, is 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 the thing happening? The thing that <laughs> we recorded with you, the because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I, that's it's still happening. Okay, all right. <laughs> People have asked, like, what are we going to next read a horrible, horrible book with you as well? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a couple comics that okay. I just got lying around. Yeah, there's plenty of torture on available, yeah. naturally. And yes, uh, the, it's funny as well, as you know, you probably recorded, what, like 20 fat movies with us that are yet to see the light of day. That's, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of fun things to expect. So you invest in the future when you hit subscribe, everybody. That's yeah, they, what we do. They've been beating my ass, everybody. <laughs> 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 oh, we've had so much fun. We watched Five Nights at Freddy's, everybody. Wasn't that great? Mm -hmm. Oh. We did watch Five Nights at Freddy's, and we, yeah, we did. We sure did. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, found, I found another Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff called Freddy's Fridays. <laughs> That's, that sounds amazing, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's really high budget, and it's appreciated by the fans, that sort of thing. Um, uh, alrighty. Nutso, what are you up to? What's happening? Well, uh, well, I am working on a project that is just, it, it is also killing me, but 
it's uh it's been months and it's still going you know i mean it just it gets longer and longer and it's about a movie that is very very pink and sparkly and oh my I god and oh. i hate myself for it but it's okay <laughs> Because it's going to be long and it's going to be torturous for me, but hopefully enjoyable for others. But yeah, That's it's it's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it's cooking and English is leaving me. I, I can't pronounce words anymore. So. I wish English left the yeah. writers of the <laughs> MCU. I think it did. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, because you the last thing... Uh, you put out recently was just you know the doomed legacy of Bob Bob which is just funny yeah. considering the stream that we've just done as well. Just like yeah, it's just another little aspect yeah, of Disney. Full more fuel about. for that fire. Oh yeah, uh, I assume <laughs> you're gonna keep uh, keep an eye on the other aspects of Disney when it's falling apart, mm -hmm. just here and there. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, always a pleasure and uh, absolutely Thank you for version. having me. Of course. Yeah, anytime. Meme Good repository. Day. Good sir. What are you up to? What's happening? Oh, uh, yeah, so I had to take a couple of months off because I had a very um, unfortunate injury with uh, my, my elbow. Um, some hooligans came out of nowhere and were like, fuck you, and then I was attacked. Um, but uh, but uh, now that I'm on the mend, I'm thinking I'm going to be streaming Robocop pretty oh, soon, the new one. Good shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to be doing that soon, hopefully. got re I want to rewatch the, the films first, just so I'm all up to date on my references. But then, yeah, I'm going to hit that... Metal booty hard, so yeah, mm. look out for that. You will be rewarded <laughs> for watching those movies again. That that game loves them, which is uh, just what you want. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, you know, good to hear you are hopefully on the mend, and that all kinds of things will be coming. That sounds like big old fun Exciting, on yeah. the bun. Um, yeah. Bringy rags, what about you guys? Um... I guess I don't really want to say anything yet because I don't know when things will be done. But I've got some, I got a few things I'm thinking about. I got some stuff. I think I got a new game plan, and I'm sort of setting up here that should work well. But I don't want to, don't want to promise anything because you know how that goes. It's a busy time of my life. Yes. Uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm working on Loki. I'm also working on a smaller project, but I also kind of don't want to talk about it until it's actually done and finished. It's not the next big critique thing, but it's, uh, it's a different little thing. I'm just working on it, and yeah, working on Loki. You know the deal. Editing dungeon shenanigans. Uh, partially delayed by prep for uh for this, but back to it. <laughs> back to the dungeon I go. Mm hmm. Um, and then on my end, uh, currently working on sorting out the big long arc for next year, um, and a couple of other things. Yeah, not not much else to announce for now. I'm trying to think of. Yeah, tomorrow we're recording more. There's a thing coming. As soon as we've fully recorded it, I'll tell you about it. All right, but until that, I don't want to say anything because it might not happen for whatever horrible tragic reason. As soon as it's finished, we'll tell you about it. That's not the war movie arc. War movie arcs definitely happen. That's all finished in terms of recordings. Editing is the part that's yeah, we just gotta gotta get it done. But there is something yes. to tell you guys about. A mm -hmm. wonderful new something that we've also been cooking in the background. Um, mm. If wait, mm. uh, while I'm showing it, are, uh, Fringy Rags, either of you able to just spam the link every once in a while so that they can. Sure. Get uh, yes, it. yes. Let me... Now, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of the cool channels out there with streams and stuff do this thing, and it's, we thought we should finally probably set it up in a more official way. We have officially uh, started up, uh, even as much as a month ago, an EFAP Highlights channel. Here oh, it is. Oh my god. Look oh. at it go. She's so beautiful. Wow. She's just Look she's just that. starting out, just toddling. Look at those great thumbnails and those amazing i mean i actually i really i, I will say i really like the look of it oh it's, it's a very gorgeous channel on point um, with the ui and it, it looks really good i really like it the way it's gonna work more than likely is that it's gonna try and do highlights of every episode the new ones as they're coming out but also catch up on older ones uh gradually and try and hierarchy it. Hierarchy it? Is that a way to say it? Uh, do it in the, in the way of... Um, structure prioritize. It. Structure it. That's a better word. In the sense of going for the the more popular stuff, or at least the more fan-demanded stuff first. So trying to chop out the pieces that you guys want to see on individual 
sort of videos. Um, it could be segments, could be, just be a joke, could be a story that's told, could be coverage of a particular topic. It's coming. It's it's slowly getting out there. It's going to have, um, for now, it's EFAP highlights as in just like, you know, this part of an episode or things even sometimes that aren't even from uh, EFAP, like uh, the EFAP these... universe. Yeah, the second chat I had with Star Wars Theory is already on there, which you can't actually find on Moolah. So there are things on here that you'll be like, oh, it'd be fun to check that out again. There'll be things you'll be like, I don't remember that happening. It's like, oh, that was from an episode I didn't watch, but it was something in it that was real fun. And um, yeah, and then like supercuts will be released. So they're like going to be just, you know, <laughs> for example, the Jenny Nicholson stream without Jenny Nicholson, which comes to oh, four that, hours, seven hours and many, forty many minutes. Hours. That's, mo that's most of the stream. That's literally the majority of that stream. Can we can we just appreciate oh, that thumbnail that's as well? De that's the joke. Oh, that, oh my god! So well, done. well done. Well done. Well done. Pretty good. Um, and I mean, it's it's worth mentioning. Uh, this channel is run by Wolf. He's gonna be the one that's uh, organizing it, and he's gonna be interested in. You know, hearing back from you guys in the form of comments on what you're what you're after, what highlights He's you'd like to one. see, what things you'd like focused on here and there. He would just, you know, he's going to appreciate that sort of feedback. And it's worth mentioning, we would like you to churn this a little bit, at least for now, because it's not got much activity, which means it's got like a set of restrictions to a an new extent. Channel, yep. You know, yeah, um, early on, if a channel doesn't get a certain amount of views or subs or something like that, it has some restrictions on what it can do, whether that's um, like the the upload limit in terms of length and stuff of that nature, its ability to monetize and you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it's a frequency of uploads, length of uploads, and uh, ability to monetize, of course, and then just other stuff to expand the channel. And of course, if you give them a check out, even if you've seen some of these highlights before, it just helps the channel itself get to different people here and there. Um, obviously, we're hoping to promote it just continuously now as time goes on, because it's a channel we should have probably created as soon as we create this podcast, but hey, we get there eventually. Yeah, That's the new, whole thing. New pillar of the uh, the whole EFAP uh, machine. Yes, you know? and who knows what my may or may not end up on there, but you'll see eventually it's going to be populated enormously. Is kind of the idea. It's just uh, it's starting out. It's fledgling to an extent, but let's get it nice and healthy. That's that's the goal. Absolutely, so, um, please do check it out. Yeah, if like I all posted of posted the link many times in chat. All right, so <laughs> good. <laughs> I, will... I subscribe. I subscribe. Uh, of course, it is also called EFAP highlights, as you can see there. So yeah, <laughs> pretty easy to find. Um, and uh, yeah, for those listening in to this in future, it's it's top of the description link right there. And obviously, if everyone who was watching right now was to check out even a handful of these videos, it would probably get all the requirements through. Um, so give it a look, see. I imagine I wouldn't need to convince you much because you probably watch this podcast seeing that you're here right now. <laughs> people, but yeah, this is uh we were looking to launch it for a while and here it is. It's kinda neat how um it was a decent amount of people engaging with it before it was even mentioned by us. Um I guess yeah, that's how highlight channels go. Eventually starting to uh yeah, gain a bit of traction there. Look at the, the, the why synthetic man would never be on EFAP has got one point six K already. Oh my god. That one got into the old Ooh, algo. So, uh, yeah, that's about that, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. Captain Marvel sequel, you know? Yeah, oh, Marvels. right, yeah. yeah, yeah I almost yeah. forgot that this is what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> sunrise, sunset, sun crash, mm -hmm. sun fell off the cliff, sun was sucked to death. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how else you can put it, really, but, uh, hey. Oh, Lord. Hey, Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. Thank you very much to our guests. And we shall uh, put out a Super Chat catch-up for all the messages you guys have sent, with several that are already done and looking to come out as well. You have a good rest of your day, night, morning, whatever it may be. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. Toodle pip. Good yes, see you, everyone. Thank you. See you later. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. You ah, make my he's a flicking. Human centipede. <laughs>